you sleep there? I got up to watch some telly. You're right. Are you still not speaking to Mama? Let's go and get some breakfast, eh? How long are you going to drag this out for? Kevin! Blanche will be so disappointed to miss it. Thank you. Uh, she had a terrible night. But it's not as if we're in a big church with everybody we know there. Are you regretting that? Um, no. <laughs> I just felt a bit bad about asking everybody to turn up for a wedding they'd already been to once. Everyone's delighted for you. I never thought I'd get married again. After Sammy had died, I swore I never would. But, I don't know, I, I think I felt by staying a Rashid, I was honouring him, I suppose. Honouring me and him. But that chapter of your life will always be there. <laughs> oh, listen to me. I think that book group's taking me over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's how my life will be split up, isn't it? Deirdre, the Hunt years, the Barlow years, the, the Langton years. <sighs> but it feels right becoming a Barlow again. Sam here. He burned bright, but he burned quick. But me and Ken, it's like we were always meant to walk beside one another. Shall I take my frock off and put my hiking boots on? Sounds as if we're going to a rambler's meeting, not a wedding. Mum! <laughs> oh. Still suffering? What? Morning sickness. Oh, is that what you came to ask me? I've not come to ask you anything, OK? Come to tell you something. Like I believe a word you say. This is all your fault. I wish I'd never met you. Yeah, well, you did. Some things we can't go back on, can we? Like what? You know what? <sighs> I take responsibility for my mistakes. I want your stupid responsibility. Yeah, well, tough. Because, like it or not, you're not ruling me out of my kid's life. Set up this trust fund Very thing. Very noble. Be. But you're wasting your time. No, I'm not. Look, my son or daughter, I'm growing up knowing that they're provided for and cared about, okay? Whatever lies you want to tell them about me. Hmm? Me tell lies. Well, you won't be able to stop yourself, will you? I won't need to. No. Because there'll be no one for me to lie to. There is no baby. That's right. I'm not having your baby. Not anymore. There you go. Oh! Hey. Hello. Hello. Oh. Fifteen pounds is cost to dry clean. Still, I said I was going to be here. <gasps> Call it a wedding present. <laughs> oh, don't fret. She'll be as quiet as a church mouse. You look gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Oh, your brooch. Oh, you need that for luck. I'll go and get it. Are you saying she needs luck marrying Ken again? No. Oh, I should hope not. I meant to say that sort of thing. Yeah, I can't resist the last dig, eh? Oh, there's no dig. I'm offering you my hand and wishing you all the best. And if uh, you haven't had enough of her, then no, you know... for sure. <laughs> they take a relative stranger and leave some of the closest friends standing on the pavement. No, look! What? Well, Amy spilled the juice all the way down me. Oh, well, it'll sponge off. No, I'll get changed. Well, I don't know why you want to hang around there for hours anyway. I'll catch you up. Steve will take me, won't you? Come on. I don't want your baby. How could you do that? Create a life to try and keep me, and then destroy it when things don't go your way. This is all your fault. You shouldn't have cheated on me. I didn't. I couldn't have. Because I loved you. 
couple that will know. I don't know who that Katie was. Maybe he mixed her up with Sally Webster. One day, <laughs> you're going to realise how stupid you've been and what you've done. And when you do, <sighs> I hope it haunts you for the rest of your life. I'll just, I'll go to Roy's Rolls. Oh, Amy, you have got your straps all tangled up. Come here. <coughs> what are you doing? <coughs> what the hell are you doing? <coughs> well, I didn't see you. You idiot, you could have killed her. Give me that yard. She OK? You were speeding down there. You weren't looking. Oh, that's not speeding. I was going about five miles a week. Oh. Funny, is it? I didn't say it was funny. You shouldn't be on the roads. Come here, Amy. You weren't roading off. What was you stopped there for? Don't you dare blame me. You could have killed her. And I'm sorry. Come here, babe. Shh, it's all right. Right. So that's it? Well, what else? There's no arms on, is there? Unless you make her ears bleed with that shriek. Can you imagine what it must have looked like from where she was sat? You know, shock can kill people. What's up? You all right? No, actually, in fact, I'm not risking it. Not at her age. Come on, Steve, we're going to the hospital. Hospital? You what? Oh, for crying out loud. Martin shot out of there like he'd been chased by dogs. Mm. So Kate is obviously convinced. And the mood Kevin was in this morning. Bet you've never left that step once today, have you? Mind you, I can't say I'm surprised at Sally. I mean, the shenanigans What's that family. Is... Sally? Oh, uh, uh, nothing. No, oh, come on. Uh, well, I, 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 uh, it's only what people have been saying, you know. I mean, I can't help getting a whiff of that in my profession. What profession's that? Sweet. What have people been saying? Well, I suppose uh, you'll find out soon enough. It's, it's an affair. An affair? Hmm, allegedly. And Kevin's found out? Well, I think everybody has. Everybody that's been in there. You, you don't seem surprised. Uh, did Martin tell you himself? Martin? I suppose it's a compliment, really, isn't it? I mean, having sampled both the young and vintage wine, he obviously finds the more mature wine the smoother. <laughs> I thought you were your dad. I'm not coming while you're here, will I? I'll make you some dinner. I don't want none. Any? You don't want any? Are you and my dad splitting up? No. Well, Sophie thinks you are. Well, Sophie's wrong. It's a misunderstanding, that's all. I know. Well, good. Sophie, you shouldn't have been in an affair with Martin. No, I'm not. And I'd rather you didn't use words like that. Because you're having an affair with Gemma's dad, aren't you? I've heard what's been said. And you've come to tell me how I brought it all on myself? I'm sorry I was hard on you the other day. You've enough on your plate without me adding to it. No. There's nothing on my plate. It's completely empty. How did he love? Please. Right. Actually, cancel that, Betty. I'll go for a drink somewhere else. Well, if the punters over there smile, will you send some over here? For heaven's sake! How long have you two known each other? You know there's nothing between Martin and Sally. I know, do I? Of course he doesn't. How could he? People always surprise you with how stupidly they behave, no matter how much you think you know them. Oh, yeah, and what's this? A confession? No, it's not, and don't you go making things worse. <laughs> I don't see how funny. Hey, hey, hey! Well, not funny, Kev. You've just let Tommy Harris get inside there and start working his magic on you. Well, anyway, I've already lost everything. Short turn now, mate. Listen, I just want to know the truth. Tommy's a mate of mine. Why would you drag me in this? All he's interested in 
He's making sure I'm not going out with his daughter or becoming the father of his grandkid. And now I'm going to be neither. So it's worked. Martin, the baby. There is no baby anymore, OK? So go on. Throw Sally out onto the street. I've done with it. Who cares that she's done now, eh? Hey? Sally has not been with Martin. I'll put my life on it. Can we stop this now before there's any more damage? So you and Gemma have cut this story up between you? No. She reckons that I'd seen someone. And then when my dad accused you of having... You a... shouldn't be talking about our private business with Gemma. I wasn't. I didn't say out to her. I'm not having a spreading stuff around school. Right, well, let that be an end to it then. Why do you stop me from telling my dad about what I found in your bag? You know why. Because he would have been furious with you. Just with me? Don't you dare take that tone with me. Look, Rosie, I know you and Sophie are worried about us, but, you know, I'd never do anything to hurt your dad, don't you? Rosie. What? Answer me! Stop shouting at me! <sighs> Look, your dad's feeling... Well, he doesn't need you making him worry about stuff that there's no need to worry about, all right? As in don't say out? Oh, I know. Why don't you just stick a gag on me? Look, I'm telling you not to say out for your own good, because if you go around spreading them kind of lies, you know what's going to happen, don't you? What? Your dad'll start thinking there's something in it. And it'll push us apart, it'll split us up. And it'll all be your fault. Is that what you want? What's wrong with her? Nothing, she's fine. Have you got a tissue? Well, why? You're not a weeper at weddings, are you? No. But Emily is. And I don't want her sniffling and spoiling everything. Well, I haven't any road. But you can have a shot of this if need. <laughs> Take her mind off it. She doesn't want her mind off things, thank you. And I've got my own tissues. Reception's no better out there. Anyway, I've left a message for her to phone me. Honestly. We couldn't have had less to do to make this work, and now Tracy's disappeared off the face of the earth. We're getting married. The rest is just background noise. I know. But you're disappointed, I can tell. Deidre, we're standing in front of that registrar making our promises to each other. You tell me which of those things you're worried about will matter one iota. You're a wonderful man, Ken Barlow. A lucky man. <laughs> But, Mum, we need to let Mrs O'K know today, this afternoon, for how many tickets we want for the school fate. You are coming, aren't you? Both of you. Together. Look, Sophie, you've got a bit of dinner on your jumper. Go and get it changed. Rosie, come and sit down. I want to talk to you. Look, I'm sorry I shouted at you. It's OK. No, it isn't. I should have explained things to you better. You see, adults can be as bad as kids for getting a little bit of a story and just blowing it up into something it isn't. Look at your dad over this Daft Martin thing, eh? What I'm trying to say is... you have to be really mature about this. Really grown up. I mean, you don't honestly think that there's anything been going on between me and Gemma's dad, do you? Where is he? Is Sophie? She's upstairs. Sophie? I want to have a word with you all. You OK? Right. I'm sorry for the things I said. I've been awful to you, Mum, and she's done out to deserve it. I shouldn't have said those things there, accusing her of. Accusing her of C. Martin? Yeah. Staffed, innit? <laughs> I mean, when she's supposed to be seeing someone else, she's working all the hours God sends, and when she's not slaving away at Davenport, she's looking after those lot. So what I should really be doing is thanking her. You don't have to thank me, Kevin. It's what's important to me is you lot. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. And I hope you can forgive me. Of course I can. Let's just forget the whole yeah. thing now, eh? Yeah. All right, Sophie? And what about you, Rosie? 
Do you forgive me? I know you're still upset at me. I can see that. I'm not. She should be getting back to school now. Well, it's no good to bottle things up. It's no good for you. Tell me what you're thinking. I'm not thinking how I'm going to school. Look, I mean it, Sal. I am so sorry, and I will make it up to you. It's all right, Kevin. Let's just forget about the whole thing, all right? You won't be able to forget about the things I said to you, will you? The way I treated you. I know I won't. Well, it's no good raking it all up, is it? No, but if you could just understand why I... I took it all on what Tommy said. Why I'd fallen for it all. Well, it's convincing. No, it's not that. It's me, I, uh, Somehow thought, you know... Feared... When we got married again... That one day I just... I wouldn't be enough for you again, Sal. And I know, I know you've told me you're in it for the long haul, and I know in my head that what you want is our marriage. And I know that. It's just... In here, sometimes, Sal. Don't talk to yourself, Kevin. All you need to know is that nothing and no one is more important to me than my family. That's all that matters. And we're gonna be all right, okay? I forgive you. Look, if the doc's not worried. No, I she... no, I want a second opinion. There's nothing wrong with kid. Not unless you're into with someone, take a cab. Oh. Oi, go home or I'll call the police. My car never touched him. How many times? Does your wife often me? Oh, she's not my wife. Well, whoever she is. Does she make an habit of making up stories just to have a go at folk for money or whatever it is she's after? Look, you know you said the car... Uh, excuse me, don't you dare take his side. I'm not, I'm just asking. Look, just go and get me a cup of coffee. Excuse me, I'm not leaving until another doctor's seen her, all right? You are shameless. There's no shame in looking after my daughter. <laughs> you started to believe your own story. Was you dropped on your head at birth? Uh... You drove into us. You should be grateful it's a checkup at a hospital and not a visit to a morgue. In fact, I'll have your insurance details while you're here. Nothing happened to her. Take it you haven't got kids. I have, actually. And if someone drove into them, wouldn't you want to be sure they were all right? I don't forget to hear about it. Oh, absent father, is it? Makes sense, that, doesn't it? Look, love, I'm sorry for what happened. Really, it freaked me out and all. How about I give you a 20 euro a pound for uh, injured feelings and uh, inconvenience? You see? And you reckoned he wasn't guilty? You go in, we'll follow. Mr Barlow, I can't delay any more. It'll be a rush as it is. Oh, well, am I, um... Her fiance is just checking it. Our daughter hasn't come. Ken, get your coat. I'm sorry, we've we've got to go. Go where? The hospital. They've had an accident. I'm having a really bad day, and I don't. You're mean having to... a bad day. You should talk to Martin. We're both innocent victims in the accusation, Gail. He is. So am I. Why do you think people were so quick to believe something was going on? Because Tom is like a flaming steamroller, and once he gets an idea, no. He said... Because the pieces fit together. They were right about the affair. They were wrong about the bloke. They were wrong about the affair. All Martin's been is honest. All he's done is told the truth. And somehow he's got mixed up in your lies. How is it lying, denying an affair I'm not having? It's all about being clever, isn't it, Sal? Trying to get away with one thing by telling half-truths somewhere else. What you're doing is wrong. Plain and simple. And somehow... Martin's lost his girlfriend and his baby. <sighs> Not having that. She's aborted the child. Well, if Martin wants to go out with someone barely an adult, he's got to expect the daft decisions, hasn't he? Daft? You've no idea, have you? You're so wrapped up in yourself. Well, next time you're looking for someone to confide your seedy little secrets in, you can look somewhere else. Oh, I thought we got shot at you. You are. Leave you to cook up some story with the doctor. <laughs> what are you missing then? A 
and you get done up like that just to stand in the middle of roads. I'm missing my parents' wedding, thanks to you. Oh, looking to make an honest girl of you, are they? Take more than that. And when they find out why I'm missing it, you're going to wish you'd never driven into Weatherfield. Oh, I already do, sweetheart. Now it changes. There always was some hard piece up the street looking out to make trouble. I thought he'd gone. Not until she admits she's one lying cow. Tracy, are you all right? Where's Amy? Yeah, she's OK, no thanks to him. Ray! Good heavens. What, do you know him? Oh, yes, Tracy. I know him. Tracy? Yeah, well, he's an idiot and he's a menace. Oh, yes, he is. And he's also your father. You? You're my dad? Look at you. I don't believe this. He just ploughed into Amy. Well, a bad penny doesn't quite hit the spot, does it? Blanche. What are you doing here? Checking he's not killed his granddaughter. Or oh, somebody wake me up, please. It's all right, love. I see your hair's given up the ghost. Quite the young buck, weren't you, with that unruly mop? It's been a long time. I'm an old man. Wow. Look at you. Oh, you stop saying that. Not wrong with this gene pool, Deirdre. Oh, for heaven's sake. That's right. Take the weight off your conscience. Hey, I can't believe it. Of all the gin joints, eh? Oh, not that much of a surprise to see them, surely. It's Weatherfield where you left them. What can I say? Aye, aye. I want you to stop persecuting Martin. <laughs> I'd stay out of it if I were you, love. Can't. Right, well, if we're talking persecution, then uh, my 18-year-old daughter's been to Ellen back. Yeah, and so is Martin. Only his hell continues. <laughs> That's the best news I've had all year. Now, if you'd just like to get out of my house, please. Martin isn't cheating on Katie. Oh, it's no good trying to protect him now. I heard you and Sally. What? In the Rovers, you were having a go at her, telling her to end it, telling, telling her to go back to her husband. And did Martin's name crop up while you were eavesdropping? You were telling Sally to finish with him. Did you hear Martin's name? No. No. Sally is having an affair. But not with Martin. Oh, my God. Behave. They've been having it away for ages. And if you'd eavesdrop for a bit longer, you'd be better informed. And a baby wouldn't have been aborted. What have I done? She's got to turn a blind eye. She's got a kid to him. Look, Ange, I know what I saw. What you saw was a platonic hug between two old friends. Two old lovers. There's nothing going on. Just get out, will you? You might want it to be true. But it's not. Martin's a good man. So, uh, where are you living? Holland. An hour on a plane. Well, I can see how you let things slide. The weeks turn into months, the months turn into more than a quarter of a century. The next thing you know, the toddler you abandoned's got a toddler of her own. I didn't end the marriage. You ended the trust. Same difference. Anyway, it's been really moving and all that, but if I could just have your insurance details and a contact number, purely for compensation reasons. Tracy, come on. No! I mean, you wouldn't want to see your family go short, would you, Ray? I'd rather stick around, if that's all right. Make sure she's OK. Oh. I don't care what you do. Did you remarry? Been divorced five years. Strayed again, I suppose. We both did, actually. We decided to call it a day. Like you did with me. You're very quiet. Ken, don't you want to have a go? You know me, quiet, bookish, uneventful. Kenneth's been a wonderful father to Tracy. Yeah. And Amy loves the bones off him, and so do I. You're a very lucky man. It's not a question of luck. It's a question of being there. Holland. 
Not so much as a pair of clogs. What have we done? The right what? thing by our daughter. What am I going to say to her? No! Gail reckons Platt's whiter than white. Well, it is a surprise. Oh, pull your head out of your backside for once, Tommy, will you? There is nothing going on between him and Sally. And best of all, there's not going on between him and our baby girl. Oh, well, it's win-win all the way then, isn't it? Yep. Bottom line is, we've done our Katie a favour. By lying to her. She would never have believed you in a month of Sundays. You ain't mine so much that you can't even see straight. It was a team effort. Least of all this way, she's not tied to him for the next 18 years because of some kid. Our grandkid, an innocent life. You suddenly found your rosary beads. I thought they were long gone. I did what I thought were right for Katie. Snap. She's got plenty of time for kids. She's still a kid herself. But she relies on me for the truth. I'm supposed to be the sane one. But no, you wore me down, didn't you? Chipping away day by day until I was as paranoid as you. And once I bought into your madness, then I as good as signed that baby's death warrant. Fine. Blame me. I'm happy to take the credit. You don't even know what you've done, you're that twisted. We only live round here because of you. She only met him because of you. Oh, here we go. Oh, well. Sorry, St Angela, but twisted Tommy's got to get back to work. Abortions don't come cheap, you know. If you hadn't been so hell-bent on splitting them up, they would have done it of their own accord months ago. And if ago. it had to be for witness protection scheme, we would have been split up years ago. Well, it's not too late, Tom. No, 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 but no. Where would I be, eh, without me bigoted, violent pig of an husband by me side, me moral compass? Oh, stick a cake in it, you fat bitch. You drop dead! What's... what's going on? Steve's dropped Mum off at Emily's. Lena's got stuck into the sherry. Not to be cheated out of a do. It's not you two got it. It's years ago. We did. You're renewing your vows, then? Not doing anything. The day's been hijacked. Sorry. Wondered about that face for years. Did know. Every time I used to row with Mum, I'd, um... Stomp upstairs, play my tapes, plan me escape. I was going to turn up on your doorstep and live happily ever after. I knew there was just one snag. I had no idea where you lived. Now you're here and I should have goosebumps. All those years of hankering. But you're just a stranger in a tragic jumper. Uh, bye then. See you in 2030. Don't get your hopes up. I'm only going to the chance. What is it? Mum, what is it? Well, the thing is... What I overheard in the pub... What I thought I overheard... What? Tell me. I thought Gail meant Martin. I just assumed that... What is it? Oh, love, I've done a terrible thing. Oh, Martin... Martin and... He ain't seen Sally. He ain't seen anybody. I've got it so wrong. I am so sorry. But you said... I know I did, love, and I, and I believed it. And I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have told you if I didn't. What you said? I know, love, I didn't... <laughs> I told you I'd cut my tongue out if I couldn't do what I've done. <laughs> I've just killed that baby. <laughs> oh, my God. He'll never forgive me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Will you wake up? What? I've made a terrible mistake. I've been 
it's so stupid. Oh god, it's so good to touch you. I am so sorry. Just go home, Katie. I am home. <laughs> Come on. Oh. I have made a terrible mistake. I know it's all lies. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I can't believe that I believed it. And I would have killed that baby for nothing. And you must hear me. I mean, really hear me. But please don't. Please forgive me. Please, because I am... I am so, so sorry. <laughs> I just... I, I can't live without you, mine. <laughs> Are you laughing? You were sorry. Oh, yeah. You won't believe. Right. Only I'm sorry when I when I forget me bin bags. I'm sorry that I never learned to play the piano. I'm sorry that United sold Beckham. But you? You're sorry that you fell for a load of evil, malicious lies. You're sorry that you dragged my name through the mud. <laughs> and you're sorry you ever aborted our baby as my punishment beating? Don't. You know, maybe I'm just unlucky in love. <laughs> well, there's an understatement. I know, I know that I've hurt you. But we can start it. Kids, eh? Who shack up with her? Only a total loser. No, I'm the loser. Oh, no. No. I'm the loser. Please don't, I'm sorry. I've got I'm a big not... fat L on my head and I never clocked it. Hey? <laughs> loser, loser. Just how much do you think a man can lose? Will you stop being like this? I'm trying to apologise. It's over, <laughs> little girl. Oh, Lisa, please. That wasn't a baby. <laughs> it was a dolly. And this flat was your <laughs> Wendy house. In Never Neverland. Yeah, well, never again. My mum and dad thought he was eating salad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your dad. He always said he'd destroy me. And he's nothing if not a man of his word, eh? Rock on, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, let's drink to that, eh? Rock on, Tommy. <laughs> Maybe we should get onto the union. We're skilled machinists, not skivvies. Well, they're not going to pay us to sit around reading magazines all day, are they? Uh, it's not our fault there's no work, is it? Mikey forces. Oh, me hands stink a bleach. Oof. Yeah, my nails are finito benito. Oh, I suppose we'll be skivvying tomorrow again, will we? No, Lippy, you can leave the rubber gloves at home, but make sure all your machines are threaded up. You've not got an order. Not an order, Hales. Orders, plural. Top, Mr. Baldwin. <laughs> Quick, white rabbit, white rabbit. No, don't bother no more. As we spend all day giving it drinks. Fascinating. What are you having a drink then, gang? Uh, I'll have a pint. Oh, oh I'll have a pint. Please. Yes, yes, please. Yeah. And you can crack a smile on all, Uncle, because I've got two new big orders. And eyes crossed, more where they came from. I think you've done that ever so well, Mr. Baldwin. Well, congratulations, Danny Boy, for filling your job description. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Katie. You lied to me. Not on purpose, we never. Look at you. Business as usual. Because that's the way forward, love. Life goes on. Not for my baby, it doesn't. Oh, you repeat you! Hey, hey, hey. Come here. Come on, let's get you on, eh? Oh, no. Mine is my hope. It's my life. Come and sit down. Come here. Listen to me. 
that your life is going to be 200% better with him out of picture. I hate you! I hate you. Oh, shh. Oh, it's going to be all right, darling. It's going to be better than ever. Dad's on her. I don't know what to say to you. I haven't got reasons, just excuses. I let things slide. Blanche always said I were a waste of space. You were right. You were an hour away. One poxy hour. I might as well have been in Outer Mongolia. Losing touch with you is the biggest regret of my life. You know, I look at Amy sometimes, and I hate you so much. She's already a person at just 13 months old. She loves um, Balamori and dogs and, and hummus. <laughs> She's mad for hummus. She's changing every day and she can't half throw a wobbler. It's gonna be a complete nightmare. And you love George and Zippy and that creepy bear. Bungle. Aye, Bungle. I'm pulling my hair. And you used to mind sweep the mugs for any cold tea. Clean bill of health. No. You're free to take her home. Thank you very Thank much you. for everything you've Thank done. You. Right, I'll, uh, I'll give Steve a ring. He said he'd give us a lift home. Hey, you really gave us a scare, you know, Tinkerbell. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Get your hands off my daughter. I was just... What, you think you can breeze in here after 26 years and play the doting grandfather? No, Dad, I... take her. Luke. We're going home. So, what am I meant to do now, then, eh? Go forwards in life. Yeah. Yeah, with Martin. I'm going to get him back. Brilliant. I will, you know. Just look at when Sarah's baby died. I thought that was me and him finished forever. But you can't just turn your feelings off like a tap, can you? Oh, no. He thought he hated me. But the truth is, he couldn't live without me. He thinks he hates me, but, you know, give him a few months. A few years, even, if that's what it takes. Because he will miss me, you know. We love each other. And that just doesn't go because of an abortion. <laughs> I am sorry to disappoint you. And you have got to forget how much you hate him and focus on how much I love him. Cos you owe me that, Dad! You and Mum owe me that big time. I can see why you're university material. All that drive and ambition. I mean, most kids with a brain like yours are planning trips around the world. But what's in your diary, eh? Three years hanging around Roy's Rolls waiting for the forgiveness of a pervert. Don't who, call him that! Who's brought you not but misery since day one? Now, that's what I call a game plan. I am in this mess cos you fed me lies! We threw you a lifeline! You sure Rosie didn't say anything to Gemma? Positive. But Gemma just think you're seeing somebody. Just kids? Yeah, with eyes and ears. And the best education money can buy. Money I've earned here with my uh, various positions. You're absolutely certain that Gemma hasn't put the two of us together? No, it's only Rosie playing the detective. Well, you didn't admit to it. What did he take me for? Oh, don't answer that. Rosie actually said my name. I told her it was rubbish and she believed me. Well, get rubbish she might pass on to Gemma or to Kevin. No, she wouldn't dare, because I put the frighteners on her. I mean, what child wants the parents to split up? It's a sign. We've been sailing too close to the wind. Is it, Tech? It's all tied up with this mechanic of Kevin's I was telling you about. I just got caught in the crossfire, that's all. It's too close a call. What are you saying? I'll write you the best references in town. Oh, no. No way. Oh, come on, we can't rely on the discretion of your 14-year-old daughter. She knows not to push me. She's got too much to lose. We all have. Meaning? Meaning, the situation is very much in hand. You are a very bad influence. You haven't even said you're sorry. You're sorry for what? For lying about Marty, for making me kill my baby. I'm not sorry. 
I'm not a hypocrite. <gasps> you poisoned me against him! Look, if Platt hadn't have been so chummy with Sally Webster, I wouldn't have been suspicious in the first place. He played right into my hands. <gasps> oh, my God! Can you, can you hear yourself? Look, all I've ever done is put you first. You're my flesh and blood. My baby was your flesh and blood. But you couldn't get me booked in that clinic quick enough! It was the lesser of the evils. There's no point hanging around. In case I changed my mind? Partly, yeah. <sighs> Look, I'm only being honest. You need someone who tells it like it is. Yeah, but you tell it like it isn't. You got it wrong. A matter of life and death and you're not even sorry. Is there somewhere we could go? All of us, have a chat. There's somewhere we can go, yeah, it's called home. Can I knock round tomorrow? No! Where's Steve? I, he said he was five minutes away. Are you still in Coronation Street? Don't tell him anything. Please. No, Please. She's a grown woman, we don't call her shots. Tracy! Please! I know it's more than I... Is it... Oh. Ray! It was my baby too. Half Harris. And half Platt. You'd be tied to that beast forever. This way you're free. Free to top myself. Oh, I don't talk daft. You have destroyed my life. I had a future. A man I loved, a baby I'd long for. It was a fantasy, you're a bloody kid. What went through your head when you saw him and Sally, eh? When you thought they were at it? Was it, oh my God, poor Katie. Oh, bingo, Platt is history. Platt's history, and I was right all along. I wanted to kill him. No change there, then. For cheating on you. For cheating on my little girl. I bet it was all your Christmases. It was like winning the lottery. Oh, my God! I gave you information, and you made a decision. Oh, yeah. I knew that once you got rid of his kid, it'd be curtains for you and Platt. Oh, you'd keep going back to him, because you're a glutton for punishment. But I knew that'd be as far as he was concerned. You'd killed his kid. Finito. Look, I'm just being honest. You deserve the truth. Truth is, you're probably getting a little too old for his taste now anyway. Stop it. You know, I thought it was Sally. But part of me was always wondering, was it Rosie? Stop it. It's not beyond the realms, is it? I mean, everybody knows he likes a bit of school. Oh. Him right. Tommy. 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 Tommy, wake up. Tom, speak to me. Tommy, wake up. It's about time you got a taste of your own medicine. I don't want to hear it, Dad! I'm sick of you interfering in my life! I'm sick of it! Tommy, wake up. No, don't do this to me. Don't do this, Tom. He's not dead. No, he's not dead. I hardly touched him. You killed him? No! No, I'll ring an ambulance. I'll ring an ambulance and he'll be all right. Go on, then. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Is he not breathing? No! Ring an ambulance! Oh, God! She's his daughter and I'm his ex-wife. Right, and what's his name? Ray, Ray Langton. He, he just collapsed a few minutes ago here in the hospital. Look, I'll see what I can find out for you. Wait here. Thanks. What did she say? She's gone to see what she can find out. Listen, we've been here long enough. I think we should go. Well, she won't be long. I mean, you want to find out if he's OK. He runs over Amy. He stops your wedding. Why should you care whether he's all right? Let's just give it a little bit longer. We could always ring up, you know. I mean, there's a lot we can do here, actually, is there? We can't just leave him here on his own. Why? He left us on our own for 26 years. That's all my life, more or less. I know, but... No buts. 
I'm going home. Amy needs a bed. Are you coming, Dad? You go if you want. I'll follow you. Look, it could be hours before they tell you anything. You know what hospitals are like. Why don't you ring up later? Ken, if you don't want to stay, go home. I, I don't mind. We were meant to be going home together tonight as man and wife. We didn't do it on purpose. We can get married another day. Oh, come on, Dad. Okay. Fine. I'll see you later. Why did you do it? What? Why did you do it? How did this happen? It wasn't me. I saw you. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't... How did it, it come to this kid? It was an accident! I saw you! It was! I saw you! I didn't mean to kill him! I just lost my temper! He lied! He split me and Martin up with his lies! You helped him do it! I didn't We never... thought it was the truth! Well, I'd have never have believed him if it wasn't for you. We thought it was the truth. Yeah, well, it wasn't! And I should have known. But instead, only persuade me to get rid of my <laughs> And all the time, all he cared about, all he ever cared about, was splitting me and mine up. If you hadn't kept into don't me... You, <laughs> don't you blame it for this! You've just killed the only man I have ever loved, the only man I have loved since I was 16 years old. You look no, at... Look, no, no. look at what you've done! I'm sorry. Sorry, and enough. What am I going to do now? What am I going to do? I'm going to tell him, please. Oh, you ran them. Oh, I'm going to tell him first. Oh, well, it was an accident. I just... It was here in the moment. Uh, like, when he punched our Craig. Oh, oh God, Craig, what am I going to tell him? Oh. Sweet mother of God, how am I going to explain this to him? I just lost my temper. Like, when you slapped me, remember? You with me, Dad with Craig, he's the same. It happens to us all. He's just... He's just... Yeah, it's just, uh, just that you had that thing in your hand. It, it's not the same. It's nowhere near the same. How could you think? How could you not realise? I'm gonna show up fuse and I'm sorry. But we all know where we're going from. Stop it, stop it, just stop it. You just shut up and let me think. <laughs> ever wanted to do was protect you. And if the sight of you, this little girl, still at school, living with a man twice your age, that made his blood boil and he found that hard to deal with, so what? Who could blame him? He had fire in his belly. And he loved his family. He just tried to do what were right. And if he were wrong about Martin and Sally, then he were right about Martin and you. You should never have had anything to do with that man, Katie. And I wish it were him lying in her. I wish it were him. And I wish you'd never set eyes on my plan. <laughs> Martin, it's Rachel Clements. Just wondering why you're not this late. Let me short down here. I'm coming to the door eye. Give me a <sighs> Sorry, Rach. Yeah, yeah. Look, I won't, I won't be coming in tonight. I'm, I'm not feeling too good. Where have you been? I'm sorry. What with one thing and another, I was late getting back to work after dinner and I had to make it up. Thanks for getting the girls' teas for us. Where have you been on? 
Yeah, they said you were here, so I thought it might be nice if we had a nice quiet drink together after everything that's happened. What do you want? What I really want is to forget about Tommy and all the rubbish he's been throwing at us and just get back to normal, eh? Yeah. Suits me. Hey, Sal. Hiya. What can I get you? Uh, dry white wine, please. Uh, a large one. Oh, well, no. Where are they? They should be here by now. The ambulance should be here. Why are you not here? I didn't ring them. Why not? I need to think first. Oh, and they could have saved him! They could be here now, saving his life! No. They could be putting that, that zappy thing on his chest or something and they could have saved him! It's too late for an ambulance, Katie. No, it isn't! God, you have wasted precious minutes of you stupid cow! If he's dead, it's your fault. He's dead. I've got his brains all over my cardigan. You deliberately let him lie there. There's nothing we could have done. We could have saved him. We couldn't him. have. You know. Because I felt the life leaving, Kitty. <laughs> they bring people back from the dead all the time. Go ring an ambulance. No. The hell, the hell. Shut If Ray Langston thinks he can just disappear and then one day walls back and acts as if nothing's happened. Shh. What? Did you hear something then? No. Ah, oh, must have been a cat. Yeah, and just what Mum thinks she's doing, I don't know. So, when was the last... Oi, Rooney, you listening? When was the last time you hit the back of the net? It was just a blip. No, it ain't just a blip. Dad, it's a barren patch. Everyone gets them. Yeah, you know why you're having it, though, don't you? Because I'm not getting a service. We talked about you not getting a service. That's exactly the same. Obviously, you're getting too much service from Randy Candy. That is the problem, isn't it? Hey, The more you're screwing off the pitch, the more you're pinging it into the stands when you're on the pitch. That, Warren, is a FIFA fact, son. Well, I can't cancel now. I'm meeting her in ten. Yeah, well, you ain't got to cancel. If you just take her to the picture, then I want you straight back home and in bed by ten o'clock. Tucked up, on your own, by the way. Lights out. Don't trust me. You'll soon see the difference. Look. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a little wager, all right? You keep Candy's arm's length tonight, and I'll bet you'll score tomorrow. Well, I suppose I could give it a go for one night. It's not as if she'll be missing much, eh? Oh, yeah. She'll be missing plenty, mate. Yeah, a little touch of the Cliff Richards might sharpen you up and all. I couldn't do that till the end, Dad. Jay, she wouldn't even notice a difference, mate. Warren, Candice would rather take a book to bed, and she can't even read. She'd miss it more than Leanne would. Well, I bet she wouldn't. Well, I bet she would. I'm telling you she wouldn't. And I'm telling you she would. All right, what are you, the chuckle brothers? Right, how much? What? Come on, how much? Put your money where the gold mouth is. I tell you what, if Warren abstains tonight and scores tomorrow, and I am proved right that you two know I will be, the pair of you, the vows of chastity. What? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You live like monks and carry on living like monks till his goal-scoring run comes to an end. And don't say anything to Candice and Leanne. Keep that still, and we'll soon see which one of them birds starts complaining the most. Why should me and Leanne suffer to help him out? Well, do you know me, son? If you're not scared of a challenge... Oh, I ain't scared. I mean, it's not as if he's going to score anyway. All right, well, so what are you afraid of, then? Yeah, big man. Yeah, what are you afraid of? All right. Deal? You're on. Deal. All right. I've watched a man die before, Katie. I rang an ambulance that night. And I watched as a man died in my arms. And as I held him, the pub round me emptied. Regulars who'd stood at the bar every day for 20 years suddenly went home to their wives. <laughs> Staff had got paid cash in hand, got the coats. And by the time that man breathed his last breath, and I knew it was his last breath, and there were only the boss and me left, and she were upstairs at the time. When I rang that ambulance without even thinking about it, that's when our troubles really started. So this time, before we do anything else, we've got to think this through. We've got to think and get our story straight, OK?
fucking hated me for dragging you all here. Said I should have kept my mouth shut. Refused to testify. Never mind justice, do what's right for us, for the family. That worries attitude. But once I've made my mind up, he respected it and tried to support me. But the worse it got, the more you and Craig complained about missing your mates and changing schools, the more danger we were in. And that, the more I started to wonder if he hadn't been right. Maybe I should have put the family first. I should have kept my mouth shut. I should have listened to him. Yeah, well, you didn't. And here we are, so what are we going to do? Well, what would he want us to do? I've, I've got to give myself up. But you'd go to jail, I'd lose you both. A husband and a daughter gone in one night. It might only be for a few years. He wouldn't want you to go to jail. What other choice is there? If I run away, well, they'll catch me. And Craig, what'll it do to him? If this comes out, what, what'll it do to him? Mum, I'm not going to get away with it. I know. Uh, there must be fingerprints. There must be DNA and stuff no, all no, over the did place. Did anyone see you coming in? It doesn't matter. There'll be loads of evidence I was here, that we were both here. But it's your dad's work. We've got every right to be here. We used to call in all the time. What are you saying? Did anyone see you coming in tonight? No. No, I don't think so. Right, there were nobody on the street when I came round. Oh, you can't be serious. Okay, what's the point of you going to jail? Your dad wouldn't have wanted that. He'd have died a hundred times over to stop that happening to you. <laughs> oh, hello. Um, is there any news on Ray Langton? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can go and see him now. He's over there. Well, no, I just wanted to find out how he was. Well, go and ask him yourself. He's sitting up in bed waiting for you. Oh, yeah. Hi. Pull up a pew. I'm not stopping. Looks to me like you already have. Where's the others? And they've gone home. And you couldn't tear yourself away? That's nice. Don't flatter yourself. I just wanted to find out how you were. All the better for seeing you, love. Well, it didn't look like it when you took that turn. What happened to you? You and Tracy and my little granddaughter all on the same day. A bit too much excitement, I reckon. Do you know, you gave Tracy the shock of her life turning up out of the blue like that. I dread to think what she's going through right now. If you were that bothered, you'd have gone home with her, wouldn't you? I wanted to find out what you were doing here first. Look, I, I know. We got off on the wrong foot. Can we start again? Why are you here, Ray? What do you want? Well, for starters, I couldn't murder a ciggy. No. No, we can't do this. It, it... It's wrong. He, trying to get away with it, it just feels wrong. Doing it in the first place were wrong. It was an accident. I didn't mean to do it. And if I tell that to the police... You hit him from behind. In a temper, but this... this John and we in love with it. He's it, wrong. OK. <laughs> Call the police. Yeah, yeah. He's probably for the best. Yeah. You go to jail. You serve your time with all the others. All the other killers. All the drug addicts and prostitutes and robbers, it's no more than you deserve. Yeah, I know. Yeah, might help me make up for it all. Might help you feel a bit better. Because God knows, Katie, that's all that's ever mattered to this family is what you feel and what you want. So you serve your time. You do your penance. Ah, Craig finds out that his sister's killed his dad. Everyone else finds out uh, and all, and I'm left all on my own. It's probably for the best, yeah. What else can we do? No, you go on, you make that. <laughs> I'll bury him. I'll deal with Craig. You go on trial, I'll sit and watch. You go to jail, I'll come visit you. Uh, just do it! Do it! I've lost my husband and may as well lose you and all. I've destroyed my son in the process. This will destroy him. Yeah, and you won't be there to help me put him back together. Would you want me? Yes, you're my daughter. What else have I got left? <laughs> So, so you want me to get away with it? What makes you think you're ever going to get away with it? Well, are you confusing me now? You're going to suffer for what you've done here tonight, Katie. We're all going to suffer. 
This is going to haunt us till the day we die, and we will never get over this. I know. And I'll never forgive you for it. I know. Or myself. Because it won't for me. There'd be the whole width of the Pennines between you and Martin Platt, and my Tommy would still be alive. So what do you want me to do? Look. 99 times out of 100, we wouldn't have a choice. But because of what's happened, because of our history, maybe, just maybe this time we have. Why? When Tony Morgan got sent down, when I testified against him, he threatened to have us all killed. Yeah? yeah. We'd been on witness protection. The brothers came looking for us, found us, and shot Tommy. Someone's already tried to kill him. He's got enemies, and who's to say it won't them again? But they're all in jail. Not them all, no. They're a big family. Who's to say it wants some cousin trying to make a name for himself? Who's to say it want a robbery gone wrong? It could have been anything. If we can get back to the house without being spotted, who knows? I'm not here to cause trouble. Well, that'd be a first. You could cause trouble in an empty house. Part of the builder's job description, that love. Your first contact with your granddaughter is at the end of a car bumper. How typical is that? Well, I never meant to run into you all like that. I'd only just got here. I was going to get myself a room and then get in touch tomorrow. But I couldn't resist a look at the yard and Tracy stepped in the road and here we are. Yeah, here we are. I'm sorry about your wedding. Total coincidence. I'm not here to do a Dustin Hoffman on your and out. Dad? Yeah. It's a girl. So come on. Why are you here? Make up for lost time. With Tracy? Mostly. And Amy now know about her. You'll have your work cut out. As far as Tracy's concerned, you might as well be dead. I think she'll let me make it up to her. I wouldn't hold your breath. She can be very stubborn, and she likes nothing better than bearing a grudge. That's a pity. I haven't got much time. Well, and then you're going back. Then I'm going to die. Now, let's get rid of this. No, I can't do it! Everything you said about having to lie and stuff... I, I won't be... We've got to walk the haven't. We deserve a bit of luck, don't we? 
or is everything going to be against us for the rest of our lives? Now, come on, Katie. I'm going to faint. Get rid of this. Deep breaths. How are you feeling? How do you think? But you're not going to faint. Out of these clothes. Do you hear me? I said we need to get out of these clothes. What if he's not dead? He is. But if we're wrong, then it'll be a blessed miracle. And I will spend the rest of my life on my knees giving thanks. That's my husband back there, lying in his own blood. Do you think I'd be doing this if they want the slightest chance? Now come on, Katie. Get out of these clothes, I'll put them in the wash, then we act as if it's a normal night. <laughs> Key, I'm doing this for you, you do know that. Ignore it. But who? It doesn't matter who, it's just a phone. What if it's someone who's seen us? I know you said... Nobody has seen us. Why would they be ringing if they had? It doesn't even make sense. We've got to stay calm. Especially you, after everything you've been through even before this. <laughs> Who knows what your blood sugars are like? But stay there, I'll get you a drink and a biscuit. Yeah, and that'll make everything all right, will it? Nothing is going to do that. Ah, oh, nice little family outings at Rovers. Oh, what a good life we have. I mean, seriously, don't we have a good life? I bet you were the happiest family on this street. I didn't know we were related, Sean. You can be related in many ways, Jason. Isn't that right, Eileen? Are you going to be talking all night? So, I'm in one of them kind of moons. You know, I must have gone soft in the head after what he's put us through. All right. Oh, yeah. That was me as well, but it was mainly him and his lies. And he'll come waltzing in work tomorrow. All right, Kev, fancy a break? Well, no way. Listen, Kev, it's not done any harm, has it? Done no harm. After the misery we've gone through because of it. Now, this time he's gone too far. I'm not taking any more. What are you going to do? Good girl. Right, I'm going to go upstairs, get changed, and put these clothes in the wash. <laughs> quiet, quiet, quiet. Wait, is it? I'll go see. You stop here. Tommy there? Uh, no, he ain't actually. OK, right, can you give him a message? Yeah. Just tell him he's sacked. Sacked? Yeah, and if he makes out he doesn't understand why, just tell him it's because of all the things he's been saying about Martin and my wife. I don't know if you're aware of all the lies he's been going around spreading, but he's lucky I'm not taking him to court for slander, which is what I will be doing if he had him shouting off again, right? I'll tell him that, yeah. Thanks. You heard that? I don't know how you could uh, pretend like that. Just say, I'll tell him. When you I know could, because he... I had to. Yeah, well, I won't be able to. I know what. And you won't have to. What, you mean no one's going to talk to Listen. me? Because they are. And when they Listen, do... Listen, Katie. Right, what's going to happen is that somebody... It might be tonight, it might be tomorrow... Somebody is going to go in that garage and find your dad's body. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and what I'm saying is nobody is going to come to you and start asking questions. Whoever finds him, they're going to ring the police and then someone will come and tell me. I can't, I can't stop N Neither can I, but I'm having two. <laughs> They'll tell me and then I would think, leave it to me to tell you and Craig. <gasps> no, Craig. Oh, no, he's going to... But what I'm saying is that you won't have to pretend. You won't have to put on an act like I did just then because... because you'll be upset. Because your dad's been killed and, and everyone will expect you to be. Well, I still have to talk to him. No, I'll do that. You can stop in here. Well, for the rest of my life! At least you've got the rest of your life, not like your dad has. <laughs> right, what I'm saying is... That you won't have to 
be behave like nothing's happened because it will have. <laughs> the worst thing in the world will have happened and they'll have found your dad. <sighs> we know what they'll have found. So nobody be expecting you to make much sense. They'll want to know why I had the termination. You, you'd split up with Martin and, and uh, you didn't want to look after a child on your own. I'd suppose they arrest somebody. Who? Oh. Or anybody. Oh. Wrong person. And they send this wrong person down to jail. <laughs> what are we going to do then? We, we're going to keep quiet then, are we? I haven't a clue. Well, we can't just let someone else go to jail. <laughs> We'll worry about that when it happens right now. We've got to get out of these clothes and put them in the wash, all right? Ignore it. Ignore everything except what we've got to do. Now, come on. Katie, come on! Ray? You wouldn't have recognised him. He looks like an old man. But it, it really was. My dad, yeah, and I certainly didn't recognise him, seeing as I was only two when he ran off. And apparently he had some sort of collapse at the hospital and Deirdre felt she should stay with him. Yeah, because she's all heart, that mother of mine, or do I just mean stupid? I've got to say, he couldn't have chosen a worse time to arrive if he tried. Which he probably did. Anyway, sit down, Emily. Oh, okay. Can I get you a drink? Oh, yes, please, Ken. I mean, this should be your wedding night. We should be doing the hokey-cokey. No, but as long as you're all having one... When you say he had some sort of collapse... Apparently he's not a well man. Oh, so he wants us to believe. We're just keeping our fingers crossed it's going to prove fatal. Can you give me a hand, please? Cancer. Oh, no. Stomach cancer? You want to be precise. Can't they do anything? Not a chance. Too far gone. And have they said... How long? said it might be good for a couple of months. Six at the outside. Oh, Ray. It's one of them things. Come on, your next question. What am I doing here? Well, what are you doing here? Well, I just thought there was some unfinished business. As well as, you know, wanting to know how you'd all turned out. No. No, I suppose it's wanting to get to know Tracy and see if she'll forgive me for what I did. What we both did. I was the one who ended the marriage. <laughs> Can I have that in writing? No. As far as Tracy's concerned... Yeah. You were there, I weren't. Now I just wanted to know that... <sighs> I wish it had been different. We've been here all night, the pair of us. Haven't set foot outside the house. Until someone says if so was... Then we deny it. Sorry, no, couldn't have been. It must have been somebody else. And you think the police will believe that? They won't have any choice if we both keep saying the same things, will they? If! You do know I'm doing this for you, Katie, do you? You do know that? Because I'm starting to wonder why when you don't... Well, you don't even seem to be on my side when God knows it's taken the biggest effort of my life to be on yours. Well, then don't be. All right, yeah, easy as that. As long as the two of us are saying the same things, we'll be providing an alibi for each other. Yeah? Kate, talk to me! It's the least I deserve, isn't it? Yeah, we'll be providing an alibi for one another. Right, and if we do that, there is no reason that anyone should question it. I'm a, I'm a murderer, Hannah. <laughs> well, Anna! your dad, yeah. <laughs> the thing about murder is they always catch up, don't they? You read it in the papers, they always do. Except the ones they don't, the ones you don't read about. I, I can't stand the thought of him just lying there. How do you think I feel? All night. He, he's going to be lying there all night. Well, we must ask him to forgive us. Oh, we, we should have left the lights on and then someone would have gone in and, and found him. That. I thought of that. Well, then why did you say... Because it's better for us if they don't find him till tomorrow. <gasps> then they won't know exactly when he died. I don't think I'm not upset about the thought of him lying there. I want him found. 
I want him taken out of there and I want him looked after. But it's better for us if it's not yet. No, I was just going to do a bit. I mean, there was nothing else to do. You said you were stopping in. Ah, oh, yeah, well, I got fed up. I changed my mind. You can buy me a spritzer if you want. Yeah, of course I can, but look at this. What? Lucky I came over. This place wasn't locked. Mm -hmm. I remember walking you round the block while your mother and Ray debated their future. Here she is. So, who is he? And what's the matter with him exactly? What's the matter with him is... he's got cancer. And he's been told that he hasn't got long to live. Oh, how awful. Yes, it is. Sorry to hear that. And he's told you this? Or the doctor has? Well, that's what I was thinking. Well, he has. Then I'd suspend judgment. <laughs> he's obviously poorly. You saw that for yourself. Why you'd think he was lying? In fact, I'm disgusted to think that you should. We think he might be lying because he's got a history of it. What's he doing back here if he's dying anyway? What he's doing back here is he's come to see you. Although, if you could hear the way you were talking, I'm sure he'd wish he'd never bothered. <laughs> Are you ready? I was up this ladder, and it was one with I, because ours went long enough, and I got to the top, looked down, and I couldn't move. I just froze. <laughs> what, you're scared of heights? Yeah, well, I didn't know that until then, did I? I mean, Charlie was the one who had to talk me down. I should have been there now. And to think, when you were little, I could never take you on the top deck of a bus without you screaming. <laughs> You'll have to stick to building bungalows, mate. Yeah, it looks like I will. You know, I was so embarrassed. Oh, well, well done for confessing, Jay boy <laughs> I, I bet he's never been embarrassed, has he? Yeah, embarrassing other people, more like. You'd be surprised. Oh. Oh. Hey! Oh! Oh! oh. 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 They seem to have washed all right. Why don't you go to bed? And do what? Sleep. <sighs> You're not expecting me to sleep, are you? You will. I'm not going to bed. All right. And anyway, I suppose I did fall asleep. What sort of dreams am I going to have? You and me both. Nightmares! And you know the worst nightmare? Worst nightmare, be dreaming none of this had happened, and that Dad was still alive, and then waking up and f finding he wasn't. <laughs> On earth. Where's everybody been? Craig, I thought it was. You thought it was who? Oh, it's just well, we didn't know. What were we expecting? And why is nobody answering the phone? The phone, um. Dad was meant to be picking me up from Scout Hut, and then he went there, so I tried ringing, but nobody answered. Oh, no, the, um, there's, there's been something wrong with the phone. Yeah, well, I've had to walk back about three miles with this thing on my back. I'm sorry, love. Um, how was camp? Did you have a nice time? Yeah, yeah, it was all right. Yeah. Where is Dad, anyway? Uh, he'd gone out, I must have forgot. Oh, great. Look, you go and have a shower, I'll make you something to eat. Uh, leave that stuff, we can sort it out tomorrow. What's up with her? Hey, look, go and have a shower, eh? Go on. Then we'll have a big talk about what we've all been up to. Go on. She looks like she's seen a ghost. <laughs> This is where you got to. It's them I was trying to get away from, not you. Glad to hear it. Oh, Ken, 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry we didn't get married. Me too. But we will. Is that a promise? Of course it is. We'd have done it today if it hadn't been for that stupid accident. And the fact that that stupid accident was caused by Ray. Oh, come on, Ken. Well? Well, surely you don't think that him turning up like this after 26 years is going to make me question everything we've got? Well, I certainly hope not. So, he's in a bad way, is he? As bad as it gets. He says... He says he's dying, and I believe him. I don't think even Ray would lie about something like that. I suppose not. And without a soul in the world to care for him, by the sounds of it. Right, once I was walking down Albert Road in my trousers got... <laughs> 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 no, somebody brushed past with a lit cigarette, so I had to take them off. Oh, yeah, we believe that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, any excuse, eh? No, 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 but at the time, right, there were these two nuns and they called for a policeman. Oh. Right, two nuns. No, but the policeman was dead nice, but word got round and I ended up with my picture in the local paper. What, without your trousers off? <laughs> Embarrassed you. No, no, but at the time I had this really naff poodle perm. Oh, yeah, they are really naff. And I saw that picture and thought, I am never going to live this down. <laughs> well, my most embarrassing moment is the, the one that I have every day. I'm embarrassed every time I look at mirror. Oh, oh sure, oh, ma'am. Well, you mustn't be. You're the loveliest looking woman I know. Didn't mention he's gay. We all got big stuff in my face with these. Can you be addicted to Chris? Well, Tyrone is. Oh, I'm not. So stop eating them then. Right, I will. Ah, well, you see, I tell myself that every day, but does it work? Well, uh. Yeah, Mum, I'll finish up. No, you won't. I'm just going to cover all the mirrors up so I can't see myself. <laughs> I'll get the drinks in. Your sister's been through a very hard time. You know that she was pregnant when she finished with Martin? Yeah. Well, she had to decide if she wanted to have a baby all on her own. And she decided, no, that she'd sooner have an abortion. So... Which is what she did. So that's why she's in the state that she's now. Right. And that's why we've got to be very nice to her and look after her. You OK? Yes, she's all right. Like we all are. She's... We're just going through a bad time, that's all. Does Dad know about what's happened? Yeah, he does. Um, which is why I didn't pick you up tonight. We were talking about it and... Um, me and him had a bit of a falling out. <laughs> I know, I know it's been happening a lot lately, but... Well, it won't happen again. Which is what you always say. I knew. I knew when I rang and no-one answered. I thought, they'll be having a row. Never mind me. Forget about me, because they're having a row. And I was right, wasn't I? Yeah, you were, love. And I'm sorry. You don't know how sorry I am. And how sorry I am. But we all do things we regret, don't we? And we'll have to forgive us. But we still love each other, don't we? And we've got to look after one another more than ever. We've got to do that. Yeah. Right then. <sighs> Go to bed there, it's school tomorrow. Yeah. Night, love. Night. And I'm sorry about what's happened. Thanks. She'll be all right. Sleep well. Yeah, sleep well, cos you never will again. Shh! Well, he won't, will he? Nobody finds out. And none of us will. I can't do it. All, all this lying and pretending. I keep telling you I can't. And you don't believe me, but I can't and I won't. Shh! I mean it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna phone the police and, and tell them what I've, what I've done, I've done. Go on then. And so I won't blame you. I'll tell them it was all me, all my idea and everything. Good. We'll be fine then. 
Are you happy ever after, me well, and Craig? Yeah, yeah, you will, you will. You think? <laughs> Mum? Yes, love. Where is Dad? He's not gone far. Don't worry, he hasn't taken any clothes or anything. He's coming back? You'll see him tomorrow. Night. Good night, darling. So, are you going to ring the police then? It's you two. I'll bust my way. Well, how does that make you early? She means the one before the one we usually catch for running late, so we got on it and it got us here sooner than we would have been if we caught the one we meant to catch. Right. Remember, no more crisps. I'll try. I will, honest. And you'll do it. Uh, try. Well, I don't think so. Hiya. Oh, what did you get up to last night? Good night. You know, just chatting. Dead nice. I thought you said Dad would be back. And he will be. Don't quite believe that. Why not? Just where you and Katie were. Might have had some big secret. Well, we hadn't. Look, you'd have to be back, I promise. Put all this out your head and just concentrate on your lessons, yeah? See you. See you, love. for your brother to go. I couldn't face him. Have they uh, found Dad yet? Not as I'm aware of. <sighs> Come here. Did you get any sleep, Helen? Mm. I suppose I must have. Oh, oh no. What? You can't be going to work. Yeah. And leave him here. No, you, you can't what do that. What else can I do? We have got to act as if it's just a normal day. You're still getting over your operation and, and I've got to go to work, otherwise how's it going to look? And what do I do? Just sit here by myself? I shouldn't think it'll be for long. He's probably going to go berserk. Surprised he didn't come round last night. Well, App and Angela didn't tell him. In which case, I mean, I know you were mad with him last night. Yeah, I'm still mad at him. I'm still sacking him. Sacking Craig's dad? Hey, it's nothing to do with you. What's he done, Dad? It's, it's not what he's done, it's what he's said. Anyway, you two not go to school today? Of course they are. Come on, if you want a lift, you better be quick. Been saying things about you, has he? He's been saying things that aren't true. And that's all you need to know. Now, come on, chop, chop. Oh, he's probably going to have a go. If he does, I'm going to phone the police, so I'm just warning you, today, anything can happen. Hello. Uh, oh, Blanche, I was wondering about visiting Ray. Visit that waste of space. You'd do more good leaving him to stew. Go on. <laughs> Morning, Ange. Morning. Oh, we're looking at you last night. Were you? Oh, work. Must have a guilty conscience. No, I've gone and had my photos developed. Christmas party, do you remember? I tell you. You look like you were off your head. <laughs> Probably was, yeah. I meant to bring him in, but I'll get him at dinner. 
life without sex will soon bring its own rewards. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, what? Well, for one thing, it'll give you a taste of what married life's like, won't it? Morning, gang. Morning, Morning, Morning Mr Baldwin. Morning, Morning, Morning Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Fizz late again, is she? Oh, shut up, Tyrone. What, like part of Radcliffe there for a minute? Oh, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I'm uh, going to have to sack Tommy. You joking? No, I wish he was. He's been saying stuff about Sally. I've had enough of it, so stand by for fireworks. <sighs> he's not going to like that. Well, me neither, but he's left me no choice. You know, I came here last night and this place was open. Honest? Yeah. Anyone could have just walked in. It's probably him, you know. I left a message with his missus. Will you bob us a new thread over, please? OK. I've got pictures of you and all. Well, we'll do us a favour and burn them. Oh, why'd you say that? I don't know. They always think I look dead obvious in photos. Like I've got gay written across my head. Like a tattoo. What's he doing here? OK. He's standing around. Uh, the yeah, yeah, I think he's in his office. a bit of goalkeeper then. Have a word, Danny. Yeah, hang on, so something's come out. I'll ring you back. Yeah, of course you can, Kev. What's up, mate? Come in, shut the door. We used to do some modelling when we were babies, didn't we? Yeah, well, once. Oh, what's that modelling? For an advert with us being identical. We were like shampoo for babies. Mm. Two for the price of one. That's what it said. Two for the price of one. Did you never do out else? Oh, no. Our mum wanted us to have normal childhoods. Didn't want us getting big-headed or anything. Hey, do you do, sorry, darling, will you do us a favour? Can you just put him in the office for a second, please? Yeah, sure, yeah. Mm? He's been very polite this morning. Up knees turning gay and all. <laughs> <laughs> have a sit down, Angie. Have a... Well, hi, what's up? Some bad news, Edge. What about? About Tommy? We just opened up the carriage and, and found him. Well, he went out last night, we had a row. Yeah, well, someone must have gone in afterwards and attacked him, I don't know. Attacked him? That's what it looks like. So, how is he? He's. Uh... He's dead, Edge. I'm sorry. I want to see him. Yeah, of course you do. Of course she, she can do that, can't she? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's blood and everything. I don't care, I want to see him. Yeah, well, listen, we'll come with you, love, eh? Do you think there's some more? I'd say definitely, yeah. I'm going to go and have a look.
Dobrý Come on, Lord. We can't let you stay in here. Come on. Right. She understands, don't you, Angie? Yeah, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to go on? Yeah. I'll get somebody to go with you. Oh, God, it's okay. It's a dog. And she's at home, is she, love? Yeah, I've got to go on. Oh, it's okay. You know where she lives? Uh, yeah, it's just uh, two doors down on the left, mate. Look, she's got a son at school as well. I suppose someone had better go and tell him. When they opened up. And nobody's even thinking now that it's you, and they're never gonna. Right, they came to the factory to tell me that I've come here to tell you what they found, all right? Ange? Hello, love. Look, I was just. Oh, sorry, I was just making sure you. I'll wait outside, okay? Bye. Right, all they're gonna ask you is when you last saw him, which is when he walked out of here. Right, and you were too upset to say any more, all right? Okay, we'll get over this. The worst is over. Being. Well, not good. I mean, a boy doesn't know. They're bringing him home from school. Oh. So who killed him? Did I know that yet? Well, uh, well, if they do, they ain't told me. Anyway, it's too early for that. I mean, they'll have to do forensics first when they go up and down asking the street questions and stuff, won't they? I told Ian what had happened and he said I could take the morning off. We didn't turn on just to open the garage in. Found him there. I need to go and tell Angus what had happened. What are you going to say to the police? Because, well, you haven't talked to them yet, have you? No, not yet. What do you mean? What am I going to say to him? Well, I, I, I just think all that stuff about, you know, Tommy saying I'm having an affair, they're not going to want to know about all that, are they? They're going to want to know why I sacked him. Well, because you couldn't work with him anymore. You don't have to go into details. I just think... There's no point wasting their time with things that can't possibly have anything to do with it. Your son's here now. They've brought him from school. Are you sure you don't want me to tell him? No. I'd sooner tell him himself. You don't have to say anything. I'll do all the talking. What is it? What's happened? Just c come and sit down, love. Is it me dad? <laughs> Your dad... Uh... That's dead. Uh, somebody's attacked him and killed him. Martin. No. Nobody knows. They've only just found him this morning. It wasn't Martin. What do you mean? Just, there's no reason to think that it was. We'd, nobody knows who it was, not yet. But me dad... He's dead. Yes, love, he is. I'm so, so sorry. Oh, look who it is. Oh, as if we didn't have enough trouble for one day. Uh, who is it? Coronation Street. Never thought I'd set foot on these doubles again. What's going on? That's all new. All that? When did all that get done? Oh, what are you well, doing? Bringing him on a guided tour? 
Well, I, I suppose so, in a way, yes. But uh, no, actually, Ray has come to stay with me for a while. His what? Stopping in your house, you mean? For a while, yes. Well, is somebody going to introduce me? Yeah, I will. It's my dad, who left when I was two years old. And who's now that stupid? He thinks he can come back and stop next door, and we're all going to get to know each other. And I'm going to call him Daddy. Well, is that what you think, Ray? Because I tell you something, you are wasting your time because it is not going to happen. I was said there was very warm hearted round here. Give you the last eightney if you were in need. You'd pinch it, you mean. But, but what on earth is going on? Oh, just a little murder we've had. Might not be the last either if he doesn't behave himself. Staying for how long? A while. Well, I suppose he got nowhere else to go. Oh, what about back to where he came from? Here, here. I don't think he's up to travelling. When I saw him last Hello? night... Oh, come in, Emily. I, uh... I just thought I should explain. Well, we'd sooner you explain to him why he's not welcome here. Well, I do understand how you must feel. So then why? And I'm sorry. But I just couldn't turn my back and leave him in that hospital ward. Of course you couldn't. I was always quite close to him when he lived here. You were, I know. And I can't abandon him when it seems as though he's got nobody else in the world. Well, but isn't hospital the best place for him if he's supposed to be seriously ill? Well, apparently he's all right most of the time. Oh, what a shame. And this street is the one place in the world that he most wants to be. Of course it is. Well, it's the one place in the world I don't want him to be. Sorry. Well, you're a Christian, Emily. No one can deny that. Well, I just I can't forget the way we all used to be. Hey, didn't... Hey, well, you know all about this. Didn't Angela and Tommy move here under some witness programme or something? Well, witness protection scheme, yeah. Mm. Is that a fact? Yeah, cos I... Well, you, you say it. Well... Angela got threatened because she testified in court, so they moved her here for her own safety. Except she weren't that safe, was she? Because they came after him and didn't Tommy get shot? He did, yeah. It's like the Wild West round here. Sometimes you can see the vultures circling the chimneys. So what do you reckon? These geezers have come after him again, then, or what? Well, they could have, yeah. Which will make Angela feel even worse, because she'll think it was her fault for testifying in the first place. If she can possibly feel any worse than she does now. Right, I'm going to go out and see if there's out happening. Hang on, Lippy, look, I thought we might do some work sometime. Not yet, Mr Baldwin, it just don't feel right. All right, well, if anyone's making a cup of Rosie, I'll have mine in the office, and don't forget... Your custard creams, we know, Mr Baldwin. I'm going with Janice. All right, Fuzz. We used to live at number five. Oh, the batter's biz. <laughs> you won't want to live there now. Also had a spell at number nine. The Duckworths. Which were two houses... We are gapping between where number seven should have been. Oh. Not anymore, because your old sparring partner, Len, rebuilt them, and now they're lived in by a family from London. Refugees, are they? Oh, they're all right. You just need an interpreter when they talk to you. <laughs> How long have you been lodging in, Norris? Oh, it'll be four years now. About time you met an honest woman of her, isn't it? I'm not sure I know what you mean by that. <laughs> he always had a quick tongue, didn't you, Ray? Did I? I don't know. It seems as though you're going to need it as well. If you're ever going to get into Tracy's good books. Yep. Should have expected it, I suppose. Yeah, she can be difficult, even with people who didn't desert her in her childhood. This is a terrible thing, but we've got to help one another. Yeah. Stick together like your dad would have wanted us to. Who do you think killed him? Oh, well, we don't any of us know. Who do you think? Well, she don't know either. How, how can any of us? I just thought I should tell you, um, they're about to move your husband's body. I'm not saying you should go down. That's, that's entirely up to you. But I just thought you should know what's happening. Um, yeah, I think we should go down, Craig. Yeah, I suppose. Katie. 
I know this is going to take a really big effort, but I think there's one that you should try and make. Go down and uh, be there when they take your dad away. I think it might help a bit, yeah? Tommy's body away. Oh no. Oh, don't worry, Sean, it's all wrapped up. Yeah, come on. Come on, Sean. Uh, hey, what's going on? We're taking Tommy's body away. So we've provided the guard of honour, are we? Okay, fair enough, come on in. Off you goes. We'll go home and stand for a minute and then we'll come back in the house. I'm not going in the garage. I could never go back in there. It's all right. We're not going to, Daddy. No. Don't look, Norris. Come on. You right, son? Can't believe it. No, no, me neither, mate. Me neither. Do you have to do this now? We have to take samples to eliminate you and the family from our inquiries. It feels like we're the criminals. We wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't absolutely necessary. Look, why don't I put the kettle on, eh? Craig. I'm going up to get changed. Craig. I'll get that. How's she coping? I've got to get the body on a need ASAP. Please, don't whisper in my house. If you've got something to say, then just say it. Mrs Harris, Detective Inspector Pinnock. I, uh, I need someone to make a formal identification of the body. I, ca I can't. I can't leave my kids now. I can stay here if you like. Look, they just found out the father's been killed. You seriously think I'm going to leave him, will you? No, we can get you back here in half an hour. It's OK. I'm OK. I'm not leaving you. Mum, I'm all right. He was just a decent bloke. Loved his family. You got on all right? Yeah. He thumped me once, like, over Katie. He was very protective. You were seeing his daughter? Uh, no, no. It was Martin Platt. You see, that's what really wound Tommy up. 
She's 16, he's nearly 40. So no love lost there? No. In fact, I had to drag him off him the other day. So he had a real temper. And what was this particular fight about? What was the fight about? OK, girls, gather round, please. Can I have a word? Quick as you can. Well, it's a bad day, and that's for sure. And, um... I know all our thoughts are going to be with Angie and her family, eh? Yeah? Good. Right, well, the old Bill have told me that they've already spoken to everyone in here, but they might want to speak to some of us again, if that's all right. Where's Mincemeat? Oh, he was very upset. Fine. OK, well, anyway, I've told them we'll cooperate in any way we can with the investigation. So has he definitely been murdered, then? Looks like it, yeah. Now, I know it's not easy, but seeing how we've, you know, missed the morning's work already, I think the best thing for us to do, maybe, is get back on the machine. Oh. Listen, just listen. I think the best thing for us to do is maybe get back on the machines and try not to think too much about it. You still expect us to work today? Yes, I do. It's a, listen, it's a hard fact, Lippy love, but life goes on. Yeah, well, that might be all right for me and you. But what about poor Angela? She's just lost her husband. Yes, I know. I think that you should shut this factory today as a mark of respect. Yeah, I think that probably will be the best thing to do. I do think it'd be a nice gesture. <clears throat> Two things. One, we've got to get an order out, finished, and done by five o'clock. And two, I'm not sure how much comfort it will be for Angela to know that her lazy workmates are drinking the afternoon away in the pub. Are you, hang on a minute. You heartless swine. I was thinking about making a gesture of respect. Really? So, all you care about are your orders and your profits and screwing your workers. Steady on, now. I am trying to keep this place going. You are exploiting a tragic situation to scam the afternoon off. And you are an uncaring, self-centred slave driver. Do you know, you'd be happy, wouldn't you, if we all just dropped dead? As long as you could go out and treat yourself to a nice new shiny suit. They were 48 quid. Thank you, Jay. Well, they might not ease the pain. But at least they'll tell Ange we care. Yeah, man. Do you know, it makes you think. It's terrible, isn't it? I couldn't believe it. <laughs> He's dead. We know. You know, Tommy was a really nice bloke as well. Not Tommy, Shandy. Shandy? Oh, no. Who's Shandy? His dog. He hasn't got a dog. He got it with his last boyfriend, Louis, and then when they split up, Louis got custody. He died three days ago and he never even told me. I should have never left him with that two-timing pole monkey. I bet he wasn't feeding him properly. And now he's dead. You are joking me, Sean. All this over the dog. He loved that dog. <laughs> Just, um... Put kettle on, Jason. <laughs> Do you have to dress like that? You look stupid. Like I care what you think. Do you want a cup of tea? No. What are you doing here? I said I'd stay here till your mum gets back. Yeah, well, we don't need babysitting. You're creeping me out. She won't be much longer. I don't care! We don't want you here! This is our house! Don't have a go at her. It's not her fault. We all know whose fault it is. Yours. You don't... If you hadn't gone off with Pervy Platt, none of this would have happened. My dad would still be alive. No, it was my dad and all. That's who did it. Martin Platt, he killed my dad. No, you are wrong, you are so wrong, it's not mine. Yes, Martin. No, no, it was... Just get lost, Jimmy, get lost! It's in the pub till about eight o'clock and we was here all night. Yeah, with me and the kids, I mean, we were all here. And Tommy worked for you? Yeah, he did. I sacked him last night, I mean... Not to his face. I told Angela that he was sacked. And why had you sacked him? It's, uh, it's a long story. 
I've got as long as it takes. He was mouthing off, spreading gossip. He was telling everyone my wife was having an affair. And you were angry about this? Of course I was angry. I'm not angry enough to kill him. You don't understand. You see, Tommy had this thing against Martin Platt because he was going out with his daughter. And Tommy wanted to split him up, even though Katie was pregnant. I don't know where he got the idea from that I was having an affair with Martin Platt, but Tommy got it into his head that I was. And there were some people around here daft enough to believe him. Not you. No. But you still sacked him. Look, I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but Tommy wasn't a nice man. He was surly and bad-tempered. In fact, he had a vile temper. I mean, he made Martin's life a misery. So? Well, it's true. That family have caused nothing but trouble on this street. I'm not surprised that it's ended like this. I spoke to one of your employees today, Mr Dobbs. He told me about a fight recently between Tommy Harris and this Martin Platt. Yeah. Tommy just couldn't let it go with Martin. It was like a... like a running sore for him. He was a violent man. I've lost count how many times he had a go at Martin. And what about Martin? Did he never retaliate? Not really. Though he had a good cause. Because he blamed Tommy for splitting him and Katie up, and for the abortion. And they had this slanging match on Monday. And you witnessed this? Oh, yeah. And what was said in this slanging match? Oh, you know, the usual insults. No. What sort of insults? Martin, he uh, threatened to kill Tom. Yeah, but he didn't mean it. I mean, people are always saying things like that, aren't they, when they're upset or angry? Millions of people say it. And only a few ever do it. Not Martin. Oh, no, not Martin. Martin is a victim in all this. Maybe he was, but Tommy's the victim now. Look, if this is about work, then you're wasting your time. Because I wasn't at the hospital yesterday at all. Do you want a coffee? No, sir. Mm. It's not about work, it's about Tommy Harris. Oh, yeah. What is it now? What's he been saying? He hasn't been saying anything. He's dead. He's dead? Are you winding me up? His body was discovered this morning at the garage just round the corner. Tommy's dead. Where were you last night, Mr. Platt? bully you, but I will. Anything you want, anything you need. You call me, all right? Pick up the phone. You were the kids, yeah? Yeah, thanks again. All right, come on. Good girl. That's a lovely. He was so kind, and we're just pretending, telling lies. I need to get out. No, oh, Katie, please. you are safe here, Katie. I've got to talk to you. We have got to be clear on exactly what happened. They are going to ask us everything, pick at every detail. We really need to talk, Mrs. Harris. Oh. Pete's sake. Do our feelings mean nothing to you lot? You haven't given us a second's piece. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's got to be done. Can I get you a cup of tea? If I have another cup of tea, I'll explode. I'm sorry. Right, sit down and... get this over and done with. Look, I've told you. I was here. Can anyone corroborate that? Well, I was on the phone to the hospital. No. Look, 
Look, I didn't kill him. I mean, all right, if anyone had good reason to, it was me, but I didn't. And you know the weird thing? I, I know I'm innocent. I know it. I mean, okay, I've not got a decent enough alibi, but that shouldn't matter, because I know that I'm innocent. So why do I look at you and think you don't believe a word I say? Why do I think no one's going to believe I didn't kill Tommy? We're still at a very early stage in the investigation, Mr. Platt. Well, what does that mean? It means we don't know who did this. Well, what about that Morgan family? Excuse me? Well, when they first moved here, they were on some witness protection scheme because Angela testified against some, against some Sheffield criminals. And a couple of years back, they tracked Tommy down. In fact, they shot him. Well, it must be them. You didn't know about this, did you? No, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I phoned the register office. Oh, yeah? To apologise for messing them about. Right. Apparently, we can book another slot any time we like, now we've got the licence. What do you think? I think we should wait. Because of Ray. It's just bad timing. Right. I haven't changed my mind. So why do I feel like I'm losing you? Oh, you're not losing me. Look, we've waited this longer. A little bit longer isn't going to make any difference. Such a little coffin. Oh, Shandy, well, you came and you gave without taking. But they took you away, oh, Shandy. Well, you kissed me and stopped me from shaking. Wish you could stay, oh, Shandy. Sing with me. No. Oh, Shandy, well, you came and you gave without taking. But they took you away, oh, Shandy. You kissed me and stopped me from shaking. They took you away, oh, Shandy. As far as I know, both brothers are still in prison, but the gang is spread all over Sheffield. That's why we went on witness protection. And after the last time, we thought we were safe, but, I mean, they shot him then. OK, now, can you tell me exactly where you were last night, please? Well, we were here, weren't we? Mm-hmm. From what time? Um, I got home about half five. Um, you were already here, weren't you, love? Oh, what time did Craig get back? Um, about half nine? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he'd been camping. None of you left the house at any time? No. You didn't, uh, I don't know, you didn't pop out to the shops? Or... Are we suspects? <laughs> we just need to establish as many facts as possible, Mrs Harris. Oh, because I can't see the point of harassing us like this. Do you think I killed Tommy? Maybe we should take a break. Again. Oh, no, no, you see, you don't like it when you have to answer questions, do you? I'm sorry, but this is all new to me. I don't know how I'm supposed to behave. You don't give us a moment's peace. You're taking fingerprints, air samples. You're on to us every second, watching what we do like we're the criminals. I'm sorry, but this is the first husband that I've had murdered. The first I've had to identify lying in a freezer drawer. And I feel like if I don't cry when you want me to, if I don't break down at the right time, then you think that I did it, yeah? You think that I killed my own husband. That's what I feel like. Right, why don't we take a break? No. No, come on, let's get on with it. You ask your questions and then maybe we can start grieving. OK. Let's get back to Martin Platt. Martin, um, yeah. I said I didn't want any crisps. No, for me. It's my weakness. All of them. Well, I've got no other bad habits. She's addicted. I could help you with that. Really? Did you not tell her? I don't talk about you. I don't even think about you. In fact, if it wasn't for Shandy, my Shandy, you wouldn't even exist. I'm an hypnotist. What, you're a scaffolder? As well. Give me five minutes and you trust, and I promise you, you'll never pop another packet. Was he for real? Yeah. Go on, then. Let me finish this packet and I'm all yours. You don't think he did it? Nah. 
They reckon it was the witness protection thing, which makes sense. I already shot him once. Shouldn't we be getting back? I'd rather stay here. All right. Most things at home. Well, it's not so long ago. There were cops all over the street because of us. It sort of brings it back for Mum and Sarah. Yeah. I feel really bad for Craig. Losing his dad. I don't know what I'd do if I lost you. Yay. Hey. You won't lose me. I wanted to go and talk to him. I even went up to the door. Yeah. Well, the cops said I could, but I chickened out. I didn't know what to say. Oh, when bad stuff happens, no one knows what to say. Hey, send him a card. At least then he knows you're thinking about him. Yeah. Yeah, good idea. All right. Right, I'll ring your mum. Tell her you're having your tea. It's great to see you, Rita. But I keep expecting Len to walk through that door. <laughs> Some days I do, I know. Only well, have to want too many vodka and tonics. I give up. <laughs> What's he doing here? Look, we can go if you want. Go? I'm not going anywhere. You're not driving me out of my local pub. Go, go and sit down. I'll get the drinks in. One, two, three. Wake up. I don't feel any different. Was I under? Oh, yeah. Fancy a crisp? No, top. Eh? Did you hear that? I said no to a crisp, a cheese and onion one. Go oh, on, just the one. That is a miracle. I am cured. You are a genius. Yeah! Shame he couldn't keep alive one small dog. That dog wanted for nothing. Look, come on, boys. Shouldn't today be about remembering all the happy times that you had with Shandy, huh? Come on. A toast to Shandy. To Shandy. To Shandy. Do you want something to eat? No. Have you had your insulin? It's too early. Hey, it come away from the window. What if they know? They don't know. They're finished with us now. Oh, I know. They're coming back. They're coming back, Mum. Katie, it's OK. <laughs> You've got to be strong. See? See, they're going now. It's OK. It's OK. Now, look at me. Look at me. Right, the worst is over. From now on, little by little, it's gonna get better, yeah? yeah. It'll be okay. There you go. Thank you very Cheers. much, love. It's like old times. Have you any idea how much trouble you're causing my family? Some I was always good at causing trouble. You just don't care anymore, do you? I mean, let's face it, it doesn't matter how many people you upset, you're not going to be here. It's not a whim, Deirdre. I've known I'm dying for a long time. Maybe it makes me more stubborn than I used to be. Maybe I've got out to lose, but I'm not giving up. Tracy's my daughter. Tracy doesn't want you here. Ken doesn't want you here. I don't want you here. Oh, please, go home. I never expected anybody to welcome me with open arms. It's me flesh and blood. Sitting over there, and I'm drinking at Last Chance Saloon, so I'm not going anywhere. You better get used to it. Mom! Mom! Kitty! Mom! What's the matter? Mom, you gotta come now, they're arresting Dad! What? What's going on? Right, come inside. You arrested Martin. You don't know that. Look, he's dad. David! 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 You didn't do it Come right. Here. Just remember that. Just remember it. You Just can remember do. that. You didn't do it. Come here. About time. Mr. Martin Platt, recommencing 9 a.m. Friday the 11th of March 2005. How would you describe your relationship with Tommy Harris? 
We friends? No. So you were enemies? No, I didn't say that. Look, he couldn't handle the fact I was going out with Katie. His daughter? Yeah. So there was some animosity between you? Well, yeah, there was, but it was from him, not me. Well, I didn't have a problem with it, it was him. I tried to keep out of his way most of the time. For Katie's sake. For both our sakes. So on Monday the 28th of February, when you threatened to kill him, was that part of your peace process? We have witnesses, Martin. Could you speak up, please? I said that I didn't mean it. Oh, come on, people say things like that all the time. And sometimes they mean it. Oh, come on, I'm a nurse. <laughs> You're going to have to do better than Look, that, Martin. Look, I didn't kill him, right? But you hated him, didn't you? Didn't you, Martin? You hated his guts. Yes. See? Now we're getting somewhere. He did it. Nobody knows what's going on. Then why did they arrest him then? You think he killed that, don't you? She doesn't know. Nobody knows. He was mine. It was no one else, right? Shut up, Craig. That's enough. I can't believe you're being like this. All you're worried about is your boyfriend. Shut up, Craig. Craig. Dad's dead. I know he's dead. You think that I caused this? Right, get on them stairs. I'm going to tell everyone what he's done. He won't get away with this. I don't know what you're talking about. Martin, stop it, both of you! It's just us now. And your dad did everything he could to keep this family together, and I will not stand by and watch it fall apart! Do you pass the butter, please? Ken. I'm sorry? Doesn't matter. I love, how did you sleep? Well, I didn't. I wonder why. I slept like a baby. Look at us. It's exactly what Ray wants. Well, I, for one, am not going to give him the satisfaction. Mother, please. That man was born to cause trouble, but only you couldn't see that. Here we go. If I'd had my way, he wouldn't have come within ten miles of us. It's a free country. Well, here's some free advice. Send him packing and sharpish. Yeah, I have to agree with Blanche. The sooner he goes, the better. I think you should speak to him. Why me? Because you're why he's here, Tracy. Oh, right, so you want me to kiss and make up with him? Dad, I thought you were on my side. Of course I'm on your side. But much as I hate to say it, he is still your father. Oh, spoken like a true father. I don't believe this. You want me to do your dirty work for you? Look, kick him out onto the street and be done. Good riddance to bad rubbish. He's dying! And quite a song and dance he's making of it. Well, can you blame him because he's got an audience? <sighs> no, David, wait. Gran, you can't stop me. I want to see you. When you can't. Why? He needs me. He needs us. Look, David, what he needs now is for us to be strong. It's all that Katie's fault. Oh. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for her. I hate her. Well, you mustn't. Now, listen to me. However bad you may feel, my darling, you've got to remember that Katie's just lost her father. You've still got yours. And I promise you, he'll be home soon. This whole thing is madness. Uh, is it? Maybe he isn't coming home, ma'am. Yeah, you can't possibly believe that he did it. I don't know what I believe anymore. I just know my children suffer for my mistakes. Well, Martin wasn't a mistake. So what was Richard Hillman, then? Bad luck? Oh. Maybe it's something to do with me. Now, look at myself in the mirror. Oh, now, stop it, please. Stop that right now. Do you, sometimes misfortune finds us. Now, we don't deserve it, and we certainly don't attract it. Richard Hillman is where he belongs. Martin is innocent. 
You have got to believe that, Gail. So, how old was Katie Harris when she uh, first caught your eye? First I'd seen her when she was 16. Hmm. I'll repeat the question. How old was she when you were first interested? What are you trying to imply here? I've told you, right? She was 16. What a difference a year makes. Still, must have been hard for a dad to take. A man your age sleeping with his daughter. His precious little girl. Where is this going, officer? The inspector's just trying to establish a basis for the animosity between the deceased and your client. Tommy Harris hated you because you were having a relationship with his daughter, didn't he, Martin? He never accepted it. He made our lives hell. He thought you were a cradle snatcher. A pervert, didn't he? You don't have to answer. Look, no one was good enough for Tommy's daughter, OK? No one. We'll never know that now, will we? He's dead. You lose parts of yourself, ma'am. Peace here, peace there. You don't even realise till something like this happens. I can't trust anymore. That's what Richard took from me. Oh, you have got to try to put it behind you, my darling. I let a murderer into my life, into my bed. Sarah and David almost died because I couldn't see what he was. You can't keep blaming yourself. Can't I? Maybe I didn't want to see it. Oh, and you see it now, is that it? Hmm? You look at David and you see the son of a murderer? I don't know. Yes, you know, of course you know. Please. Darling, you can't let him hurt you anymore. Look at me. Come on, look at me. I don't want my children to feel like I do. They won't. We won't let them. This is an unexpected pleasure. How are you feeling today? Never felt better. Is Emily looking after you? Oh, like one of her own. Like her own flesh and blood. There's a woman touched by the angels. She's fetching us tea now. The music appears to have stopped. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, we've had his little dance, so why don't you tell me why you're really here? Straight to the point. That's a first for you. Dime's a first and all. The clock's ticking and I don't have no time to waste. I want you to leave. Today. You're not wanted and you're not welcome. <laughs> you haven't changed, Blanche. I'll give you that. Oh, I've changed all right. There was a day when I'd have given the likes of you the benefit of the doubt. I'm older and wiser now. And haven't you aged wonderfully? I've tried to be nice. Aye, I've noticed. I'm basking in your warmth. Stay away from my family. I'm warning you. What are you going to do about it? Make me lie fell, like you always did? I'll be there soon enough. Waiting for you. You don't think I believe all this rubbish about you dying? I want you to leave now. I never thought even you could sink this low. If it's sympathy you're looking for, you'll get out here. Get out! Thanks for popping round. Suddenly dying doesn't seem so bad. You haven't heard the last of this. Spoken like the old windbag I know and love. Oh, excuse me. You can't speak to my gran like that. What are you doing here? I think she missed me. Belt up. <laughs> well? I told this one to sling his hook. Tact was never her forty. 
Oh, and taking a flame in hint were never yours. Grant, I don't need you to fight me battles for me. This affects me as much as it does you. It's not to do with you, woman. I'm here for Tracy. Oh, listen to it. Go home, pet. I'll deal with him. Grant, just stay out of it. Ah, that's my girl. Oh, oh no. I'm not your girl. I'm not your daughter. I'm not your chip off your old block. In fact, I'm nothing to you, and you are nothing to me. I'm your father, love. You've never been my father. There, you've heard it from oh, the... Oh, shut up, woman! Oh, shut up! The two of you! If you really want to do something for me, Ray, go and die somewhere else. Tracy. And that's all I've got to say, really. Oh, except, if you two want to spend some time catching up on old times, be my guest. If you ask me, you may for each other. Happy now? You know what? I reckon Tracy were wrong when she said she wasn't to chip off the old block. I have nothing to say to you. I think you should have this. Shandy loved that collar. You always did have marvellous taste. Mm, thank you. Listen, those things that I said, I didn't... Forget it. Anyway, I'd better get a move on. Listen, Louis, don't be a stranger, OK? I'll be around. Actually, I'm seeing your pal Jason later. Jason? Apparently, the big girl's blouse is scared of heights. I'm going to give his mojo a workout. What, are you going to hypnotise him? I prefer to call it making a connection. Actually, have you got time to connect with a cuppa and a cream bun? So, let's go back to the fight you had with Tommy Harris. According to your statement, he accused you of having an affair with a woman called Sally Webster. We weren't having an affair. We were just mates. What made Katie think otherwise? Because Tommy told her! You know, it's not the first time he came up with lies about me. Mm, but this time she believed him. Katie took her father's side. She made a choice. Yeah. And because of the alleged affair, she had an abortion. <sighs> yeah. Doesn't sound like there was a lot of trust in your relationship. Kids, eh? No stay in power. Look, we loved each other. Wasn't enough, though, was it? So what, in the space of a few days? You'd lost your fiancé and your unborn child. You must have been angry. Yeah. What do you think, eh? I'll tell you what I think, shall I? I think that when you threatened to kill him, you meant it, Martin. John, cup of tea. I don't want to be any trouble. It's not trouble. I brought you a card. Um, it's from everyone at the factory. Ta, we're all thinking about you. You're part of our family, Ange. If there's anything at all we can do, you know, you only have to ask. Mr. Baldwin said that. I time. told him to turn that music down. We're a bit, yeah. um... Angela, you don't have to explain. I'm, I'm sorry, Ellie. Love, you haven't done anything wrong. Look, I'm going to see myself out, and if there's anything at all I can do, just bring it, eh? Everything's clean. 
We're not. We never will be. There you go. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Any of your thoughts? Oh. How much change have you got? Oh, like that, is it? Don't suppose I need to ask who's to blame. Oh, Rita, he's not been back five minutes and already he's taking over our lives. You can imagine how my mum is. Ready to string him up? Oh, preparing the noose as we speak. And Tracy? She's angry. You haven't said how you and Ken are coping. We're coping. Well, at least I am. But it must be hard for him, love. I mean, Ray turning up out of the blue like that. It's hard for all of us, Rita. He's just going to have to deal with it. Easier said than done. Anyway, it won't be for long. His timing was always terrible. I mean, there's a lot of things you can say about Ray, but he was never predictable. Len used to say working with him was like juggling frogs. Juggling and grenades, more like. Still, there were good times. Yeah, there were. But that's past now. And I wish he'd stayed there. Do you really mean that? He's not part of our lives anymore, Rita. He's part of Tracy's, whether you like it or not. Uh, let me get this right. You've asked Louis to turn Jason gay. He's not going to be gay. He's just going <laughs> to fancy me. Don't worry, there won't be any permanent damage. Might even improve his dress sense. <laughs> oh, come on, it's just a giggle. He's my boyfriend, if you hadn't noticed. Yeah, well, you're always saying he should be more in touch with his feelings. Well, I never said anything about brainwashing him. Oh, sorry, that's your job. <laughs> oh, it probably won't even work. Yeah, and what if it does? There's no way I am letting you make an idiot out of him. Now, just call Louis and get him to call the whole thing off. We have to. <sighs> Switched off. Don't worry, I'll find him. I hope you don't treat all your patients like that. No, oh, he wasn't a patient. His name's Carl. Carl Foster, yes, we know all about him. You were lucky he didn't press charges. What happened? I thought you knew everything. Yes, but I want to hear it from you. Something to do with your adopted daughter, isn't it? Yeah, see him. He was going out with her boyfriend. Todd Grimshaw? Yeah. Is that all? Is that all? Look, Sarah went into premature labour. She lost her baby. And you blamed him? I wasn't thinking straight. Well, I can understand that. I suppose. And when Katie lost her baby, were you thinking straight then? Hang about. She had an abortion. There is a difference, you know. She had a choice, right? Just like she had a choice about dumping you. Yeah, that's right. So if she had a choice, why did you threaten to kill Tommy Harris? Take a good long look at that and tell us again how you couldn't kill anyone, Martin. You all right? Yeah, sound. Never felt better. You look great, by the way. I don't say that enough, do I, Sean? I think it's your hair. They make a lovely couple, I don't they? Oh, I love get you out of uh, my head. You what? Well, it's really weird, but I've been listening to Kylie and... Well, I've never got her music before. Oh, my God, what have I done? Why? What's happened? Oh, nothing. Do you want a drink? All right, no tar. Oh, come on, pal. I mean, we've got all these things we need to talk about. What things? Relax. I've got all night. Um, what do you call this? I'm sorry. Thanks to Louis, we are getting to know each other very well, aren't we, Sean? Glad I could help. What's that? Do the honours, girls. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I think that's what they call a crime against her, Martin. <laughs> yeah. I don't fancy your Kylie much, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> You were there at the door. The police brought you around. 
No, don't. old Christmas day. Your dad dressed up as Santa. I do remember. You pulled his beard off. <laughs> Can I have this, ma'am? Yeah. He still ate it all. He'll always be here. When you finish with that. Hang on, hang on. I want to know what's going on. I'm entitled to know what's happening. I'm sorry. What you got there? It's from Iana. She's in Falaraki. These come yesterday, they were on side. Well, don't blame me. She has must have picked up the post. Who do this from? Iana. Let her loose on Bar Street. You're going to need more than one postcard. Sounds like waiters have all chit chat. <laughs> Hit a patter, she calls it. Oh, why? Do they need it with her? Stuffed olives. What? Not what, where? Hang on. Uh, that is a sort of cheese, isn't it? Uh, uh, semi soft uh, goat's cheese, I believe. Filthy there. Last time I had a ploughman's round her house. I'm just glad you're not with her. <laughs> you're joking. I killed to be. Well, maybe not kill. <laughs> what are you saying? Are you not happy? I'm saying I need holiday. Whether he is bad enough without this murder casting a cloud. Why don't we scarp her? Somewhere sunny. Leave doom and gloom behind for a week. We can't afford to... Of course we can. You leave everything to me. We'll be soaking up that sun and sangria faster than you can say aga do. So how come you're not doing Sunday dinner? <sighs> Let's just say my potato peeler's not working. You know, there's no point keeping this out of the fridge. You might as well leave it here to chill. What's going on? Ask your mother for an explanation. Maybe you'll have better luck getting one than I did. I doubt it. How do you explain a seemingly sensitive, intelligent man behaving like a nasty, spoilt two-year-old? Oh, I know who this is about. Just leave Ray out of this. Yeah, I only wish I could. Well, it'll be very easy soon, won't it? I know it's difficult having him turning up on our doorstep like this. Uh, too right it is. You know, I don't think you realise just what you're asking of me and Dad. Of course I do. Look, Tracy, I could feel just as bitter as you do. It'd be all too easy, but I'm trying to do the right thing here. And in the circumstances, I don't think that's unreasonable. Oh, yeah, and how reasonable is he being? Disappearing for all these years and then suddenly popping up and putting you through all this? He's a dying man. Oh, Ken, you are so much bigger than all this petty jealousy. Do you know you'll look back on this one day and wish you'd risen above it? Oh, really? Well, if I do have regrets, it's more than Ray Langton ever did. No, no, I appreciate the thought, but there's not you can do here, really. No, no, really, it's OK. We're, we're managing. No, they haven't released his body yet. Oh, no, don't apologise. Who are your son? Look, I promise, if we need help, we'll call. Yeah, take care, then. Bye. She's not coming here. No, put her off. I'm pretty good at lying. To my son, Tommy's mum, the police, myself. Yeah, I'm getting really good at that. Pretending I don't want to scream every waking moment that I don't want to die. Will you stop it, Mum? Oh, you want more? You want me to tell lies to you and all? Pretend that it doesn't matter that I can't grieve for me husband, that I can't give me son peace. Pretend that I can forgive you for all of this. You didn't have to do anything for me. You never had to do any of it. Look, just forget what I said. Neither of us thinking straight. I've just got to hold on to this. 
Your father cared about one thing above all, protecting his family. And you owe it to him to do the same thing. Do you understand me? But it's too late. I've destroyed it. If anyone's destroyed this family, it's mine. Katie, you can't hide from it anymore. We survived the Morgans. They were up front at least, but him? He came here as a friend. We trusted him, all of us. And you, young, sick, in a new town, you couldn't have been more vulnerable. But I loved him. Love don't bring you here, Katie. Like any 16-year-old lass, you were flattered that some older bloke looked at you. But luckily, most blokes know better than that. And most nurses wouldn't abuse their relationship with a patient. He never missed a flaming trick. He preyed on you, Katie. And your dad knew it wasn't your fault. And he never, ever stopped caring. Tommy loved her more than life. And broke his heart to see her took advantage of. And it's that pain that's led us here. It killed him in the end. There was only one person to blame. For you. There you go. One hot dog on me. Ta. <laughs> As I say, Les is gagging for an holiday. Me? I could take it or leave it, but he's climbing walls. <laughs> Trouble is, we can't all afford to go. Oh, well, that's easily solved then. I mean, if you're not bothered, then you can stay at home and Les and Chesney can go. <laughs> Les can hardly go boozing with Chesney, can he? Actually. I were hoping you might offer to mind lag for a few days. Oh, I were hoping to win lottery last night. Never mind, eh? Do you know what? That's got too much sauce on it for my liking. Oh, and ma'am, don't even think about leaving Chesney at home again. A week in Spain is not worth a month inside. Are you quite all right? Yeah. Ah. No! <laughs> Ta. Uh, what, what, uh, what's the trouble? My nerves. Uh. The shot to bits. Have you any idea what it's like keeping two grown men in a great day satisfied? No. And then there's little Chesney and all. Not that there's any trouble, really. But put it all together. And all my life. Well, they do say that some herbal infusions can be beneficial. Uh, chamomile tea. I what... can't drink too much tea. Weak bladder, see. I'm a martyr to me waterworks. Well, yoga is reputed. To yoga? Us. You're not getting me in one of them leotards. Don't matter how good you figure. Always looks like someone forgot to say when. Even Jerry Halliwell looked like half hundred weight and not his lack. No. What I need is to escape. Somewhere restful, away from it all. But we know one to mind our Chesney for a few days. You think some kind soul would take pity on me and me are in need? Have to be somebody I could trust, mind, who loves kids like I do. Well, well I, I, well, I don't know. I mean, perhaps Haley will be able to think. You're a living saint, Roy Cropper. Do you know that? No, what I meant is perhaps Haley no. would. Don't say another word. You'll spoil moment. You have single-handedly restored my faith in human nature, you have. Thank you. I heard about your dad. Yeah, come for the inside story, have you? No. I've wanted to see you for ages, but... Look, if you... I'd rather I went. I'm not sure. Fair enough. But if it's all the same, I'll stick around. So you are sure. Have you actually read a word of that today? <laughs> not that I've taken in. Listen, Dad. You shouldn't feel threatened. And there's no need to wish Ray Langton away. I've tried it and it doesn't work. But you know what I said that I spoke to him yesterday? 
Well, it was more of a row than a chat. Oh? Yeah, and well, he got to me more than I ever thought he could. Well, what did he say? No, it wasn't so much what he said. It's, well, it's just him being here. I can't ignore him anymore, Dad. I see. Yes, but it doesn't change anything between me and you. It doesn't change anything between you and Mum. What are you bringing in for? We're not to do with Gran. I'm going to come in anyway. I'm not a kid anymore. I didn't want you to see me like this. I see Gail have more sense. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, she had things to do, looking after Bethany, I think. Yeah? Well, never mind. She'll have plenty of times to visit me when I'm inside. Oh, don't talk daft, Martin. No. No, there's no point in skirting round it. Look, I'm sorry about just now. Sometimes I forget how old you are. Old enough for the truth. Martin. D just let him talk. Look, the fact is, I had every motive for killing Tommy and I haven't got an alibi to say that I didn't. The prosecution are going to make my relationship with Katie sound so dodgy that there won't be a jury in the world that wouldn't convict. I might as well plead guilty now. All oh, right. So you don't fancy a scrap you're going to give up before you've even started? That's pathetic, Dad. Now it'll be less painful for everyone. Me and Sarah need you. Bethany and all. If you pack it all in now, you'll be letting us down. And I'll never forgive you for that. David, you just don't There's understand. There's not to understand. You didn't do it. And we're going to keep telling them that. Don't matter how long we have to fight it, Dad. We're not giving up. Katie, I know there's nothing anybody can say. I, I just wanted you to know. Cheers, that girl. I... Can I uh, get you a cup of tea? No, no, I, I won't stop. Um, it's likely that I'm going to have to pick up the pieces at home. David's been to see his dad today. And you didn't go with him? No, no, his, his gram went. Uh, no, that's not what I meant. Have you been to see Martin at all? No. Well, I mean, I've had a lot to do. I oh, it's OK. You don't have to explain, Gail. Not to me. Cos we know, don't we? Me and you. But then anyone... I'm sorry. Oh, cos she's just a bit upset. No! Shh! She's... She's the one person who will understand who knows Martin like I do. She knows Martin killed Dad. No, Katie. No, you're wrong. I don't believe Martin. I can't. But you do. Stop lying to yourself, Gail. The voice in your head says guilty. And it won't go away, will it? Sorry, I... You can't run from it, Gail. I've tried, but now it's all I can hear. Mike, kill my dad. <laughs> about you. Every day. Well then, why didn't you contact me? You know, every time I got a text message, I just... I'm sorry. The number of times I had my thumb on that send button, then I thought about the perfume and... I feel so stupid now, everything that's gone on. No, you were hurt. You can say that to me after what you've been through. I don't even know what hurt means. Well, I'm glad. You know, I just thought that things were going to be better, finally. And then you left and all this happened. It's not just my dad, it's Katie and the abortion. It just, it just started everything over. Hey, yeah, look, it's going to be all right. I do want to talk about it. I can't talk about it at home because everyone's too wrapped up in this whole disaster. 
you know, I look back on my life and that is all. It's been just one disaster and one tragedy after another. Well, at least you're never bored. <laughs> I've missed that. Joe, you know, I've missed you so much. The thing is, I want to be bored. I just want to have the most boring, wonderful life in the world. Do you fancy it? Aye. Why not? Bring on them slippers. You know what? The longer this investigation goes on, the more I realise just what a nasty piece of work Tommy Harris really was. Hmm. Certainly had it in for you, didn't he? And you just worked that out? Right. Well, I can see why you made detective. <laughs> it's got more to do with knowing when to miss a putt, actually. I've seen plenty of bullies. In the street, across this table, even in the locker room here, Tommy was a bully. What do you want me to say? Well, a signed confession would cheer me up no end, but I'm not holding my breath. Uh, Tommy turned the screw far tighter than I ever could. And you held out for a long time. But every victim reaches the point when they've had enough. I've seen many a tortured kid zipped up in a body bag. Breaks your heart. But occasionally, just occasionally, it's the tormentor that you find lying there with his head caved in. Can be hard to feel pity. See, I don't blame you, Martin. Hey, you were pushed too far. You just made a mistake. Look, the only mistake that I made was falling in love. Love? Yeah. Love? Oh, Martin, come on. We're men of the world here. Yes, Kate is a nice-looking piece. Must have flattered your ego, but love. Look. What we felt for each other was genuine. So, tell me, when you flopped back on your pillow at night, what exactly did you talk about, eh? Her day at school? Busted. They're a band. <laughs> no, I hadn't heard of them either, till my daughter put a poster up at home. She's the same age as Katie was when you met love. Half your age and barely legal. Look, I loved Katie and she loved me. Did she? Yeah. Well, tell me. Now, when you need her the most, where is she, Martin? Hey, where is she? wants it to be me and in. You'll understand when you're older. Yeah, yeah. Got the money for my sweets. A quid a day, we agreed. And you're going for a week, so that's seven pounds. Oh, no, it gets past you, does it, you little <laughs> tyke? <laughs> Roy and Ailey used to look after Fizz, so if they can cope with her, they can handle out. <laughs> you're in good hands. What are you talking about? Roy not told you. <laughs> told me what, Roy? About minding Chesney for a week. <laughs> I'm going on a break to soothe my nerves. Well, what? You, you're going now? There were a cancellation at this retreat in Wales. They cure your stress or your money back. What exactly do they do? Oh, all sorts, you know. Uh, you have saunas and that. Then other folk kit you with branches. You can only eat lentils and drink ice-cold mountain water. Ice-cold water? What, what about your bladder? I'll cross my legs. <laughs> right, I better dash or I'll be late for the air. <laughs> the air. The lovely mountain air. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> See ya. Thought it might be you. Could have been Norris smoking crack. Still got the same juvenile sense of humour. <coughs> Keeps me young. Can't believe you're still smoking in your condition. If I want to blow some more rings of the devil, I will. Be smoking ash myself. 
so I'll keep on puffing away, ta. I've nought to lose. And there's a difference between us, I do. My family. You threw yours away. <laughs> what kind of a man writes his daughter off so easily? Don't stand there lecturing me. OK. I've done some stupid things. But I've learned a bit about you and all. You've sprogs littered across this country from Land's End to John O'Groats. Reckon you'd need to hire Old Trafford for a reunion. And then there's your affairs. You see, you can call me all sorts. Barlow, but never an hypocrite. I see. So a brazen attitude excuses all, does it? At least I'm sorry for my mistakes. So am I. That's why I'm here. Make things right with Tracy. Family business, you know. None of yours. I'm Tracy's father. Oh, sorry, pal. Only one thing counts in the end, and you'll find it's thicker than water. We've nought to add to our statement. No, I just wanted to talk about Martin Platt, if that's OK. Right, the antagonism between him and Tommy. Now, exactly did Martin feel about that? Well, I mean, did it make him feel vulnerable, or...? Or was he anxious when he saw Tommy? He'd feel threatened at first. At first? Uh, then he started getting in my dad's face more and more. I thought he was just sticking up for us at first, but he started to enjoy good in him. By the end, he was just getting off on rubbing my dad's nose in it. My dad warned me time and time again, but why didn't I listen? So you were having doubts about Martin before things came to a head? Did you challenge him about his behaviour? I couldn't talk to him about anything. Not after Sarah lost a kid. He'd lose his rag over, over the slightest thing. He'd changed. He was a different bloke. Maybe the bloke had always been underneath. But oh, when he batted Carl, I should have seen. I should have realised he was capable of anything. I'm sorry to disturb you, Uncle Roy, but where'd you keep the tea bags? Oh, Jasna, you're up early. Can't you sleep? I always get up at this time. I'm going to make a pot of tea for you and Auntie Ely. Uh, well, that's very kind of you, Chesney, but aren't we the ones that are supposed to be looking after you? Can you tell me where the Hoover is then, please? The Hoover? I like to do the housework in the morning, before I go to school. I see. Then when I get home, I can do the washing and the ironing. And, and is this your normal routine? Uh, and what does your, your uncle Les and your mother do while you're doing all this work? They work hard too. It's only fair that I should pull my weight. That's what my mum says. Yes, well, we, we might do things a little bit differently this week. Do you want me to help you out in the cafe? N no, no. Uh, your auntie Hayley and I are quite happy to cook and clean and we'll still have time to look after you. Now, come on, I'll, I'll make you some breakfast. I always make my own breakfast. Uh, now, well, not when you're in this house. Now, what shall I get you? Would you like some cereal? I'll tell you what. How about a nice boiled egg with soldiers? Eh? <laughs> A boiled egg would be very nice, thanks, Uncle Roy. Right, right. right. Uh, Can I have some bacon with it as well, please? Uh, yes, yes, of, of course. <clears throat> uh. We're making it worse. Katie, we agreed what to say to the police. You were with me. Ma'am, listen to yourself. We've set Martin up. didn't tell the police to arrest him. Yeah, but he And didn't... if they can find enough evidence to put him away... Yeah, but he didn't do it. He didn't do anything else. Well, as long can't... as he's in the frame, you're not. Remember that. Now, come on. I don't want to hear any more about this. You know, I'll be here in a minute. That's her. <sighs> Hello. Hi, Jean, love. Where are you? Right, can you jump in a taxi? OK, then. Yeah, see you then. I can't face her. And I can't face her on my own. 
The only way... Katie, listen to me. The only reason we got this far is by sticking together. Oh, she's gonna know. Don't be stupid. She knows me. She knows you. She'll, she'll see right through us. Look at us. We couldn't look more guilty if we tried. <laughs> I'm beginning to feel like a laptop widow. Hmm? Oh, that thing gets your undivided attention. Hardly. Hey, you're always on it. Starting to get jealous. Oh, Ken. I'd sooner we just argue than you ignore me like this. And I'd sooner just get on with my work. Besides, you can't be a laptop widow. We're not married. Oh, and that's my fault. Come on. Let's set a date. Oh, very romantic. I mean, just because your ex-husband, who you haven't seen for 20-odd years, is staying with a neighbour, why does that stop us? We could do it tomorrow. It's more complicated than that. And that is what I'm worried about. Oh, don't be stupid. That's right, though, ma'am. None of us want him here. He's showing a little sensitivity for a dying man. And what kind of sensitivity is he showing to us moving next door? Emily's an old friend. Look, we've been through all this. I don't want him here. Dad doesn't want him here. He's causing rows between the two of you. Why let him? She's right. You know, maybe it's time somebody made it clear to him that he's not wanted. I don't think he's in any doubt where you stand on the subject, love. Yeah, well, he obviously isn't taking the hint. So maybe I'm being too subtle. <sighs> Craig, your nana's here. Craig! Hi, Jean. Hi, Jean. Come in. Oh, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I nearly went to the wrong house. Nana. I can't believe I'm here. I've come round and Tommy's not here. <laughs> yeah, but Dad's been in the police station for days now. When are they going to let him out? I wish I knew. Soon, I hope. Very soon. Oh, is Ray in? Uh, yes, he is. Uh, do you want to come in? No, fine, thanks. Oh, oh, I see. Um, Ray, it's Tracy to see you. <laughs> Tracy? How can I put this? I don't want you here. And I know you think I'm going to change my mind, but I won't. And your presence is causing friction between my mum and dad, who I do care about because they brought me up. And to be honest, Ray, I don't know what there is for you here. Well, apart from Emily, and you must be starting to outstay your welcome by now. No, oh, I know. You haven't got long to live. And you probably expect people to pity you. But let's face it, that's not very dignified, is it? So why don't you go and show a little bit more self-respect and find a quiet little place somewhere, like animals do in the wild? You big fibber! What? Tell him you had training at 8 o'clock this morning. Yeah, I did. You didn't leave your house till 10. I saw you. What, are you spying on me? No. I just don't see why you couldn't have stayed at mine last night, that's all. Well, well I was meant to be in at 8, but I, uh, I overslept. Candy gave me a right rollicking when I got there. You haven't stayed at mine for ages. Come on, Candy, it ain't been that long. Over a week. I'm beginning to think you're going off me, Warren. Of course I'm not. Yeah, come here. Uh, I gotta go. Me, uh, me, me, a uh, calf. It, it needs a cold compress. I'll, uh, I'll catch you later, yeah, babe. I'll tell you what, Jay. This no nookie nonsense. It's doing my head in. You, um, you don't think he might be exaggerating? He's got a very vivid imagination. I think what he's told us is the tip of the iceberg. Even the bit about him warming up the toilet seat for Les with a not water bottle when it's cold. I wouldn't put anything past those two. They seem to treat him as their own personal slave. Hey, my dad brought me up all right. I had a great time. Yeah, yeah, but he was with Janice then. Now he's in for old Bacilla. Yeah, she's a lazy cow, must admit. Whenever I go around, sink's always full of pots. Yeah, and that's because Chesney's too busy making the beds. What, you really think they have him doing all housework? He is the classic latchkey child. He takes on the responsibility of homemaker because nobody else will. We have fostered before, so we do know our stuff. Yeah, well, he doesn't look too bad on it, does he? Whatever the setup is. Yes, but he's missing out on his own childhood. Also, that he can fetch and carry for that pair. Uh, 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 Roy, 
I don't think we've got any right to judge. Scylla has got issues of her own. Oh, it's been a lazy cow in issue, then. Mm. Well, <coughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know whether you know, but uh, Scylla has got some psychiatric problems. Has she? Yeah, but she was honest enough to come to us and ask for help, so she's not completely beyond the pale. Right. You, you are quite right, Hayley. We, we must simply do the best that we can for Chesney during the brief time that he is with us. And what does that mean? Well, allow him to be a child. Give him love, support, routine. Spoil him. Right. Uh, yes, in a word, yes. Yes, we, we cook him proper meals, play games together. In fact, uh, I might even get out a video. Oh, that's a great idea. Uh, but, Roy, get something like Shrek or a rug, that say. Not, not a wildlife documentary. Well, surely we want something that we can all enjoy. That's it, son. You let it all out. <laughs> I just can't believe I'm never going to see him again. You'll see him in heaven, darling. We all will. I want to see him now. I just want to see him walk through the door now. Sit up, son. Let me get me tea. I'm really glad you came. Is that your dad's chain? Yeah. I'm going to wear it forever. I feel like he's in the room with us. Sorry, should, should I not be... No, 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 I'm sure he'd love you to have it. He bought that chain with your first wage from Hobson's. Do you remember? Oh, how can my son die before me? I don't know, Jean. Murdered in cold blood. And for what? Why? What do they want, these thugs? Doesn't make any sense, any of it. I'll tell you, it might as well have been me they smashed over the head. My life's over now. Oh, please don't say that. It is. What have I got to live for now? It's my fault. It's all my fault. She blames herself for... The police think it was Martin. A bloke she was seeing. Jo, I bet it's that Caroline, a physio. I could tell she fancied him at the Christmas do. Calm down. You're getting yourself in a state over nothing. <laughs> well, he's definitely gone off me, Frankie. I mean, he hardly comes near me anymore. Ah. Well, I might be able to help on that score. I knew it was too good to be true. I mean, what am I? I'm just a backstreet hairdresser. And what do you mean you might be able to help me? Well, Danny thinks his game's suffering because he's spending too much time with you. But I'm always telling him to train harder and pushing him. I even help him with his wardrobe and everything. Yeah, well, Danny's bit him and Jamie that they couldn't give up Nucky. You're joking. There's 100 quid in it for the one that lasts longest without. Well, he's dumped. Hey. You're very good at dishing out the abuse, aren't you? The put downs and the sneerings. Only to people I can't stand. Oh, I know it's not just for my benefit. It comes too easy. That's why, Tracy? Well, it's a defense mechanism. I'm insecure on account of my father deserting me when I was a baby. I know you're not happy. You know nothing about my life. But tell me. Oh, just get stuffed, will you? There's plenty I'd like to talk to you about. I don't want to know about it. Ah. Are you sure you're not just a tiny bit curious to hear my side of the story? Look, my mum told me everything years ago. You might learn something new. There's always two sides to every story, isn't there? In a few weeks, when I'm dead, you'll look back at this moment and you'll say, shouldn't I at least have given him a chance to explain? I think I'm going to sit here while you slag off me, ma'am, you're wrong. Your mother's a very wonderful woman. I'm mad to leave her. I just wish I'd taken care of her properly in the first place. The pair of you. I've done some very stupid things, I know that. Yeah, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? I just wanted things to work out between me and your ma'am. Still cleared off, though, eh? Yeah, well, 
She backed out. You know what happened. Hey. I'm not trying to justify what happened. I just felt I wasn't wanted. You never asked my opinion. <laughs> you was too young to understand. I regretted it from the day I left. Well, it took you a long time to do anything about it. I thought it best to leave your mum in a world of her own. What, struggling to bring up a kid on her own? It's a hard, lonely job, Ray. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Yeah, well, it will long before Ken come along. And what, you thought that he might have stopped you from visiting? Left it too long. I just thought it were easier. Just to forget about us, yeah? No. I thought about you every day. But you never quite managed to pick up a phone. Oh, yeah, I mean, you're full of regrets now when you're about to snuff it. But it strikes me we didn't get a look in when you were fit and well. What's how you feel now? Fine. What do you think I'm doing here? Wouldn't it have been easier if I'd just disappeared for a couple of months because that's all it would have needed? Because you feel guilty. Because I wanted to sit here and look you in the eye and tell you how sorry I am. <laughs> wow, that is top. <laughs> and we have got a treacle sponge and ice cream for afters. Oh, wow. But you've got to eat your salad first. You need a healthy, balanced diet. OK. And then after tea, we can all sit down and watch Shrek. Oh, Shrek, he's my favourite. Oh, I love it here. I really do. <laughs> Don't think we're going over the top, do you? Oh, yeah, well, he deserves a treat. But besides, he's probably never had good beef before. It's, uh, it's full of iron, you know. Selenium for the brain. Yeah, I know, but there's no point in feeding him like a king if he's going to go back to junk food next week. Well, next week, it will no longer be our responsibility. Don't you wish he was, though? So what am I supposed to do now? Say I forgive you? Oh. Throw my arms round you, say everything's all right. Let's just make the most of whatever time we've got left. You're never going to believe me, but in all the years since I left, I've never stopped loving you. You know, for as long as I can remember, I've felt guilty. That it must have been something that I did. No. My dad left because of me because of something I did. What was it? What was it that I did wrong? No. You was a lovely little girl. You brought me out to leave you. No, I was a horrible little girl. And I've grown into a horrible woman. You can't have been any worse than me, deserting me own daughter. Yeah, well, that's maybe who I've got it from. You know, it's the first time you've admitted we're even related. Yeah, well, it's just a fact of life, innit? It doesn't mean out. Ain't it? Baby, I can't stay late. I just need to ask you a favour. Yeah, of course. Only, I bought this bikini today and, well, I'm not really sure about it. Will you tell me if it looks OK? Yeah, yeah, sure. Turn around, then. What, you gonna get changed into it here, then? Yep. Close your eyes. Oh, it's just like being at the pictures, this. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, in that case, could, could, could I have the, uh, the, the remote, oh. please, Hayley? Thank you. What's Uncle Roy thinking? A very, very old tune that shows just how very old he is. No, if anybody wants to go to the toilet, they'll trip all over. Oh, well, perhaps I should have a row of those little lights on the floor. Maybe an exit sign off the bathroom door. <laughs> Right, are, are we ready? I'm ready, yep. Oh. Are you ready, Chesney? Right, put the light back on. Uh, yeah. What on earth's the matter, love? I love it here. And I love you and Uncle Roy. But I really miss... You miss your mum and Uncle Les? No. It's Michael. I haven't seen him for days. Oh, Chesney, what a relief. Well, I'm sure... I'm sure a, a, a visit could be arranged. You mean I can bring him round here? Well, I, I, I don't see why not, do you, Hayley? Well, I suppose he could come for a little visit, yeah. Oh, come with phone cook. He'll bring him over. Oh, please. Um. <clears throat> 
Okay, you can open your eyes. It's not too skimpy, is it? No, no, you uh, look amazing. Do I? Let's go upstairs. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Why? Well, Miss Bunton's booked in for a shampoo and set at quarter past five. Well, can we really not do it? The thing is, Warren, I think it's time that I put my career ahead of having fun, don't you think? I mean, I'm never going to make it as a hairdresser if I'm frolicking around with you. Yeah, about that candle. Why that... don't you just tell me, Warren? I'm sorry, it was stupid. I'm really, 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 really... I'm, so... I'm, I'm really sorry. I had to prove something to my dad and Jamie. Can we go upstairs now? No. Oh, aye, aye. Oh. <laughs> oh, busted, guys, busted. Look, it's not what it looks like. I was just trying a new swimming costume on for him. Yeah, well, that's a new one on me. <laughs> Oi! What? Stop ogling! Or at least ogle at me. Oh, look, we never did anything. I wish we had. Look, I better get back to work, babe. And I think you owe me 100 smackers. Oh, you've got no self-control, neither of you. Look, no, we never did it. Only cos I wouldn't. Hang on a minute. Why do you have to shell out 100 quid just because these two got a bit frisky on Seti? These two had a bet with him over who could go longest without Nookie. Is this true? Well, yeah, cos I wanted to get the money so I could take you out, girl. Mm, can't say I noticed. <laughs> what? I reckon sex is a bit overrated anyway. I'd much rather have a box of chocolates. In fact, I could quite happy be, um, oh, what's it called again? Um, celibate. Yeah. Leanne. I could be quite happy with that. Might even keep it up. Excuse me, guys. She's very beautiful. She's a handful. So was you at her age. Her dad's hopeless as well. It's funny, that, isn't it? Stephen, too. Yeah, well, he's not as bad as you. At least he puts his hand in his pocket. I got the impression he were very smitten with her. Yeah. Well, it's just her mammy can't stand. You don't get on? It's complicated. So, um, what's Holland like? Very nice, actually. Very nice people. I'd like to live abroad. Yeah? Somewhere hot. Yeah. So you're married? No. Family? Mm. Actually, what I'm saying, I don't want to know. I actually don't know what I'm doing here. It's not doing any harm. Yes, it is. Cos it's making me think about things that I'd sooner forget. Look, Tracy... No, I'm sorry. I've been here long enough. I'm going. Hey. Can I see you? Please, I, I just want to hold her. <laughs> just for a minute. Uh... Come here, you. <laughs> hey. It was a big girl, then. You got her. Hey. I've got her all right. Did you have a nice sleep then? Did you? Mm. Did you? Take care of yourselves. All of you. And you. You're a wonderful mother, Angela. And you were a wonderful wife. And you... mustn't blame yourself. Jean. Take care, love. I never thought I'd be glad to see the back of you, Nan. That was the longest day of my life. Yeah, I know, we got through it the way. Come on. Come on. Just let him go. He didn't do it. Dad? David, just leave him. Oh, I'm sorry. I just... Sarah, get a brandy. It's the shock. You'll be fine. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, son. She just hit me like so. No, 
what? We don't know that. Well, why else would they let him go? If they thought he did it, they'd keep him in. They must know it was me. Stop it, will you? We need to keep calm. We can't lose it now. I'm going to prison. Oh, I just need to think. Just, just <laughs> shut up, will you? I never really thought when I decided to go and find you what I'd say when I saw you. I felt there were so many things to talk about, questions I should ask you. I don't know what to say. Just the fact that you're talking to me, that you let me hold Amy, I appreciate that. I can't tell you how I feel to have found you again. I wasn't a suitcase you left in lost property. Did you even think how I'd feel seeing you after all these years? I hoped you'd be glad to see me. It's just I don't remember you. You were just a name on a birth certificate. Raymond Anthony Langton, it might as well have said Father Unknown. I've never stopped loving you. You've no idea, have you? What this is doing to me. Every time I blew out candles on a cake, every time I pulled a wishbone, it was for this. To see you. Well, then. No! I'm not a little girl anymore. You're too late. You're never going to be my dad. You're just some stupid idiot that my mum was stupid enough to marry. No, that were Ken. He picked up the pieces when everybody else had given up on us. You're not fit to even speak his name. Tracy. No! I knew this was a mistake. You walked out of my life 26 years ago and I am walking out of your life now. If he wasn't dying, he wouldn't have set foot in the country. This is all for his sake. No one else's. Always a selfish swine. He was never good enough for me, was he? Nobody was good enough for you. You're wrong. We were good together. Still would be if... Oh, well, no point dwelling on it. Do you know one thing that I really regret? I wanted children. I wanted three or four kids. I wanted Sunday dinners and parties and a house with a garden. Ray wanted it too. And Ken didn't. By the time I met him, he said he was too old to have more kids. I was still in my twenties, but he was too old. If I'd stuck with Ray... You'd have had three more like Tracy. And I, for one, would have worried myself into an early grave. Don't talk daft. Get them carrots sliced. Somebody else. Someone else? Mum, there is no one else. Yeah, there is. Where's my handbag? Over there, I think. What are you, what are you looking for? What? What is it? This is our way out of here. Any help? No, I'm fine. Gail? Mm -hmm. You don't think I did it, do you? Oh, great. Martin, of course I don't think you. It's just sometimes people do things. They're driven to do things, things you'd never think them capable of. No, Gail. I'm Martin. It was your other husband that went round killing people. That's not fair. 
They arrested you. Of course I was going to wonder. What was I meant to think? No, I'm innocent. And the cops made a mistake. Oh, come on, Gail. This is me we're talking about. You're right. I should have believed you. But I've been here before, Martin. I believed in you. A good, kind, loving man. It was Richard. All over again. Now, Gail, you look at me, right? I did not kill Tommy. I need you to believe me. If it's not for my sake, for the kids. But when they let me out, there was one place that I wanted to go, and that was here. Hmm? With them. With you. I know I've hurt you in the past, and I know I've got no right to ask you anything, but Gail, I'm... I'm begging you. I need you to believe me. Look. I know I've hated Tommy. I know I've wished him dead. But on David's life, I didn't kill Tommy. I believe you. Are you all right? I don't know how you stayed married to that man for more than a week. Well, you shouldn't have gone round there in the first place. Yeah, well, I won't be going round there again. So what did you say to him? Well, just... Well, nothing really, just that I didn't see any point in him staying round here any longer. Oh, I bet he didn't like that. Well, I don't care what he likes and what he doesn't like. Oh, and, um... I hit him. What? And did it make you feel any better? Well, he was saying stuff about you, Dad, and I wasn't standing for it. Well, he, did you hurt him? Oh, I doubt it. He's thick-skinned. He's ill. I'm going to have to see if he's all right now. What? <laughs> Why? Because, Ken. Just because. Look, I won't be long. Uh, we go back to the original plan. Your dad's been murdered, so it has to be that lot from Sheffield. And I said that I'm scared. I'm really scared. Because I, I can't cope with the, with the idea of them being out there. And Because they want me dead. And it might be you and Craig next. Yeah, they'll have to put us back on witness protection. New identities. We could go anywhere, Katie. Just leave all this behind. And it won't be like before, because we'll know. We'll know that there's nobody after us and we'll be safe. Because we will be. We'll be safe. Because... We can just leave all this behind and just get on with our lives. So, um, does he have a special diet? No. He's like me. He'll eat anything. No vitamins, anything I should get in special. Well, he likes pig's ears. Ears, right. Oh, and I found an old blanket that you can sleep on. Can't he sleep on my bed? He does it all. It's hardly hygienic. I'll have a bath first. No, I meant that you might pick something up off of him. Did you not ever have a dog sleep with you when you were a boy, Uncle Roy? I had a gerbil. Geoffrey. Next door's dog ate him. Don't you like dogs, Uncle Roy? I've not had much dealings with them, not since the Geoffrey incident. Are you frightened of them? I, I did try to save Geoffrey, snatch him from the jaws of death, so to speak. Probably wasn't the best idea. You've got to face your fears. You should become friends with my Uncle Roy. He's dead friendly. Uh, I'm not stopping, eh? I just wanted to see if you were all right. Oh, please. We haven't had much time to talk. There's nothing to talk about. I used to talk. I used to curl up in bed on a Sunday, read papers, talk all day. Yeah, well, we used to do a lot of things. Aye. No sense in pretending with the same folk. Too much has happened. It's Tracy what matters now. Always been Tracy who mattered as far as I was concerned. You were the one who left. I didn't. Oh, yes, you did. It might have been me who walked out at door, but you walked out on his marriage. 
You made it clearer. I wasn't wanted anymore. Wasn't wanted? Ray, is that really what you think? You were my life. I could have coped with anything as long as I had you. But you destroyed all that. You slept with that woman and you broke my heart. And then you wanted me to go to Holland, leave me home and my mother, and I would have. I would have done all that. But after what you did, I just couldn't trust you anymore. It wouldn't have worked, us just sticking it out, trying to make a go of it. There was no point. You knew that as well as I did. It's just that I was the one brave enough to say so. It didn't take you long to get over me. Get on with your life. I had to. I had no job. You'd forced me to sell the house. Council were going to stick us at the top of a flaming great tower block. It was my money. I, I needed it. If Emily hadn't taken us in, I don't know what we'd have done. And then Ken came along. And I knew he was a good man. I knew he'd be a good father to Tracy. She already had a father. Not a good one. One who cheated on his wife, yeah. One who, who disappeared across the channel. You had everything, Ray. And you had to go out looking for extra. Oh, come off it, Deirdre. Everything. I had everything. I were up to me neck in a mortgage. I had Tracy screaming through the nights. I had you nagging. After Tracy were born, you changed. You hardened. You were the girl I fell in love with. I was trying to hold our family together. If I nagged you, it's because you needed nagging. You had responsibilities, and you were still behaving like some daft kid, larking about. Don't you dare blame me. Don't you dare. It's not my fault. See? It's like I was telling you, the breed was originally developed in Germany to hunt wild boars. So hunting, you see, it, it is an instinct. Big dog, small animal, empty spinning wheel, traumatised child. Schmeichel got eaten. Ah, I feel for you. It would take something very, very big to eat Schmeichel. He's at the top of the food chain. We, we went to a circus just after Geoffrey was... Uh, died. Uh, the lion tamer announced that he was going to put his head inside the lion's mouth. Apparently I started screaming, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, over and over and, until we had to be asked to leave. Do you know, I'd forgotten all about that until... Um... Right. <laughs> I've uh, put a blanket down on the floor in your room, so we should be very happy on that. Oh. <laughs> Uncle Roy, yeah. can Schmeichel stay here as long as I'm here? I don't think so. I mean, it's a very small flat. It's bigger than this one at the kennels. You should see it. It's not more than a cage. He gets sad there and annoyed us. Oh. We'll, we'll assess the situation tomorrow. Now, isn't it time you had a bath and got into your pyjamas? I'll warm some milk up. Might even find a bicky or two for you. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the potatoes. Do you think I should hang on for Deirdre? Or should we start on ours? Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not hungry. You're a fool, Kenneth Barlow. Not the first time I've been called that. Do you doubt her that much? You stand there worrying, fretting. Do you not know my daughter? What are they talking about? Tracy? You? Me? Tulips? <sighs> Ray, he always represented everything that I wasn't. He was always at ease with himself, men in pubs, women. A lovable rogue, just like Baldwin. Why is she with me? There's nothing roguish about me. Because she loves you. Men like Ray, they've no respect. No sense of responsibility, no honour. Men like Ray are ten a penny. It's fellas like you that are scarce on the ground. 
Well, I've made mistakes, Blanche, you know that, but... These past few years, it's all I wanted. Us. Together again. Do you know how much it hurt me every time a letter came to Deirdre Rashid? I want her back. Totally mine. And we set off to get married. And he's back, and it's ruined. <laughs> and I just... Just sit here, waiting. I have no idea what I'm waiting for. Somebody to decide something. Him to realize that he can't... Can't! Just... Just come back and have a hold on my family. My family, not his. He's done enough damage. I'm not going to let him hurt them anymore. Katie? Well, to let me go. You know, it wasn't me. You didn't... You didn't think it was, did you? I mean, I, I know you're upset. And I know you probably still hate me, but you don't think I did it, do you? I miss you so much. Katie. You get in now. Oh, come on, will you? Just stay away, Martin, and don't you ever come near my family ever again. Look, I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. I was stupid and all that. Chucked it all away. It was almost 30 years ago, and in all that time, I've never come close to having what we had of loving somebody the way I loved you. I don't want to hear this. It was always you, Deirdre. Even now, looking at you, I feel things. I, I can't help that. I look at Tracy, and it's like she's you yelling at me. And <laughs> the next minute, she's somebody else. You. Oh, there are times I've been so upset with her. And I, I couldn't look at her. Because I could just see you standing there, glaring at me, defiant. We had some great rows. It weren't all rows. No, it weren't. I didn't just come to see Tracy. Great. You're dying to see you thought you'd look me up one last time. It was another lifetime, Ray. I'm not that Deirdre anymore. I've changed. Me and Ken. We've been together 20 years. That's real. That's a relationship. We had less than four years. That was nothing in comparison. It weren't nothing, Deirdre. You changed my life. You gave me a footing, a purpose. And when Tracy come along, it were perfect. <laughs> we had no money. <laughs> Do you remember that flat I built on top of your mum's <laughs> house? <laughs> and we bought number five. All oh, mod cons, it were grand. But none of that mattered. Only us. What we had. I'm dying, Deirdre. Clock's ticking. No more hours, eh? I've travelled all over. I've seen places I never knew existed, but this... This run-down old place is where I want to be now. 
I've come home. Make me peace. I should never have left you. I should have fought for you. I should have made it work. I just, I just want to say, I'm sorry, Deirdre, for all the pain. Can you, please, can you forgive me? I'm sorry. Very moving, I'm sure, but your dinner's getting cold, Deirdre. Ken, we were just... Reminiscing. Yes, I heard. Let's get one thing straight, Langton. You didn't come back for Deirdre or Tracy. You came back for yourself because you're selfish and you don't care about other people's feelings. Ken! Whatever rights you had to Deirdre and Tracy, you blew them the minute you walked out on them. They're not your family anymore, they're mine. And I'm damned if I'm going to let you cause them any more pain. There's a policeman out there. What's he doing? Just standing there. Oh, but that woman's coming. That, that's Sergeant Smith. It's all oh. right. It's all right. No, get a grip, Kelly. Go on, sit down. <laughs> to me. It's all right. Good morning, Mrs. Harris. What's good about it? My son's beside himself. Won't get out of bed, won't eat. And he keeps asking, uh, why have you let Martin Platt go? And I think, well, that's a damn good question. All I can say to you is this. We've no evidence to justify holding him any longer. That doesn't mean we're not looking. In fact, that's why I'm here. Are there any of your husband's tools in the house? No, I kept them at the garage. Well, looking through his toolbox, there are one or two tools we'd expect to find there, but we haven't. Well, he didn't bring them home. There's none of his tools here. You can have a look round if you want. No. If you say they're not here, fair enough. Mind you, we might want to give this house a thorough going over at some stage soon. See if there's anything that might shed some light. Such as what? I don't know. We'd only know if we found something that helped. Well, I'll leave you in peace. If it weren't Martin, and I say if, you want to be getting onto them thugs from Sheffield. Because they came here once before trying to get me. Because I, I gave evidence against them, as well you know. And they're in jail for it. But the friends aren't. That's why we need to go back on witness protection. Well, maybe they came looking for me and found Tommy instead. We're looking into that, Mrs Harris. And in the meanwhile, we're going to make sure that you and your family are safe. That's why there's a constable outside, and believe you me, we're keeping a sharp lookout. Well, goodbye for now. Do you? you want to spend the next 15 years of your life in prison, do you? No. Because that's what you're facing. And I'll be there with you. But where our Craig would be, I've got no idea. In some kind of institution, I suppose. And I don't think he'd spend much time coming to visit you once he finds out you killed his dad. Gray? Yes? Can I have some more breakfast, please? My goodness, Chesney, that's quite a plateful. You've already polished off. I mean, you had bacon, egg. Two. Two eggs. Two eggs, sausage, beans. It's not good for you overeating. I mean, I hold your breakfast, yeah, but you should only eat when you're hungry. But I am hungry. I'm always hungry. There is a reason for it. Yeah, yes. And, uh, what, is, what is that, then? Well, my mum never gives me much to eat. She don't believe in it. She says... She says it'll ruin my career. What does she mean by that? She wants me to stay small, you see, because she wants me to be a jockey when I'm older, riding race horses, winning races like the Grand Derby, earning lots and lots of money. Huh. Well, you are a touch on the small side for your age. Yeah, now you know why. Uh, perhaps a, a modest second helping... A, an extra rasher of bacon. Uh, and, and perhaps some more beans. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Roy. Aunt Hila. He's got having enough to eat for once. I mean, timekeeping, punctuality. They'll be dead keen on that, won't they? 
Good job you're not going for a job up railways. No, but seriously, if you want to be a bus driver, then you best not be late. I've plenty of time yet. I could have another cup of tea. No. That's why they turn you down with trams, running to toilets, but same with buses. It's driving a tram I really fancied. Yeah, Volvo. Driving a bus is tons better than driving a tram. At least you get to do your own steering. If I get on the training scheme, and I mean if, are you sure you'd be happy about me driving a bus? Listen, I'm not happy unless you're happy. Oh. And I know you want this job, so I want it for you. Ashley, you're lovely. Right, I'm going. Any last words of advice? Yes, I have. Before you set off, get yourself on that toilet again. It's, uh... So what they're saying out there? Them? You know, full well who? Friends, neighbours. Do they think I killed Tommy? Nobody who really knows you thinks you're a murderer. All right. Only you thought I was. No one knows me better than you. I've said I'm sorry. And I really am. Yeah, right. Look, I'm here, aren't I? Doesn't that say what I really think? You're never going to forgive me. I'll work on it. But I appreciate you coming round, and I'm grateful. It's just that... Well, I wish I thought other people would do the same. They will. At least those whose opinion you care about, and as for the rest of them, what to help with them? Mm. You shouldn't be moping around here, Martin. You've nothing to hide. You've nothing to be ashamed of or apologise for, so you just get out there and you show your face. Yeah, you're right. I know you are, it's just... Well, the thing is... Well, somehow I can't find the nerve. You will. I know you will. And when you do, it'll be fine. I feel sorry for him. Is that so hard to understand? Well, I'll tell you what I understand. Ray Langton is poison, in my opinion, and always has been. All he wants to do is as much damage to this family as he can. I don't even know why you're talking to your ex-husband. His name is Ray. And he's not just my ex-husband, he's your father. He is not my father! He stopped being my father the day he walked away from me and he walked away from you and all, so I don't know why you're sticking up for him. I mean, for God's sake, it's not going to be long. The man's got an incurable disease. Oh, yeah, and he's playing on that. You are so hard, lady. No, no, Tracy's got a very valid point. He's been out of everybody's life for years and now he seeks us out and lays this burden of pity on the very people who least deserve to shoulder it. You and Tracy. I just don't understand why you're on his side. I'm not on his side. But I honestly feel that he is sincere about wanting to make his peace with you. Yeah, well, he's wasting his time. Because I hate him. Oh. Emily, not back from town yet? No. Yes, well, perhaps it's just as well. We can have a quiet little chat. So what you want to talk about? You have monopolised that chair since you moved in. The best chair in the house. I take that as a good guide to character when a visitor does that. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise it were Emily's chair. Well, no, it, it, actually, it's not Emily's chair, it's mine. I normally sit there. Yeah, well, in that case, you're as bad as I am. Best chair in the house should be Emily's. You're deliberately evading the point. Which is what, exactly? She's not getting any younger. It's a burden for her having someone in the house. Not that she'd say that, of course. So you're doing it for her? Well, I think somebody has to. Oh, Norris. You've been keeping Ray company. Uh, Good for you. Yes, well, uh, I'll be getting back to the cabin. Rita will want to be, get off for a lunch. Uh, hmm, you seem down, Ray. Hey. I think it were a mistake coming here. Tracy don't want to know me. Oh, you have to give it time. Time's one thing I haven't got. You're the man of the house now that your dad's gone, and I need you to be strong for me. I'm sorry, Mum. I'm trying, honestly, Anne, but I don't want to go to the corner shop or the butchers or the paper shop. I don't want people talking to me or asking me how I am or saying how sorry they are because of my dad. I don't want any of that. All right, all right, I understand. Right, get on a bus and go into town, do the shopping there where nobody knows you. 
made up a list there, see of stuff that we need, and there's 20 quid, that should be plenty. Dad got me for Christmas, all right? It's in the wardrobe. What do you want that for? Just do it and hurry up. is this and it's next stop prison we have got to get rid of this thing i can't touch it don't, don't ask me to touch it right, i'm not asking you to do anything just get that bag open yeah i'm just keeping this for a special occasion while you give me that all right love Considering, just feel the need to get out of the house for a bit, you know. Stretch my legs, get a bit of air. Well, you would. I can understand that. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, I'll make you a couple when I get back. All right. Cheers. It'll be appreciated. Yeah. See you in a bit then. Two four one zero four to control. Yes, go ahead. Would you let D S Smith know that Mrs Harris has just left the house? And. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. I just saw you passing and wondered if I could catch a word. Sorry, my nerves are terrible. Well, it's no wonder. I mean, are there any errands you need running? Save your legs. I mean, just tell me and I'll see to it. You can go and put your feet No. Just sick of being in the ass and I need to get out, go for a walk, you know. Oh, well, I'll come with you. I could do no, the walk. Please, please, you well leave me alone. I know you mean well, but I just really need to be on my own for a bit, yeah? I'm really sorry. I completely understand. Is there any news? I mean, are, are the police any nearer to finding... You know, who they're looking for. Well, they'll catch him, whoever it were. Don't you worry, nothing to show her. Craig! I'm sorry about, you know, your dad and everything. I don't want to talk about it. No? OK. Anyway, 17th of March tomorrow. It's supposed to be the day the world comes to an end. It already did. The day they killed me dad. It's Emily you want, she's not here. I came looking for you. If you're looking for another argy bargy, Ken Barlow. Well, I'm hoping we can talk reasonably. Fair enough, then. Come in. You claim that you came here to make some sort of amends to Tracy. I did. That's why I'm here. Well, surely you can see that your plan simply isn't working. I mean, Tracy's hurt. She's angry and she doesn't want anything to do with you. And I'm hoping that you can bring yourself to accept that. And? Go away before you cause more pain. Just thinking of what's right for her, right? Or what best suits you? What really bothers you is the fact that Deirdre's talking to me. You don't like that, do you? Oh, I don't deny I'd be glad to see the back of you. For Tracy's sake, not mine. Oh, yeah. Now, you say you care about Tracy. Well, if you really do, you won't go on hurting her. You've done your damage. Why do you just call that enough? I just go away and leave Deirdre and me to pick up the pieces and put Tracy back together again, like we've had to do so many times before. Oh, yeah, but of course you won't remember that, will you? Because you weren't here. Well, how'd it go? There'll be plenty more driving jobs. I'm on the training scheme, yeah! I'm gonna be a motorist! <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> what are you doing? I'm breathing on your specs, so you don't know where you're going or what I'm doing to you. <laughs> 
Sounds interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. And you won't have a clue where you are, know, though you might have an idea you're going up a flight of stairs. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I'll stand there talking about it. Cut me ah! up. <laughs> hey, Mr Lesley. Well, leave her. She'll wake up when she's hungry. I keep expecting him to knock round, offer to take her for a walk. By him, I suppose you mean Ray. Uh, yeah. Well, who else have been talking about since he rolled up? Don't think you get much more aggravation from him, Tracy. I bumped into him this morning and told him a few home truths. I'll bet you did. Not a row. I didn't lose my temper. Though so why anyone should want to handle that man with kid gloves? Oh, Ken. Yeah, all right, all right. Don't throw one of your wobblers. I, I just can't help feeling sorry for him. I mean, the man is dying and he's trying to prepare himself. He's, he's making a will, he's paying his debts, that sort of thing. Well, it's a bit too late in the day, if you ask me, to start trying to tidy up the messes made of his life and other people's. Mrs. Harris. They said you were here. What do you mean? Who said I were here? My lads. I told you we'd be keeping a watchful eye, didn't I? Well, maybe now you'll believe me and feel easier in your mind. So you did think it were the Morgans? Like I said, we're looking into that and keeping an open mind. But you can rest assured we'll be making sure you're safe. Though in the future it would help us if you could tell us where you're going in advance. Going somewhere special? No, just walking. Uh, Tommy and me used to walk along here sometimes. Mrs Harris, I know you want to see whoever killed Tommy brought to justice, so we're going to ask you for your help. We want you to go on local TV, make an appeal. Ask anybody who can give us any information to come forward. There must be someone out there who can shed some light. Offer some vital detail, and if you as Tommy's we're not, I, can, I can't do that. Because I don't want my face all over the box, you know, anyone who wants to get me know, knowing what I look like. Yeah, but Mrs. Harris... No, you... you don't understand. I don't want to be known to millions. I, I, I want to get lost in a crowd. I want to vanish. Me and my kids with me. We should be back on witness protection. Well, of course, that's your right, Mrs. Harris, but I'm sorry that's the way you feel. Because I know you're a strong woman. You stood up to be counted once before, to be a vital witness to make sure a murderer went to jail. Yeah, I did. And I wish to God had kept my mouth shut. I don't believe you mean that. You wouldn't want to see a killer walking around, getting away with it. Shut up, girl. I wouldn't care. Because I am not going to do it. Because if I'd have kept quiet, Tommy would still be alive, we'd never have come here, and none of this would have happened. None of it! Cheers. I don't see nothing to cheer about. When are the police going to let us back in the garage so we can start earning some money? I don't know. I'll phone them up tomorrow to find out. You see? This is what people don't realise. What is? Well, a murder is, is like dropping a stone in a pond. The ripples hit the little people on the edges, like Sir Roland and Kevin here. Hey, let's see a little. There's no need to take offence. What I'm saying is, some people pay the price, while the man who killed Tommy Harris walks free. Uh, pint of bitter, please, bitter. All right, Kev, okay. is wrong? Not really, no, because we can't go to work until the police are finished in the garage. Oh, sorry about that. But I've not worked too much lately either. I've been locked up. Mm, you should still be. You say something. Not to you, I didn't. Right, there you are. One pound eighty. There you go. I'm very quiet, Kev. There you go. You know something? A few days ago, you'd have said, oh, I'll put your money back in your pocket, Martin. I'll get that. A few days ago, Tommy was still alive. You think I don't know that? I've been in a police cell for two days while well, they've tried to make me say that I killed him. So what are you getting at, Kev? 
Me and you are supposed to be good pals, aren't we? And you're telling me you reckon it was me smacked Tommy around the head? Doesn't matter what I think, does it? Who's minding the cafe? Uh, never mind that. We want a serious word with you. I thought it were a leftover. What? The bacon sandwich that were on the counter. That, that's where it went. And uh, never mind bacon butties. Chesney, I was talking to your sister earlier about how your mother doesn't feed you properly because she wants you to stay small so you can be a jockey. And Fizz told me... And as we know, Fizz is not a great supporter of your mother. And Fizz told me that it was all a story. She also told me that sometimes you have your dinner at home and then go around to Fizz's saying you haven't had anything to eat since breakfast and that way you can have two dinners. You've been telling us porkies, haven't you? Are you going to tell the social worker that you're going to be sent away? No, of course not. We, we wouldn't do that. And we're not cross with you, Chesney. We, we just want you to be a good lad, which, which you are, and, and not tell a story so that you can get treble helpings. OK, I promise. Uncle Roy? Yeah, yes. That's for tea. I'm starving. Run yourself a nice hot bath, Craig. Have a good soak. You'll feel better. Trouble. What do you mean? What's happened? I couldn't get rid of it. I tried to throw it in the canal, but that Sergeant Smith were there. She had me followed, according to her, to make me feel safe, but I don't know. So where is it? Where do you think? In my bag. <gasps> oh, my God. She said they're going to search his house. What, what, what are we going to do? I don't know. But I tell you what I do know. That Smith, she wanted me to go on TV, make a big appeal. You know, anybody who knows anything, please come forward. They only do that if you're a suspect. Do you understand? You see? They think I did it. They think I killed him. Hi, can I quickly use your bathroom, Angela? One of your brood appears to be cleaning the teeth. Mm. Hello? From the liaison? Oh, I hope you don't mind. I was doing some ironing, so I did those for you. Yeah, get your laughing gear around that. <laughs> Thank you. I bet God's robes in heaven weren't as well pressed as them. I wish you'd stay. Tracy might come round. Aye. And Lord Lucan might pop round for a crease in his long johns. You don't regret coming, do you? I'm glad you came. I don't know. Maybe should let sleep in dogs lie. You gave people a chance to say goodbye, and you've had the chance to say goodbye. That's terribly important. Believe me. Angela, I've just heard. The police are ready to release the body. His name's Tommy. So we can go ahead with funeral arrangements, if you'd like. We? Angela. Look, I don't know how many times I've got to say this to you, but if you want to know who did it to him, you've got to get on the A57 and you've got to go to Sheffield. The family's name is Morgan. They've got a motive. They're punishing me. Morning. Do you hear me, love? Or do I have to say it again? Morning, Katie. The Morgans, Sheffield. Look, no stone will go unturned. Look, you want to make yourself useful, darling? Do some dusting. This can't 
can't bear to be in the same room as her. Mum, will you calm down or they're going to tweak? She's getting Oscar, her. She's got this front of, like, all concern and bleeding out and underneath it all. She thinks I did it. I wish I was asleep. Last night I dreamt we were on the witness protection and I changed my name and everything was OK. I was working on an ice cream van. And we parked in the street and everyone that came up for an ice cream, it was someone I knew. Only they never knew me. And if I change my name, will that take the pain away? Will it bring me husband back? Will it? Yeah, but Mum... No, stop your whining, Katie! The police could search that house from top to bottom at any time. And if they find that wrench, you can change your name for good, yeah? To a number on a mugshot. Now you just put yourself together and get back in there. Go on. Are you going to be all right with Michael and Corroy? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I've taken the liberty of, of compiling all the dog care hints and tips you've given to me into various lists of charts and pointers. For instance, a dietary diary is due a bowl of cereal, uh, shortly. Or a piece of toast. Marge, not butter, cos butter makes him burp. Uh, and cereal-wise, preferably not my brown. I'm quite fond of this carpet. And, and then his first walk is, uh, is, is well, now, actually. Right, well, Chesney, this should see you till tea time. I've made you cold fish finger and salad cream butties, a bag of crisps, a can of pop, and a nana for health. Excellent. Mm -hmm. What's that? Oh, um, it's the only one they had in the charity shop. Oh, no, that, that's, that's not very hygienic. Neither is a second-hand box from my buddies. Oh, come on, that's not very fair. I did thoroughly bleach and scrub it. You could eat your dinner off that. Oh. <laughs> if I get my egg kicked in, it's your fault. Well, as you can see, things must be bad. She's uh, washing the pots. Tracy... I know you're a very proud girl, but I'm asking you to swallow that pride and go and see Ray again. No, I might. I know he'd get you round here doing his dirty work for him. He doesn't know I'm here, actually. Why would I want to go round there? Because this might be your last ever chance. Oh, is he on his last legs? Is he going to drop any second? I've never seen anyone die before. Tracy. No. He's going away. When? Today. Oh, well, good. You don't mean that. Do you want to bet? What, you reckon I'm going to go round there and be all hearts and flowers? You're living in a dream world. I care more about the washing-up ball than I do about Ray Langton. Well, it's been around longer. Cars! 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 Is that in Scotland? That's a lake district. What are you doing up there? Bit of driving, bit of delivering. For your dad? No, on a QT. I'm moonlighting, and the old man will never know. I wish I got to travel in my job. When are you going? Next Wednesday. Can I come? It's miles away the Lake District. You might fall asleep at the wheel if you don't have someone to answer with. And my fizz reckons I've got the gift of the gab. Yeah, I don't see why not. Excellent. I'll make up some tapes. How much are you going to pay me? Er, uh, nap all. Sorry, mate. I can't afford to pay you this time. All right, mush. Cool, look at the knockers on. That door must be late Victorian. If you want some chips, go and buy your own. Here, what are you doing Wednesday? Nothing, why? What are we going Good, to? because you're coming to London for me. Do a delivery job, all right? Yeah, nice one. Cheers, Dad. Yeah. Oh, what's that? It's all right. <laughs> yes. Carlisle in the morning, London in the afternoon. It's like me on round the world trip, this. It's a physical impossibility, mate. She's right. Unless you can lay your hands on the TARDIS. Well, can't you just swap the Carlisle job to another day? No, they were well adamant. Babe, what am I going to do? How are you getting on, Uncle Roy? Oh, oh fine, fine, fine. Uh, great non-verbal communication between man and beast. I, I do feel that my words are falling on slightly, slightly deaf ears. Uh, I think you need to learn a thing or two. Here, here. <laughs> no, not him. You.
If you've come for a quickie, I don't know if I'm up for it. <laughs> hey, I'm a married woman. Well, at least I would have been if you hadn't turned up. Uh, so, you off then? No, I just like looking at me cases. <laughs> I'm glad we're parting on OK terms. First time for everything. I'm sorry, Ray, that I didn't get Tracy to forgive you. Am I a bad lad? No, oh, stuff happens. Life happens. She's strong-minded. I don't know where she gets it from. <laughs> but believe me when I say this, that as long as you're around, and I don't just mean around here, I will carry on working on Tracy. You won't have to for long. But just in case I don't manage it, and let's face it, as we both know, she can be a stubborn little madam. I, um... I want you to have this. I kept it from when she was a baby. Oh. Thanks, love. So, uh, whenever you want to, you can just get that out and uh, she'll be there. at your wedding. What's wrong with his face? No, nothing. He just looks so young. Katie. Yeah, I have seen mum and dad's photos before, you know. What was it he said to you on the way to the reception? <laughs> oh, it's terrible, really, but it was typical Tommy. Right, I'm there, right, in my big meringue. And we have to go through Sheffield City Centre to get to this big cafe where we were having the do, you know, from the church, like... And he's walking really, really fast, and I'm struggling really hard to keep up with him. And he's going, I'm not with you. Right, because he's mortified by what I'm wearing. I'm not with you. Talk about stars, you mean to go on. That is a terrible thing to say. I'm glad he said it. I'm glad he could say it. I'm glad he had breath in his lungs and blood in his veins. And I'm glad I've got that memory. And no one can take that away from me. No one. I remember when you went into hospital. Do we have to do this? I've heard all these stories before, Craig. And Dad made me an Aero Pack lunch. So he makes the sandwiches and slices up a lemon curd cake, but he bungs it all in the same bag. So it gets to dinner time and we go to open the bag. And inside there's this slop. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Spam sandwiches mixed with uh, cakes and crisps. What was it like? He loved you both so much. You'd never see you go hungry. When you first came along, Katie, money were tight, so he'd have half portions so that you could eat. But you know, he used to look down on you when you were sleeping, stroke your forehead. And when you came along, I'd never known happiness like it, and neither had he. We're gonna call him Craig, and he's gonna play for Wednesday. I want to speak at the service. You'll be too upset. He'll help me. I can, man, can't I? Yeah, if you really want to. Be better than some poncy priest that's never even met him. To what do I owe this pleasure? Aye, uh... I've come to ask you a favour, only I'd rather you didn't say anything to your Jay. Why? Well, it's about him. Yeah, fine. Come in, sit down. Well, <laughs> thing is, you know what he's like, big softy. <laughs> Likes to treat me right. Romantic gestures, nights out, that kind of thing. And they cost money, Danny. Oh, right, you're on the scrounge. No, but he's on the make, in a good way. Well, hang on a minute. What's he, I, he works for me. What's he up to? Well, he's helping somebody out, doing him a favour. He's driving up to Carlisle. I mean, normally, he's dead loyal to you. Yeah, fast forward, love. Well, you see, the thing is, this run, it's, uh, it's next Wednesday, and it's for 300 quid. You see, the thing is, if he misses out on this trip, then I miss out on a couple of nights out. And if I don't get him, I'll probably be like a bear with a sore head. I mean, I might even end up having a barney with Frankie at work. 
And I could end up chucking a bottle of ketchup over that rabbit skin coat she's never out of. And that would put her in a bad mood. Oh, yeah. She loves that coat. She calls it thumper. Yeah, you see, and then when you got home, you'd probably get it in the neck. It's you I'm thinking of, Danny. Hmm. You've got more front than Brighton, haven't you? Oh, can't you change your London job next week? I'd be really, really grateful. Only, don't say that I said out. It's only right that he thinks that you're the man. I am the man. You're Dan the man. Mm-hmm. And he is just a boy. Well, he's man enough for me, Danny. Sure about that? Hello, Jay. Hello, mate. You all right? Listen, I've got a slight problem with that London gig next week. I need to shove it to Thursday. Is that all right? Good, yeah. No, no, something's just come up and I'm doing a, a friend a favour. Hope it don't put you out, mate. Blinding. There's a good lad. Yeah, see you soon. Bye-bye. What about that? What's a marrow? Mm, it's like a big vegetable. And what's it stuff with? Oh, pilchards, onion, tomatoes, capers, curry, egg. And, and I was going to put a bit of liver sausage in it, but I seem to have mislaid it. Do you not like it? I'm still a bit full from a packed lunch. Mm -hmm. Plus someone were passing around crisps during Listen and Learn. Hayley, I've had an epiphany. Right, I've gone to some considerable effort to get this on the table. Would you like to sit down? Now, it's funny you should say that. Sit down. Is it? Yes, because Chesney here has been teaching me the rudiments of canine control. It's a wonderful thing, the bond between man and beast. It's a, it's, it's a remarkable thing. This morning, Schmeichel was in charge, whereas now... Observe. Come on. Come on. Schmeichel! Sit! Sit! <laughs> and tell her how you did it. I did this by proving to this wonderful specimen of doghood that I am top dog. <laughs> and? And by having a piece of liver sausage secreted about my person. There we are. Do you want a glass? Yeah, OK. Is our Craig in the bath? Yeah. Get the dustpan in there. Damn! Oh, Mum, under the tap. No. Here, put some ice around it. Oh, damn. Mm. Antiseptic wipes in that drawer there. Yeah, we're doing all right, aren't we, Mum? Keeping it together, aren't we? Are we? Well, like, cos if I stop for five minutes and, and don't keep concentrating and saying over and over again in my head, I didn't do it. If I stop, my, my heart starts racing and I'm shaking and... and every time you look at me, I see you hating me. And I don't say I, I blame you, but... Mum... Do you still love me? Of course I do. I'll never ever stop loving you. You've done the worst thing that you could and I still do. Maybe I should hate you more, but I can't. I'm so sorry. Shut up. Do you know the weirdest time? It's in the morning when I wake. The light's coming through, cracking the curtains and... Just for a split second, I forget that none of it's happened. And I turn to him and reach out for him. With that side of the bed still cold. Then I remember. And I sit up and I just feel drained. And it's all downhill from then on. And sometimes I think if I close my eyes, if I close my eyes and hope really hard, then when I open them again, he'll be there. Mum, how are we going to get away with this? 
with that thing still there. We'll be okay. Manchester Airport, please. Well, don't sound so delighted to see the back of him, Norris. I'm not delighted, I'm just being efficient. Yeah, I believe you, Norris. Thousands wouldn't. <laughs> hey, I'm almost at the end of my aftershave, so I've left it in Kazi for you. Well, I hate to say this, but I thought you smelt rather effeminate. The world's changing, Norris. The ladies will be tripping over themselves to stick their hand in your sweet jar if you wear that. Right. Let's have a last look at this dump. Ray! Are you just off? Ah, do take care, love. Can you find a good home for these? I'll do my best. Thanks, Rita. Ta-ra, love. How do? Ray? So, this is it. You're actually going. Getting out of your life once and for all, Ken. Going somewhere nice? We're uh, going to a concert in town, classical. Have a nice time. Take care, Ray. I'll do my best, Ken. Deirdre? Come here, you. Don't forget, if you need anything... Yep. Just pick up the phone. You got me mobile number? Oh, come on, Emily. Sorry. Thanks for everything, Emily. You made me feel very welcome. We'll all be praying for you. Even the atheists. So that can't be bad, can it? Cheers, doll. Right. I'll go the back way because there's traffic on the flyover. Whatever you say, Steve. Hey, hang on a sec. Oh, lovely. Run me over again, why don't you? It's a good job it's her dad that's driving and not mine. So you admit I'm your dad? Some folks would say that were progress, Tracy. That's my name, Ray. Don't wear it out. Oh, I'm going for good, so I'll say goodbye. If that's what you want. Well, why should I care? I mean, you're only my birth father. That is my real father over there, and he doesn't scarper at the first sign of trouble. Go on. You've abandoned me once. Abandoned me again. I mean, it's all I'm fit for, I'm sure. Well, go on, then, if you're going. I don't have to go. You turn up after all these years, and you tell me you're dying, and you just want to mess with my head again, and it's not fair, I'll Ray! I'll stay. If there's the slightest glimmer of hope, you. I'll stay. I never beg men. I've got my pride. Here. Take this. For Bobby Light. Listen, you. I doubt I'll ever see you again. I look in that face. I see a million memories. Not half bad ones, neither. And I see a million hopes and dreams and all. It's just a shame I'll not be there to share them with you. Been a lousy dad. And an even worse granddad, eh? You make sure you take good care of your mum, yeah? When she's old and grey, pop round, <laughs> do the groceries, make sure she's warm, give her a nug when she's feeling wobbly. Make out you're interested in them same old stories she's telling you, time after time again, about the old days, about a pillock of a dad. You promise me? Please stay. Best get them cases out, lad.
couldn't sleep. I had horrible dreams. I kept dreaming that the police were searching the house and, and everywhere they looked, they kept finding bits of me. Dad, he'd, he'd been chopped up like someone out okay, of a horror please. film. please. Well, it doesn't take a genius to work out what that Look, means. Can we change it? the subject, please, well, love? What if they search the house today? Just I mean, keep your voice down. Craig went out ten minutes ago. He's fine. Oh yeah, and what about the fella on the step? Just shout a bit louder, and we'll both go down for it. Or take out an ad in the Gazette, or hang a banner from the rooftop, or better still, just open your big fat gob. Mum, calm down. I am calm. <sighs> Discretion, Katie. Try using some. And if you get panicky, just hang on to the fact that by tonight, that wrench will be somewhere else and not here. OK? What on earth are you doing? Huh. Well, Auntie Ella, it's Schmeichel's first birthday, so we're baking him a special doggy cake. Oh, right, is that my leftover stuffed marrow from the other day? Uh, but possibly, yes. I was going to microwave that for lunch. <sighs> Uncle Roy said it were like pig's liver. There were no liver in it. I mean, pig swill. We've each made him a card. You can sign mine if you like. Oh, oh they're very uh, glittery. <laughs> yeah, the, the glitter makes him sneeze. It's funny when he sneezes, isn't he, Chesney? It, it is funny. Yeah. Mm. I love my dog, Uncle Roy. Do you love him too? Well, I, you, do you know, Chesney, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but that dog is... Yeah, well, he, he's, he's, he's my friend. Mm. Yes. Have you never seen identical twins in specs before? So, um, uh, you know, what's the big deal why the Sunday dinner time drinks? Hurry up, I'm mortified being seen out in these specs. We've got thingy, conjunctivitis. Oh, uh, well, um, I don't want to say yet. I want to wait till the others get here. No one else is coming. This is it. Oh, well, I'm leaving you today. I'm going to Bodmer Regis. I'm going to be a red coat at Butlins. <laughs> This lady used to be a nurse. Can you believe it? Heavens. Oh, she, she stood by that philanderer of hers when all those uh, accusations were being made. But now she's not happy unless she's bearing all and confessing her connubial proclivities. She seems to get on very well with that other lady. Hmm. Yes, well, I think the National Health Service is better off without her. They should pack her away to America. They love her no frills floozy over there, don't you agree, Emily? How do they get their bodies so shiny? It's baby oil. It gets everywhere. Oh, it's usually Deirdre comes in that way. It's open, Deirdre. Oh, Tracy, what a lovely surprise. Um, Norris and I were just going to take a, a, a constitutional. We were. Why don't you stay and um, have a natter with Ray and keep him company while we get some exercise? Come on, Norris. All right. Yes. See you later, Ray. Cheers. Cheers, Emily. Ah, I can't concentrate. There's no point pretending I don't care that she's next door, because I do. I know it's irrational, but I can't help how I feel. And how do you feel? Second best. Taken for granted. You know, every time I suggest anything to you, or anybody else for that matter, I get an argument or a reasonable discussion in return. Ray wants something, he just flutters his eyelashes and you women drop everything and rush to help him. Well, I'm fed up with it. When you've quite finished. Well, I think I've got it right, don't you? Flutters his eyelashes, does he? It's not so much that as waggling a death warrant. I know, I know. And I know this sounds incredibly selfish, but... I don't want to lose Tracy after all we've been through. To someone who walked out on her 26 years ago. You're not going to lose her. But blood's thicker than water, Deirdre. All right, then you will lose her. If you carry on like this, you will. And you'll lose me as well. Feeling sorry for yourself. It's not you who's staring death in the face. You're right. It's our very own superstar in the making. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't actually perform to start off with, but I will be part of a totally professional team of chambermaids of the highest calibre. That's what it said in the letter. Uh -huh. You're a cleaner. Hey! 
Oh, come on, everybody's got to start somewhere. Yes. And then, fingers crossed, I'll graduate to being more in the spotlight later. So, Sonia, you're leaving us, babe. Does that mean I've got to buy you a drink? Oh, no, no. It means you've got to buy us all the drink. Yeah. Hey! 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 Roses. The dad gave me these. The dad's. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you going to the chapel arrest? Yeah, if I could ever stop crying long enough to get my makeup straight. Can I come? Um well, to be honest, love, I, I think you'd find it too upsetting. He's me dad. How upsetting can he be? He's dead. He won't look like him. He'll look like someone else, like like a waxwork. Are you going? <laughs> I think we should all go. All say goodbye together. Please, Mum, I have to say goodbye to him. Please. and we'll all go together. I didn't expect to find you, Mammy, here. Yeah. Where did you think she'd be? Jersey. Jersey? Aye. Billy Walker. She went with him before she went with me. He'd gone over there to open a wine bar. So why did you come back here? Well, I wasn't exactly sure. I reckon there'd be somebody around here from back then who'd be able to tell me where you got to. And here we are. Hmm. I always imagine everybody's got wanderlust, and they don't. Cos here I am 26 years later, and she's 20 years from where I left her. So you want to spend the rest of your life in Coronation Street? Yeah, well, at least my mum gave me some consistency. The only thing that was consistent about you is the fact you weren't here. It wasn't just that you wanted to try something different. You wanted to forget about us. Well, maybe that's true. Maybe that made it easier. Did you really hate me that much? No. I never hated you. Only that's what it felt like. I mean, it's fine to come from a broken home. I mean, they told us that often enough at school and... All those kids that shared their time between two parents, that was fine and all. But you know, it's a bit of a show up when you can only pinpoint your father's whereabouts to a particular country. You know, sometimes I think it was better if you'd have just died. What can I say? Well, sorry would be a start. <laughs> yeah. It's one word that's been tripping off my tongue more often than any other these past few weeks. I reckon it'll be on my gravestone. Yeah, but I'm listening now. Sorry. Tracy, I'm sorry I wasn't here. You screwed me up, Ray. It's all down to you. For leaving me and making me believe that somehow it had something to do with me. That everybody was just going to leave sooner or later. So what was the point? What was the point in anything? So you're completely blameless anything you've ever done wrong in your life. Don't you dare lecture me. I am telling you how it is. And if you don't like it, then maybe you shouldn't have come back. I'm sorry. 
sorry, Dad. It's not your fault, Kate, <laughs> is it, Dad? It's all right, darling. <laughs> it's my fault. It's all my fault. Come on. It's Kate and Craig, love. Hi, hey, Dad. Kate is a bit upset. I'm so sorry. Never thought we'd see your makeup. <laughs> All the times you'd have a go at me for wearing makeup and look at you now, eh? <laughs> Satin's Sheffield Wednesday colour. Katie's upset because she thinks that uh, this is her fault with everything that went on between her and Martin. <laughs> Would you just tell her she's soft? Come on, love, try and be strong. <laughs> you don't want to see you upset. <laughs> I can try and say goodbye and make your peace. <laughs> Dad, uh, I, uh, I, want, I want you to have this. Uh, look after it for me, yeah? Because I'm not going to miss you. And I'll never, ever forget you, I promise you. And, and these two are. Uh, you don't have to worry about them. I'll look after them. They're in good hands here. So no, no fretting, yeah? You won it at the fair for me. I didn't let it out on my sight for months. I was gonna, gonna give it to the baby, but... He'll keep me company. <laughs> Can I just have a few minutes with it on my own? Is that all right? I'll just be outside. We very nearly went for X-Factor, didn't we? Go on, tell them what we call ourselves, Jess. Mirror image. <laughs> I practically came out of the womb with tap shoes on. I got punched in a karaoke bar once. It's my voice, it's my instrument. What? She sings. <laughs> All right, sing, son, you sing, sing. Son, you sing. Just one voice <laughs> singing in the darkness. All it takes is one voice singing oh, so they sure hear what's on your mind and then you look around and great. Yeah, you're capped there. <laughs> Thank God for that. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, don't worry. Are you ready now, son? <laughs> There's just one thing I've got to do. She has got a great future. What, in cleaning? After that, I mean, I'm going to Mr Baldwin. Hello, love. I'm off. I wonder what that smell was. I don't want to go through my life with any regrets. It's good. And if I don't do this now, I'll only regret it. Fair play to you, love. Fair play. Have a nice laugh, you sex god. <laughs> so, did you used to read me stories? Only I've got no memory. Every night when you went to bed. Did you? What nursery rhymes? Well, what was my favourite? Three blind mice. You always like the bit where the farmer's wife cut off the tail. What, with a carving knife? <laughs> I always did have a vicious streak. <laughs> well, cheers, Ray. Nice one. Oh, my head's in bits. I don't know what I'm thinking, never mind what I'm saying. Look, if it were a bad idea for me to stop... No. No, I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. Well, I'm rather you were here than not. It's a start. Well, it's just, I need to know stuff. Like, is there any brothers and sisters that are going to crawl out of the woodwork when you die? 
sorry. No, I'd like nothing more than to have brothers and sisters. Well, I've got them on my dad's side, but they're not blood, so... No, nothing. I always was a bit of a disappointment. Oh. Well, that's who I get it from, then. You're not a disappointment, Tracy. I could sit here all day, just staring at you. My little girl. I oh, don't say that. Come here. Why should I? Because I'm your dad. Yeah, but I don't think you are. I used to be. Once upon a time. Mm. So do I. So does Roy. Mm. So does Michael. Mm. When I'm older, mm. I'm going to have my own chain of burger bars. I'm mm. going to be a big posh chef. Mm. Well, uh, I won't sell burgers. I'll sell pies. Mm. You two can come and work for me. Mm. So this with a smile. I'd let dogs in. There'd be a special smoking section for people that smoke and a special dog section for people that like dogs. I wish I could stay for the rest of my life. Which Michael likes here. Yeah. It's all over now, Tommy. All the suffering. I'm sorry you suffered so much watching the kids grow up and going off and doing what they did. And I'm sorry that being a parent and everything that brings I'm sorry it caused you so much pain. But the pain's over now. You can rest. To find some peace. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> this is stupid. Don't know why I'm worried about saying the wrong thing. It's only you. I suppose I... I just want to say what's right. Oh, Tom. <laughs> you know, I fancied you for ages. Me and the girls on the wall by the chippy, making out we didn't care, and you and all the other casuals drinking cider looking dead at and when he got Daryl Spencer to ask me to go to reflections with it, I didn't sleep for a week or eight. My feet didn't touch the ground. I used to practice my name in my school rough book. Angela Harris. Always had a ring to it. I want to be back there. Slow dancing to Betty Davis' eyes by Kim Cairns. <laughs> and you making out Betty Davis were a dinner lady at your school. <laughs> I, I just can't believe that I'm never going to see you again. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> will you watch over me? <laughs> Please. I just don't know how I'm, how I'm going to get through all this. But if I know that you're up there watching, then... Don't leave me, please. I can't bear that. Tommy... Do one last thing for me. Nobody else, just me. Just take care of this for me, yeah? Thanks, love. You know, <laughs> if I could turn back the clock, I'd have been there earlier. You know that. You do know that, don't you? 
And I'm going to keep on talking to you. I'm sorry, but I am. So if you see me talking to a wall or a door or the telly, then I'm really talking to you. And I'm never going to stop. I... I... I love you so much, Tom. <laughs> Sleep tight, darling. Hope the books don't bite. Ready. Bye, Dad. Is he okay? Yeah, it's Tommy's boss. I uh, just wanted to come across and let you know I'm, I'm opening up the galleys today. Right. The police have finished everything they've got. I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> a bit late to start playing the good neighbour, innit? Hey. Eh? Well, the night Tommy died, you were over here shouting the odds, wanting to sack him. Has that slipped your mind? Are you sure you haven't thrown it away? I mean, wouldn't it be in the first time? Oh, I don't know. Ken, I'm trying to get ready for work. Oh, pardon me for breathing. Hello. Hello, Emily. Uh, I, uh, I was passing as I'd popped out to get a few things that Ray needed. Well, to... I reckon I've narrowed it down to two for the book group tonight. Blood ties. A woman is forced to protect her family when her husband is brutally murdered. Or Mandingo. A tale of forbidden love amongst the plantations of South Carolina. Well, don't you think that's a bit insensitive? Mandingo? No, blood ties with what Angela Harris had got to cope with across the street. Oh, I get it. You don't think these are clever enough for that big brain of yours? But it's my choice. Those are the rules. You look shattered, Auntie Emily. Oh, do I? How is Ray? Well, he's not in any pain or so, he says. But he's very weak. Not much he can do for himself. Well, why don't I go around for a couple of hours this afternoon and sit with him? Give you a break. You've changed your tune. Well, it's only next door. It's no big deal. Oh, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you. That would be a great help. Ray will be delighted. Oh, right. Well, as long as Ray is happy, that's the main thing. Where are you going? Well, as I seem to be surplus to requirements today, I thought I'd go out. Oh, Ken, don't be like that. Oh, come on, Dad, the man's dying. Oh, I'm well aware of that. Right, should we say two o'clock, then? <sighs> What's going on? No, spurn the toast. Who was that at the door? Kevin. He's reopening the garage today. Did he say anything? About what? Well, ever since I saw my dad's body in that coffin, he... Oh, all by himself, he brought it back even worse. Pull yourself together. We've got the funeral on Wednesday. We've got to start, start organising things. And one slip from you, one wrong word, and we've had it. Katie! Oh, Mom, you hurt me! We just can't all up here and hope everything's going to be all right. Now that Martin's been released, well, we've got to make sure that the police and everybody out there thinks that it's the, the Morgans who are responsible. Yeah, but the wrench, what are you... Forget what? about the wrench! I got rid of it. Where? It don't matter. No, I mean it. Pulling yourself together. 
Everyone's going to expect you to be upset, but you cannot panic. It's all over the place. Still angry because of what Tommy sacked. Come on, Sophie, your breakfast is ready. Oh, Sophie, what have I told you about taking that thing out of its cage? Look at the mess you've made. But he's not well. He was limping earlier. I read in a book it could be an ear infection affecting his balance. You strange it. Oh, put the flipping thing back in the cage oh. and come and eat your breakfast. Well, I'm not hungry. Oh, do you know, you asked for an egg so you can eat it. There's millions of starving children in Africa. Name one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't encourage her, Kevin. She's getting really cheeky. All right. I'll eat the egg. Just let me put him away. How are we supposed to bring him up properly if you just undermine me all the time? He was funny, so I sort of laughed. Wish I'd thought of it when my mum used to say it to me. What's the matter with you? Do you want them growing up like all the other dead-end kids round here? I've got reopened my garage today where my friend was murdered. And all you can think about is a flaming guinea pig. It's not the guinea pig. It's the attitude. Stop arguing. What do you think it's like for me and Sophie? With you two having to go at each other all the time. Rosie, we weren't fighting. It's all you ever do. I don't know why you even bothered getting back together in the first place. You act like you hate each other. Oi, what's this, the longest tea break in the history of the knicker business or what? We're talking about Tommy's funeral. Yeah, well, Fuzz, you can do that on your own time, can't you, mate, really, eh? Now, listen, look, this new order Mike's pulled in for the Dutch army, I mean, this is going to be massive for us. I mean, really, really big, and I want you lot focused, because you're the best machinists in Britain. You know that, don't you? And I want you on the top of your game. Um, we'll do our best, Mr Baldwin. Good. Um, Mr Baldwin, we were all wondering if uh, you were going to shut the factory on Wednesday. What for? Tommy's funeral? Means me, are you deaf? Did I not say no more than two seconds ago how important this order is to us? Eh? I mean, Hayley can go to the funeral, can't she? She can represent the factory, yeah? And we'll all chuck in some money for the flowers. You're not a bad boss, Mr Baldwin. So, But this isn't about us like getting a few extra quid in our pay packets. One of us has just had her husband murdered and two kids left fatherless. So whether we knew Tommy or not, we all will be at that funeral to support Angela. Your employee, our friend, so that she knows she's not on her own. And shame on you for thinking otherwise. I've been trying to point out to Rita how much we need a neighbourhood watch scheme. I mean, what with Tommy Harris being butchered just yards away, we, we need to be far more vigilant. Yes, but if it was left to Charles Bronson here, we'd all be armed with machine guns and taking pot shots at anybody who dropped a toffee paper. As usual, Rita, you sneer at any of my suggestions to improve community-mindedness. Well, to be fair, the thought has crossed my mind, particularly with young Chesney staying with us. Oh, well, look, I, I, I've got some uh, leaflets from the police about how we can set up our own neighbourhood watch group and I, I got some quotes from a couple of uh, security firms. I mean, because this place is desperately in need of an upgrade security-wise. Uh, I, I did inquire if, if there was some sort of system, you know, that would electrocute an intruder, but apparently that's against the law. Oh, the rights are all on the side of the criminals these days. Uh, some of these systems look very good, if prohibitively expensive. Uh, yes. How expensive? Well, I mean, you can't put a price on peace of mind, Rita. How expensive? Well, the, some of them... So, I mean, How much? Well, well, the the the, the one the uh, chap recommended uh, starts at four thousand pounds. Four thousand pounds? Well, I've got a better idea. I'll get your torch, a big torch, and a peak cap, and a broom handle, and we'll call you the new night watchman. And uh, we need to get food for the wake and all. I tore a right strip off, Kevin. That's stupid old me. What must he think? What did he say? No. It's just the way he looked at me. Was I acting like, you know, like a, a real grieving widow would? Or could he see someone else? Oh, I'm going to get him to be Paul Bearer. Him and Tyrone, the way your dad's mates, it's, it's only natural that... I've... No. No, I, no, I'll do that. We'll go over later, both of us. To the... 
to the garage. No, no, I can't, Mum. No, we've no choice, love. We've got to start showing our faces. We'll be OK. Uh, I can do the sandwiches and that, and uh, I'll do uh, ham, um, I'll do egg and uh, corn beef. <laughs> Rosie? What do you think? What are you doing to my dad? I'm not doing anything to your dad. Yeah, well, you're bound to deny it. What exactly do you think is going on? You and Gemma's dad. Gemma says that... I don't care what Gemma says. I'm not having an affair with her dad. He's my boss. And when would I get the chance anyway? If I'm not skivvying here for you lot, I'm walking my guts out at the garage. I just don't want anything to happen to you, my dad. Nothing's going to happen, Rosie. Listen to me. Come here. Oh. Remember what you spoke before? It was horrible. Look, love, these last few weeks have been really hard. What with the things that Tommy was saying about me and Martin, that's really upset you, Dad. It's caused no end of trouble. And I think that that's put ideas in your head. I don't know. Hey. How about trusting your mum for once, eh? Because we should be looking out for each other, shouldn't we? Not fighting all the time. Well, that's what I want. If it's all to be happy. Happy? That's not very goth, is it? Not really. <laughs> Come on, Rosie, let's just forget about all this. And let's just move on, OK? You're right. Hey, Katie. Oh, we're all so sorry for you, Law. Thanks. Uh, we had a chat before in fight tray, and girls wanted to sort some food for work. I know it's not more. No, no, I thought it's really kind, thank you. Hey, there's still a copper outside your house. Does that mean that they think whoever did it might come back? Well, the feeling is that it's down to the people who we were on witness protection from in the first place. Really? Mum, I've got, I've got to go back. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right, darling. You're all right. Hey, Jan, thanks for the offer of the food, yeah? And uh, might see you later in the Rovers. We can talk about it then. Yeah. yeah. Did you see that? Oh, come on, love. You're doing great. You're not going for a drink with them? Well, better that than they all come round the house one by one. Oh, come on, please, love. It'll be over soon. My nana reckons she can still feel the presence of my granddad in the spare room where he died. Because she said people that die violently stick around as ghosts. Your granddad died violently? No, he fell off a stepladder putting up curtains, yeah, but he... Put a sock in it, Tyrone. Hiya. Um, we're really sorry about Tommy. He was a good mate. Carl. Look, listen, that's, um... Kev, I am really sorry about this man. Hey, come on, you've got nothing to apologise for. But you will be best for just shooting him. Look, we'll leave you to be called down, so if you like. done all right for yourself in Holland, for you to stay all these years? Yeah, I've not done badly. 
This is really good of you, Tracy. Oh, it was only chicken soup. Not the soup so much as the company. Well, my forgiving nature's always been my downfall. You've a lot to forgive me for. I'm so glad I come back. Having the chance to get to know you. The only thing I knew about you when I were growing up is what my mum told me. I, I'm sorry I weren't there for you. I used to have this, um, like, a little tape recorder. And uh, I used to play kids' songs in that, and... Go on. Well, it sounds a bit daft, really, but there was this one song, and I used to kind of think it was about you. Mm -hmm. um, a mouse lived in a windmill in old Amsterdam. I know it well. So you used to think I lived in a windmill chasing mice about? Well, I was three. <laughs> Another one in here, please, Violet. Oh, coming up. I had the same idea. I have a feeling we'll need it at the boot group tonight. I'm not going to the boot group tonight. But why not? It's at your house. Because I've enjoyed a very peaceful afternoon here, away from the quarrelling, hectoring women that are called my family. And I'm in no hurry to break the spell quite yet. Well, there's no harm in letting your hair down once in a while, eh, sir? Sir. Strange, isn't it? I get more respect from the barmaid at my local than I do at home. Angela's coping pretty well, I'd say. It's Katie, it's it hard. Well, she's had that many nasty rows with Tommy. I mean, she probably feels even worse. Mm, so much left unsaid. Oh, Angela, Katie, I just want you to know everybody's thinking about you. And if there's anything that you need. Thanks, Rita. Hey! Over here, you two. Oh, I'll get him in. <laughs> oh, come on, squeeze in here, you two. Oh, it's good to see you first. Kev? Huh? Look at my friend outside. Hi. Hi. Who's there? Gemma's here. How is she? Much better. I've had a good chat with her. Sorry to barge in like this. Sal told us about you opening up the garage today. Thought you could do with a bit of cheering up. Well, you're flaming a hero. I've had a hell of a day, mate. Hiya. Hi, Rosie. Hi, come on. Do you want me to see if I've got any hot pot left out the back, sir? You must be starving. No, thank you. Have another pint. Go oh, on, what the hell? I'll have a whiskey to go with it. Where's Katie? Oh, she just popped her out. Where to? Oh, she's all right, love. She's just gone for a breath of fresh air. No, I don't know if there's going to be any vegetarians, but we'll do a good selection. So we'll have egg and crisps, cheese and pickle. Mm. Tuna. I like tuna, me. And I, I think at least a couple of crates of beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, don't them kegs usually work out cheaper? Oh, I'm sorry, but I've got to go. Katie? Look, uh, everything I said, I, I was going mad. I know it weren't you, and, and I'm sorry. Oh, look, forget it. You've got enough to deal with. But you don't understand what I've done. Hey. <sighs> Martin, you are the only person that could possibly understand what's happened. Look, you shouldn't be here. Did you say anything? Yes, man. Did you say anything? No, I didn't! <laughs> Sir, don't you think you've had enough? Well, I leave drinking advice on one of my ex pupils, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> Straight laced Barlow's in his cups. Had uh, two halves instead of the usual one tonight, have we, eh? Mind your own business, Baldwin. Do you want me to take you home? Hey, up, old son. You can't resist an offer like that. Or is it the famous Barlow jealousy rearing its ugly head? Uh, another one of Deary's exes have turned up on your doorstep, eh? Pity. 
I was enjoying that. No, it's got speed, though. All I'm saying is, could we just take a look at these pamphlets? And what I'm saying is, this is the book club, not a neighbourhood watch meeting. Mandingo. My grandmother had a collie called Mandingo. Oh, well, I don't reckon this looks much like a lassie story. Well, I, I do agree. A neighbourhood watch scheme is long overdue. That's as maybe. But this is my turn in the chair, and I am not having it usurped by Inspector Clouseau over there. I resent that remark. What are these? Egg. Oh, could you not push the boat out and warm up a few sausage rolls? You're late. Hello, love. I was wondering where you got to. Really? Not with Ray tonight, then. I, uh, I think it best if we reconvene tomorrow. Shows me your book of the week yet? And what literary masterpieces are this time, eh? The Cat in the Hat? Or one of the Mr Men series, perhaps? Come on, Roy. Please, Ken, not now. Yes, now! You see, if I could just get an idea of the numbers we, for come the on, neighbourhood watch come meeting, along. Well, perhaps I could find come. another venue more suitable. <clears throat> um, what's going on? The way people are piling out of here, it's like a fire drill at an old people's home. Oh, here she is now, the newly devoted daughter. Are you drunk? Damn right I'm drunk. The only sensible option in this madhouse. Pathetic. A man of your age weaving about like an old wino. You'd be knitting under a guillotine somewhere. I beg your pardon. You really are a miserable old bat, aren't you? Ken! I'm not standing here listening to this. And you! Fetching and carrying for that imbecile next door. Don't you think you're a bit long in the tooth to be playing this loving nursemaid bit? Pathetic. Right. Come on, Dad. Only me left. What am I, then? Oh, let me guess. A gold-digging little tramp. Well, come on, give it your best shot. Well, you know, this Florence Nightingale out with Langton. Got your eye on a big inheritance when it finally expires. Well, why shouldn't I? I deserve it. Oh, quite possibly you do, but this is one tiny little snag. He's already got kids, you stupid girl. That's why I wanted to divorce Deirdre in the first place because his wife was having a baby. You won't get a penny! <laughs> Cut off this wine, I'm too tiddly. I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> Can Gemma stay over? Please, it's the holidays. Ooh, I don't know about that. Never know what a couple of goths might get up to. Mm, might be planning on sacrificing rat features. <laughs> no, just want to watch Donnie Darko. Uh, no, not tonight. Maybe some other time, eh? <laughs> Come on, give us a go. Don't do yourself a mischief. <laughs> Wouldn't want that, would we? Fair. I'll get some crisps. Um, do you want to drink? Now, some toast to yourself. Where's Rosie? Going out. Mum, can I get a girl guinea pig as well? Out where? To Gemma's. What, when? Oh, about half an hour ago. Kara, I know you can have babies. And, and did she say that's where she was going? Yeah, she said be sure to tell you. Suppose she didn't want you worrying. Well, you should have stopped her. You what? You should have okayed it with me first. Oh, why? There's no problem with it, is there? No, it's just a bit early. I don't want her pestering them at this time. Well, they'll be all right. Rat features is ill. He's just sat there. Well, I thought that's what guinea pigs do. Ha-ha. <laughs> it's the way he's sat. What are you doing? I'm just ringing her. Somebody needs to look after Sophie while we're at work. It's the guinea pig that needs looking after. I thought we could all go to Mass this morning. Light some candles for him, you know. I'm not. I don't believe in God. And if there is one, I hate him. Craig. <laughs> so what time's the funeral? Eleven o'clock. Is the crematorium near? He's not being cremated, he's being buried. What? But you can't. You know as well as I do he wanted to be cremated. He wanted his ashes scattered on the football ground. Did he? It was just something he used to say. He didn't mean it. 
Yes, he did. He was quite passionate about it. I can't believe you're burying him, Angela. Well, we shouldn't. Not, not if that's what he Look, wanted. it was just a joke. No, it wasn't. Besides, I've made all the arrangements now. So change it. It's not that easy. <gasps> well, you could at least oh, look into... Just stop going on about it. It's too late. So you're not going to grant me Daddy's last wish? What does it matter? What happens to him? What matters is that he's gone! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset everyone. We can talk about it when we get back from church. You'll come, won't you? Yes, of course. I'll go and get my coat, then. Was it what he wanted? Cos if it was, then, then why can't we? I mean, at least it'd be something. Do you think that I want to? Do you think it's not killing me, not being able to do what you wanted me to do? Well, then why not? I can't. Just... That's why. Cos when they come to sort the ashes, they'll find it. What? The wrench. <sighs> That's where I hid it. In his coffin. It chokes you. I can't apologise enough. Damn right you can't. I didn't mean it, honestly. I, I don't know what got into me. Half a gallon of beer, I'd say. Well, Kenneth. Yes, it was. It was the drink talking. Well, that and just plain jealousy. It was unforgivable. Well, for once, you're right. You told me. Yeah, but I you should have heard what he said to me. Yeah, well, that was true. He told me Ray's got another kid. Well, much as it kills me to back him up, he's right. He has. And didn't you just love telling me that? Yeah, well, I wasn't trying to score points. Honestly, I just wanted you to realise that the man can't be trusted. You're better off without him, Tracy, whether he's got money or not. I didn't do it out of spite, honestly. Oh, yes, Ken, you're all heart. The man is dying. And all you can think about is the inconvenience. Right. Now it's my turn. Burying it with him? What else could I do? For all I knew, I were being watched. That was the only place I could be sure that I want. It's horrible. He'll, he'll be with him forever, like, like a reminder, like some sort of sea job! Stop it! Do you think I don't know that? Do you think I'm happy about it? Do you think I should have just kept it here for them to find? Just remember who I'm doing this for. No. Sorry. Right. At least we know they won't find it there. It'll be over soon. All we've got to do is get through the funeral. Hiya. You're back early. Have a good time? Bye. Oh, we had a right run around this morning. Your sister had me taking that guinea pig to the vets. Turns out there's nothing wrong with it in the flipping end. Cost me a packet to find that out. I love you. Hey, I love you too. And Mum. Of course. And Sophie. Hey, I even love rat features. You all right? You'll never leave us, will you? Oh, of course I won't. I just don't want to lose you, that's all. Yeah, and you won't do. Hey, me and your mum is going to be around for a long, long time to come. So don't you fret yourself. Angela? Good to see you here. I should have come before. Oh, I wasn't having a go. Glad to see anyone these days. Maybe if the place was a bit warmer. No, it feels good to me. Even Tommy would admit that. And he wouldn't much of a church goer either. Doesn't matter. What matters is that we give him the send-off he deserves. Is it a sin to bury someone when they want to be cremated? Well, in my view, you, you can't define a sin by an action. But by what motivates that action? Now, if someone were to, to do it out of spite, well, then, yes, I would view that as a sin. But I'm sure it's not that, is it? No. 
Lots of people find it difficult to cremate a loved one. Sometimes it's the thought of, of destroying the body or of not having a grave to visit. Is it any of those things that's bothering you? No, no. No, it, it, it not. It's... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's all right, it's all right. Angela. I'm sorry, I just need a few minutes, Jean. I'll be fine in a bit. I'd best be off. See to kids. Father, will you hear my confession? Of course. <laughs> These papers need signing. Thanks. You didn't see Rosie this morning, did you? Only she said she was coming round to see Gemma. No, no, no. Mind you, I, I left early. The thing is, she knows about us. What? She knows we're having an affair. What, she's gone round to see Gemma? Why didn't you tell me before? Well, she may not have, but well, even if she has, she's not got any proof. So, should I be panicking or not? What have you told her exactly? Nothing. It's just that when we were in the kitchen last night and she came in, I, I could just tell she'd figured it all out. What, well, did she say anything? Oh, I could just see it in her face. I mean, what if she says something? And um, what would that be exactly? Hmm? I, I saw my mum and your dad in the kitchen chatting and having a laugh. Because that's all she did see. Just let it all blow over. How can I? Because she's not going to. If there's one thing I know about my daughter, she's persistent. Well, you'll just have to out-persist her. Now, come on. Stop worrying about it. I know something will take your mind off it. Is that all you ever think about? It works, doesn't it? Don't you even feel a tiny bit guilty about lying to your family? If you're going to turn this into a therapy session, forget it. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, talking about anything that matters is banned, isn't it? I mean, we don't have a relationship. We just have a... I don't know why I'm doing this. Because this is how you like it. No complications. Just this. Mm -hmm. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that's, uh, that's just to inform people of my official capacity. <laughs> It looks like something you've made off Blue Peter. Yes, but it's only temporary until I get the real one. <laughs> is this it, then? All the doors I've knocked on and this is the turnout. Before we start, mm. I'd just like to apologise on Kenneth's behalf for last night's fiasco. There's no need. Because of him, I didn't get round to telling you what book I'd chosen. But this isn't a book club meeting. It's about the neighbourhood watch. Seeing as none of you seem that keen on blood ties or mandingo, I've changed course altogether. We're going to read a Louis L'Amour. Trouble is, I can't decide between Mustang Man or Hella with a gun. Well, they sound like westerns. They are. I'm not sure that westerns really qualify as far as literature is concerned. I, mean, I, I would describe that more as pulp fiction. Pulp fiction? Just because they've got a beginning, a middle and an end, unlike your modern rubbish. Anyway, the frontier's a lot more exciting than some dreary old northern town like he picked. Can we stick to the matter in hand? Well, I, I suppose there are one or two exceptions. It, it, certainly in film, I mean, High Noon springs to mind. Oh, yes. Give me a spaghetti western any day. The good, the bad and the ugly. Now you're talking. Anything with Clint Eastwood in. Mind you, my favourite's Calamity Jane. <laughs> Whatever I tell you, it's confidential, innit? You're not allowed to tell anybody. That's right. Even the police. Even the police? This is between you and God. I've got to tell someone you see her, I think I'm going to go mad. There's only Katie, and half the time we have to talk in whispers, and the other half I can't. 
lovely bed. Look at her. And that's wrong, isn't it? I should love her. And I do. But after what she's done, I wish she'd never been born. I spawned a monster. And it should have drowned at birth. She's no right to life. Taking up space that he should, breathing in air that he can't. She should be punished, not protected, and that's what I want to do. I want to punish her like she's punished me. I should let her have her, let her rot in jail. She, I should march her down there right now. But I can't. Because she's my daughter, and, and I love her. She killed my Tommy. They had this huge row and she picked up this wrench and swung it and he fell. And they were gone just like that. And I kept thinking that he was going to get up and shout at her. I was thinking, oh, he's really going to lose it now. The other half of me knew. That was it. My big blustering husband suddenly silent. And I thought this can't be. But it was. That is so unfair. Because I've never got a chance to say I was sorry for shouting at him. And I never got the chance to tell him how much I loved him. And talk about all the things that we'd done and say all the things that I'd always meant to say and I'll never forgive her for that, never. <laughs> and you've not told the police any of this? Oh, good, I? I'm being condemning my own daughter. But you're condemning her and yourself in the eyes of God by not telling the truth. I can't make you do it, and I can't do it myself. But the only chance of forgiveness for either of you is to tell the police. Well, I saw a man killed once before, and, and I told the truth, and it nearly destroyed my family, and this would destroy him totally. And I won't let that happen. And you realize that I cannot absolve you of your sins. I'm not asking for God's forgiveness. I just want my husband. <sighs> Angela. The dead would stay, did a rolling on over the plains. With the curtains flapping and the driver slapping the reins. Oh, come on, Norris, cheer up. You'll be able to make a sheriff's badge out of a milk bottle top. Oh, whip crack away, whip crack away, whip crack away. Did you like that? Oh. It's really nice seeing you again. I thought I'd put you off yesterday, rambling on about myself. It must have been boring for you. Of course not. Well, I really feel as if I know you a lot better now. And um, finding out I was your only child, well, you don't know what that means to me. Well, it's like we've got a special bond, isn't it? You know, for the first time ever, I really feel as if I can call you dad. That's great. Isn't it? Although I must admit it would have been nice to discover there was a Hans or a Heidi hiding somewhere in the wings. <laughs> I'm afraid not. Oh, it's funny that. Because that's not what I heard. In fact, what I heard was the reason why you and Mum got divorced is because your Dutch girlfriend was up the duff. So come on, Ray. 
How many other half-brothers and sisters have I got? None, I swear. Do you know what really gets to me? The fact that you could lie to me. To make me feel special, just so you could soften me up. I weren't lying. The next thing you're going to say is that it were a phantom pregnancy. No, it were real all right. And so were kid, when he were born. Except he were dead. Perfect he were. You couldn't tell, looking at him, that there was out wrong. <laughs> it's like he were asleep. Or summit. We stopped trying after that. So yes, Tracy, you are my only child. I'm sorry. I feel awful no, now. No, no, it's not your fault. But maybe you understand now why it's so important to me getting to know you. Because you are special to me, Tracy. Very special. You startled me. Are you all right? Like you care. You left early this morning. Your dad said that you'd gone to Gemma's. I was going to, but changed my mind. And you're dead relieved, aren't you? No. How can it even look at Gemma, knowing what you're doing with her, Dad? Whatever you thought you saw last night. I did see it. What exactly? We weren't doing anything. So why did you jump away from him like that? Why did you look so guilty? Ah, <sighs> you're imagining things, Rosie. You've been watching too many films. Stop it, Mum. Stop trying to blame me. Making me feel bad. Telling me I'm going to cause trouble when you're the one that's been lying. Why don't you just admit it? All right. It's true. We are having an affair. Oh, you're back. Yeah. Kate, you said you went shopping. Yeah, I took Craig to get him some sensible shoes for tomorrow. We can't have him tuning up in boots. Oh, I should have thought. Well, you've enough to think about right now. Are you feeling any better? You had me worried before. Yeah. Yeah, we're just nerves, you know, thinking about the funeral. I find that, honest. Have you thought any more about what we were saying? Yeah, Jean, and I'm sorry, but I still want to have him buried. Why? I know it must seem awful to you that I'm ignoring what he wanted, but it's not like that, honestly. For one thing, I want to come visit his grave. <laughs> and when I go... I want to be buried with him. Surely you understand that. I suppose. You swore to me nothing was going on. And I believed you. I know, I'm sorry. I was just trying to protect you. Protect yourself more like. Protect all of us. Because you and Sophie and Dad, you mean everything to me. How can we? If we did, you wouldn't be doing it with your boss. Don't talk to me like that. Why not? You are. That doesn't give you the right to... So where did you do it? Here? When my dad thinks you're at work when really you... Stop it. Stop it. Are you going to go off with him? No, I'd never do that, ever. But you love him. No, I love your dad. Nothing you say makes sense. If you love him, why are you doing this? You wouldn't understand. You're just saying that because you don't want to tell me. It's complicated. No, it's not. It's horrible. And it's dirty. And you're disgusting! Don't cry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I never meant to hurt you. I'll finish with him. I'm going to tell him it's over. I don't believe you. I will, I promise, I swear. No more lies. Just don't hate me, Rosie, please. I couldn't bear that. 
<laughs> Everything's gonna be fine. I promise. Is that? I aren't gonna bury someone that ain't dead. It's all I've got left now. Inside that little hole. I'm sorry. Look, just give us an hand, will you? to be there. You have every right. For all that's happened. There's no one going to be at that church who loved your dad more than you and me. Is there? I don't want it. What? I'm not hungry. Hold on a minute. Five minutes ago you said... Don't punish me, Rosie. I'm finishing it with Ian. I'm doing what you want. I thought it was what you wanted to. Well, it is. I mean, this family means everything to me. I hate this thing. Sits in the wardrobe like a vulture waiting for days like today. You two not getting rid of it? I've been thinking. Me and Tommy Harris were daggers drawn at the best of times, especially at the end. I'd be a hypocrite if I went along today. I'd be daft. Tommy was a mate. I'm carrying his coffin. I'd like you there for support. It's horrible seeing people you care about in so much pain. That's what, that is what funerals are for, a deeply cathartic ritual through which the bereaved might vent their emotions and perhaps move on a little. Well, I hope you're right. I keep putting myself in Angela's shoes, wondering how I begin to cope without you. Well, that's an eventuality that hopefully you won't have to cope with for a little while. Ah. Who's this? These are for Tommy. I saved up my sweet money, but Sunit won't take it. That is very generous. I don't know. When I tried to swap for a bigger bunch, she said, don't push it. Tommy Maurice. He helped me do up my quad bike. We take these to the funeral. Oh, of course I can, Chess. It's a lovely gesture. Right, well, better be off. I want to chuck me guts up every day when I wake up and he's not there. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, you've no need to apologise. Whatever you say, what, what you've done for that family has been unbelievable. I doubt I could have done the same. Oh, I think you would. Any mother would. I can't really say. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's nothing I wouldn't do for my kids, but... Whether I could have held it together like you did. I've never had what you and Tommy had, so... Well, you're lucky, then. You don't mean that. Oh, with all my heart. And if you're going to say that, it's better to have loved and lost. And... I wouldn't be daft enough to presume. Well, I'm glad. Because from where I'm standing, it's not better. And it never will be. <laughs> I'm finished, Eileen. Look, you're bound to feel like that, but you'll get stronger and, and in time you'll be able to look back and, and take comfort. No, I remember painting the bedroom of the first flat that we ever had and 
And Tommy wanted blue, almost did, <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday. And I wanted, like, you know, a burnt orange. <laughs> and we rowed about it for a bit and then went out and bought a can of each and mixed them together. And when we were done, Tommy said, there's no one in the world who's got a colour like this on their walls. And I said, well, nobody else would want it. <laughs> Tomala, we called it. And that's just the sort of thing you're going to be able to draw on. No, oh no, no, you're missing the point. Tom was the blue and I was the orange. And when we came together, we made something different, unique. And once it was done, then you couldn't separate either of us out again. We were what we'd become. And there were no going back. And now that Tom's gone, there's no going forward either. And so we had to chuck that last bit of leftover paint because we knew that we'd never make anything quite like it again. Oh, no. <laughs> what are we going to do today? Can we have Kill Bill out on DVD? Kill what? Kill Bill. It's a film. Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, and now I think I have heard of this gentleman. Isn't he a peddler of casual profanity and mindless brutality? How am I expected to face your mother when she gets back? It's all right. She loves it. We've seen it six times. It's loads better than Reservoir Dogs. Less talking, more violence. Hey, we could do some scenes after. You can be Bill and nearly can be Cottonmouth. <laughs> Words fail me. I tell you where we're going, young man. Narnia, Never Never Land, the far away tree. Eh? The library. Come on. Thanks, Tyrone, and thank you for coming as Thanks for making the effort, Sally. It's no trouble. I'm afraid I have to go to work after the church, but. Angelo. I'm sorry I'm so late. The M62. It doesn't matter. It's all right. I'm just really glad that you're here. No, no, come on. Just let it go, eh? <laughs> come on. The, the cars are here. Um, Perhaps uh, everyone should go on for a minute, then.
roomy. Yeah, it's giving me the creeps. Mm, I don't want out solemn when I go. I want all my favourite music. Yeah, I don't think Bell Ringer knows how to play YMCA. <laughs> I don't know, they do call them campanologists. <laughs> <laughs> Not looking forward to this one bit. I don't think any of us are. I meant carrying the coffin. Don't seem right to me being in there. See, I don't want to let him down or anything, but, but Tyrone, I don't want... will you stop worrying? I'm not going to let anyone down. They're getting out now, look. Mm, on, I'm all right, Dad, I'm OK. Are you sure? What are they doing here? They were bound to come. It's cos they know, don't they? They know. Katie. They don't know a thing. But if you don't pull yourself together, they soon will. All we've got to do is get through today and everything will be easier, I promise. But you have to help me because I can't do this on me or not today. Look, please, Katie. Look, everybody's watching. OK. my husband's killer. The inquiry is ongoing, Mrs. Harris. Besides, sometimes you can learn more from a funeral than a hundred interviews. Well, I suppose I'll be glad of you if the Morgan family shows. But we really, really need to talk about witness protection. I leave you to it. As I say, the mass will last about 45 minutes. Thank you. Maybe we should talk about the WPP another time, Mrs. Harris? <laughs> But I can assure you, you and your family are quite safe for now. For now's no good to me. I've already lost an husband because of them thugs. We don't know that. We're pursuing a number of alternative leads. We will find the murderer, Mrs Harris. And I'm still confident we can recover the murder weapon. Once we do, it will be a big step forward. Thank you. Oh, this <clears throat> book is fantastic. Yes, yeah, hardly what I had in mind. I was thinking more wind in the willows. I hear enough wind from Kirk and Uncle Wes without reading about it and all. That book got me through primary school. When the stoats and the weasels of the playground were snapping at my heels, I could escape to the riverbank, take tea and crumpets with Ratty and Mole, wrapped by their tails of Mr Toad. If you read this instead, you wouldn't have even been picked on. It's not really my... Uh, Thing. You said you were worried about street crime. I thought it was something me and you could do together after go home tomorrow. Living around here, you need to know how to defend yourself against murderers, especially if you've got ginger hair. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be quite safe, Chesney. I will be once I read this. Jiu-Jitsu began with the training of samurai warriors. <laughs> you've got some nerve. I'll give you that, sunshine. Do you hear that? It's the sound of Tommy spinning in his coffin. Shouldn't be here, you. I'm not hiding. Tommy's death had nothing to do with me. So you came regardless of how it might upset people? No, I'm not here to upset people. I'm here to support anyone who might need it. Right, now rush me. No, 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 you gotta mean it. You gotta shout at me, scream. We're in the middle of the cafe, Chesney. But there's no one here. And there will be ages in the bog. She took the people's friend with you. Oh, please, Uncle Roy, practice your scream. Ah. Really scream. Imagine my mum was here. Ah. That's it. Now run at me! Ah! Ah! I'm really sorry. Are you all right? Uh, yeah, yes, I'm fine, thank you. Ah. I, I think perhaps... I think perhaps class has answered your bad notion after all. What the hell? I, I, I was just, uh, just helping Chesney with his martial arts. 
Well, I'd stick to Barsley chops and give karate a miss. It's not karate, it's jujitsu. It's a path of least resistance. Karate means empty hand. Really? Empty heads more like. God. A couple of hours, it'll soon be over. It'll never be over. You can bury what you like. The truth's coming home with us. You ready? You know you can come here and talk to me in confidence at any time. Thank you, Father. You're okay with this, Craig? I can always get. I'm all right. In the waters of baptism, Tommy died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. brothers and sisters. We believe that all the ties of friendship and affection that knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives us our sins, let us pray. Yes, well, I'll see you. I'll see you. Hey, I'll try that on our chat next time if it gets my birthday. Yeah. Call me the Ginger Ninja. Oh, uh, Chesney, that, that, that was your mother on the telephone. I'm afraid that she won't be coming home tomorrow. She, she feels she needs another week's rest. I am sorry. No big deal. I expected it. I will be stopping here, though, won't I? Well, yeah, yes, if that's what you want. Mm. Defo. All oh, right, well, look, get that mess cleared up. Uh, fetch your dustpan. Blaming Nora, it were only a few breadsticks. No, 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 no. It... Scylla, the telephone. I could hardly hear her. There's, there's a lot of background noise at that retreat of hers. What noise? Well, she said it was a chant to help her medicate. Well, I think she meant meditate. Mm. Well, it didn't sound very relaxing to me anyway. Well, how did it go? Oh, well, do... Do, do, I could do, well, do, Well, you know what do. that is, don't you? Flaming I could do. Retreat my backside. It'll be her and that Battersby. Yeah, living it up on the costas. She's abandoned that poor lad again. I remember me dad singing that at the cup final in the replay. 93 it was. Two of the best days of his life, he said. Even though Wednesday got beat. Them matches are my first real memory of him. There were only three. People said he was mad taking me. I cast him an arm and a leg. It meant he couldn't go for the real booze up with his mates, but he didn't care. He said he had to swap his lad with him. He said he had to take me because it might be the last chance I had of seeing Wednesday in the cup final. <laughs> Looks like he was right. <laughs> but the main reason was... was because, uh, of what I meant to him. He, uh, He loved me. 
and it and he loved our Katie. Only it was really, really hard for him to say. Same with me. I didn't realise how hard it until I had to try and write it down. I wish I could have said it. But don't worry. Because I knew you cared, Dad. I always knew. And I hope that you knew that I cared and all. Because... Dad, you weren't afraid of anything or anyone. You weren't a coward like them who killed you. Oh, I wish I could cop hold of whoever did it. And make them see what they've done. I'd make them suffer the way, the way we've had to, the way we're going to have to for the rest of our lives. Oh, God. Ourselves. But if it's anyone's fault, it's mine. I'm the reason we moved here. We fled Sheffield in fear of our lives. Made a new life here. Good friends, and we stopped looking over our shoulder. So that's not your fault, love. <laughs> Tommy idolised his kids. They were his greatest achievement. They were his life. <laughs> but things had been a bit fraught lately. Our teenage daughter becoming a woman, locking horns with us. Daddy's girl all grown up and that were hard for Tom. And then this. And we... We didn't have any chances to say our goodbyes. And I've got a slanging match ringing in my head to keep wondering if it were my fault, if, if we hadn't rowed, if he hadn't gone to the garage in that foul mood. And... I don't know how we'll go on without him. But, but we will. Because we can't let him down. I saw this, um, saw this woman on a chat show once and she'd spent, she'd spent all her life working in hospices and hundreds of people had literally died in her arms. And she said, when we're on our deathbeds, that only two things will be important to us. Am I loved? And did I love well? spend your day off. Oh, well, at least it shuts my mother up. Shall I see to lunch? I was just going to put a couple of baked potatoes in the oven. Oh, well, even I can't mess that down. Fine. I was, uh, was going to suggest a jaunt out somewhere, but um, I didn't know if it would appeal. Best part of the day is gone. Of course it would appeal. I don't understand. I mean, not very edifying, is it, being jealous of a dying man? Cancer attacks his body and I assassinate his character. Well, we weren't to know his wife had had a miscarriage. True. 
But I took great delight in bursting Tracy's bubble. Oh, so that's where she gets a cruel streak from. She's more your daughter than we thought. Mm, is she, though? Yes. A jaunt where, exactly? And don't say one of your fossil museums. <laughs> the lakes, maybe? Wherever you like. What are you doing Sunday, Barlow? Ensure and certain hope of the resurrection of the life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our brother Tommy and commit his body to its resting place. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and give him peace. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and be gracious unto him. Ray and I have been meandering down memory lane. All oh, right. <laughs> she meandered, I hobbled. Do you remember them days out in Southport? We used to take Tracy. Yeah, all two of them. Quality, not quantity, eh? You'll stay for a cup of tea, Deirdre. Oh, yes, please, Emily. Yeah. Uh, you might have warned me you'd gone all sepia. I could have sworn we went half a dozen times. No, you must have taken your fancy piece, love. I was at home washing nappies and putting your tea on. I'll make a fresh pot. <laughs> April, bank holiday, 1978. We saw Kenny Dalgleish walking along the front. You wouldn't get his autograph for me. Kettle's on. You would remember that, but <laughs> my shortcomings are 2020. <gasps> oh, excuse me. I'm hard work and you are tied out. Oh, nonsense. Emily, I wish you'd give me a shout. I'm only next door. Well, since you're offering... How do you fancy making a selfish cheat the happiest man barely alive? By doing what? Taking me to Southport. I don't mean just driving me there and dumping me on pavement. I mean, a day out, you know. Oh, um, I, I don't know, Ray. Look, it, it's not that I don't want to. I've just got to tread very carefully with Ken. Right. OK. I'll change your hot water bottle. Oh, you're an angel, love. Just that. Ow. Oh, go on, then. Honest? Yes. The sea air will do you good. What about Ken? I'll square it with Ken. So, uh, is Saturday OK? Nay, hey, I've been poked and prodded by whippersnappers. Hospital appointment. Mm -hmm. What about Sunday? Well, to Perfect. be honest... Perfect. No strings, no pressure, nothing. Time is of the essence. Right. Sunday it is, then. For our brother Tommy, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in death. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I just don't see what the problem is. You don't say. What's the big deal? Your dad's feelings. By your dad. I mean, Ken, in case you were getting confused. Uh, no. The man who brought you up. Look, for goodness sake, just tell Dad that you can't make Sunday because you promised to take Ray out. I mean, it's not as if you're going to have any fun, is it? I mean, he's going to be asleep there and back. Tracy! Oh, perhaps if you invited Rita along, Ken might feel less excluded. And you'd come as well, wouldn't you, Emily? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, good. Yeah, and me and Amy are up for it. Oh, splendid. An old-fashioned shower. Well, that takes the sting off it a bit. Why don't you go and talk to your nan? 
She's lost her son, do you remember? I really thought I was going to drop that coffin. Yeah, went through my mind a couple of times. And the altar felt a million miles away. Baby, you'd have never dropped it. Reckon Tommy would have seen the funny side. Adam, or do you know something I don't? No, I couldn't. <laughs> I'm like Alison Moyer, all cried out. You're dead brave, Ange. No, not anything. And just getting up, breathing, taking it an hour at a time. Oh, come here, love. But you haven't had a wink of sleep, have you? When we're back on witness protection, then we'll get some peace. Well, at least that copper's still outside your front door, eh? Well, what good's one copper? We need the old shebang. They might not stop at Tommy. Don't say that. Um, I'd better be going now, I'm sorry. All right, darling, thanks for coming. <coughs> you uh, did well today. Your dad would have been proud. I couldn't picture him in there. Yeah, I know. I was carrying this box and it weighed its on and it was killing my shoulder. And the whole time I was just thinking, that's my dad in there. My dad. He used to carry me on his shoulders. Hey, you should go to funerals more often. I'll pass that on to his widow. Sorry. I'm a glib so and so. It's my worst and best trait, among others. Well, I can do glib. Yeah? It's over. You and me. <laughs> what? Yep, promised Rosie that I'd knock it on the head. Never rains, but it pours, eh? I've got good news, bad news, and good news. Right, far away. There's a jujitsu class tonight in Salford. So there is, and which news is that? Funny. The bad news is, it's a fiver for me and seven quid for you. Right, and well, what's the other good news? I've negotiated you a discount. Oh, yes. Said you were on the door. Oh, dear. And I might have sort of mentioned that I live in care. So that's another couple of quid off, no problems. But then when we tip up and give it the full. Is this the jujitsu class, mister? All the well that is in for free. Well, man, says my face is my fortune. One big lie for the rest of my life. Whether I meet you, well, if I ever meet anyone. Anyone who loves me or anyone who I love. This big lie coming between us. It'll become second nature. Ah, oh, yippee. Well, what's the alternative? A 20 year stretch? Yeah, I know. And now Craig talks about my dad all the time. I mean, all the time. I didn't mean it like that. I'm just scared, Mum. What if they find out it were me? What if I bottle it like I did today? Well, you won't. Well, what if we get drunk and start rambling? Easy. Don't drink. I can't do this on my own, Katie. Our lives have changed forever. Big, big things have happened. Now, we've got to get this place clean and tidy, yeah? That is our immediate priority. The devil's in the detail, Katie. Hmm? We go back on witness protection, our feet won't touch the ground. Moment's notice, we're gone. So, help me tidy up, yeah? And you've got to keep your hands busy all the time. Believe me, it helps. Look, we we'll think about tomorrow, tomorrow, OK? OK. Right, good, good. You washing or drying? I wash. Right. She won't say anything to Kevin as long as we call it a day. Held to ransom by a 14-year-old goth. Brilliant. She's looking out for a dad. She worships him. Lucky Kevin. Gemma just thinks of me as a walking cash point. It'll be fine. You sound so certain. Business as usual, just without the usual. <laughs> well, did it were that simple. What do you mean? Nothing. Where are you going? Home. 
Well, I've still got one. Oh, what a mess. Mess, yeah. But it's not the disaster it could have been. Well, not yet, anyway. Not till Rosie pulls the pin. I'll worry about Rosie. I'm a good mother. And I'm a good worker. I'm not disputing either. Good. So from now on, we're just mates. Well, first and foremost, you're the boss and I'm the employee. Hmm. What does mmm mean? Let's just see how things pan out, eh? Pan out? Is my job safe, Ian? I'm off to Crete next week. It's not going to be a very relaxing holiday, is it? Look, Sally... Is my job safe? It's not not safe. Let's put it that way. Look, let's just see how the land lies when you get back. No, you can't do that. Look, will you just answer that, please? I'll see you tomorrow. I don't see that I've got a lot of choice. You must do what you think best. Oh, Ken, don't go all lofty on me. Well, I do apologise, but I can't compete for your time with a dying ex-husband. We can go to the lakes on the 10th. Or the 12th, maybe. Of never. Oh, for heaven's sake. I was so looking forward to it. But so was I. Just not this Sunday, that's all I'm saying. Message received and understood. Oh, give me strength. I can do lofty, I can do petulant. There's no end to my talents. The only thing I can't do is terminal illness. Shame on you. I'm sorry. Look, you are invited as well, you know. Aunt Emily and Rita, you never know, it might even be fun. <laughs> well, he's taking him to self-defence class tonight. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> Silla won't know what's it to when she comes back from her spiritual retreat. Spirit being the operative word. Brandy gin and vodka. Ah, let's just hope Chesney doesn't knock her over and break every bone in her body. Cos, I mean, I'd hate the thought of her being in agonising pain for, say, six to eight months. Hey, Lee, what's up? Just wrong. Even Chesney, you deserve better. You were a man on the phone. Oh, well, I'm sure the instructress is quite competent. I'm Marion. Congratulations on making a life saving decision. Could be yours, could be somebody else's. Nice one. I'm going to show you lot how to restrain, immobilise and control any attacker of any shape or size. I repeat, any attacker of any shape or size. Suppose some 20 stone, greasy haired, low life mugger tries to jump you, steal your wallet, handbag, sovereign rings, delete as applicable. You can lay the thieving beggar out in seconds flat. Even me? Especially you. Ooh. Welcome to jujitsu. Can't spell it, but I've been doing it for 25 years. A constitutional along the prom, a pot of Earl Grey in that large hotel on the front. Bliss. <laughs> Ooh, party on. You know, I've been thinking. These seaside resorts, they're missing out on a niche market. Oh, yes. Aye, kiss me quick hats. Kiss me quick before I snuff it. <laughs> and how are they going to fit that round the brim? Hey, oh, back to the drawing board. So what's new on Jungle Telegraph? No, don't ask me. I'm just a stay-at-home mum. How about that funeral? Heartbreaking, by all accounts. Oh, come on. No funeral talk. Now, listen, Amy. Ray's going to take us to the seaside. You're going to show him how to make sandcastles? Gosh, yes, aren't you, darling? Amy seems rather taken with the idea. <gasps> oh. What do you need? Yeah, It'll don't... pass. It's OK. I'll be fine in a minute. I've told you and it's over. Yeah, right that it's over and that it should never have happened in the first place. You'd say anything to shut me up. I've been so stupid. I was doing the wrong things for the right reasons and 
Now I've got a daughter who doesn't respect me and won't believe me when I'm telling her the God's honest truth. I've ended it with him, Rosie. And you love Dad. I adore you, Dad. And when we're on that beach as a family, I want you to really enjoy it. And not worry about your silly old mum, cos she's learnt her lessons. You know, some families aren't as lucky as we are. Look at Greg. All right, I believe you. Make friends, make friends, never, never break friends. I'm not some stupid kid. Right. I'd have your wallet, your car keys, your mobile, and I'd be halfway to Marple Bridge by now. I don't really think this is for me. I, I, I'm not very coordinated. Try saying that to the assailant. They're very reasonable people, muggers. Uh, Roy. 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 I also have proximity issues. <sighs> You've not been observing properly, Roy. You lack application. Ha! Is it something like that, Marion? It's the Morgans, isn't it? Have you arrested them? For God's sake, tell me they're banged up. The perpetrators of your husband's shooting are in prison, as you know. Yeah, but they're a big family, there's loads of them. The two you've got banged up are just pulling the strings from the inside, it's obvious. Mrs Harris. We're totally satisfied that your husband's murder is not linked to the Morgans. Are you totally satisfied? Yeah? You come round here hours after I've buried my husband and tell me it's now to do with Sheffield. They shot him through the chest. For which they're serving time. Oh, and you just think they're going to take the punishment on the chin, do you? They murdered my husband. I can assure you they didn't. We've eliminated them from our inquiries. I don't believe this. Somebody killed him. And we'll find them, Craig. Well, what about Platt? Frankly, that line of inquiry is pretty much exhausted. I know it with the Sheffield lot. They've bided the time. They won't stop there. Mrs Harris, trust me. We are completely satisfied that they played no part in your husband's murder. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's best that it wasn't then. We won't be putting you back on the witness protection programme. <laughs> And we're withdrawing the uniformed officer outside. No, 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 he can't do this to us. You're perfectly safe. No, no, you, you have as good as signed our death warrant. The brutal murder of your husband was an isolated random incident. We don't believe you or your children are under threat in Weatherfield. We'll find Tommy's killer, Mrs Harris. That's a promise. We'll find them and we'll bring him or her to justice. I mean, it's all right saying let's have a day out in Southport, but what kind of day am I going to have having to trail after her and all the bits and pieces? Oh, and if anyone suggests taking her on the sands or building sandcastles, well, they can do it. And what's more, they can clean her up afterwards because once she gets sand on her, I shan't want to know. Thank you very much. I uh, take it this means you're not coming with us. Thought I'd made that clear. <sighs> I thought you'd have snapped out of it by now. Why, Ken? I mean, what's it in aid of? Why? It's because I don't want to. Simple as that. I don't want to go to Southport with all those people. So I'm not going. Well, um, does that mean you can look after Amy? Well, no, I'd rather not do that either. You mean you don't want to come with us because we're not doing what you want to do, which is you and me going somewhere by ourselves. Which I would like to do as well. We can do that any time. Surely, just this once. Sorry, no. So, um... Why can't you look after Amy? Because I don't want to do that, either. Well, you know what? I think that is really mean. Yes, and childish and ungenerous and selfish. But then, you see, I've got rather tired of being the only person in this madhouse who thinks about other people. There's always having to give up what he wants to do because it doesn't suit them. And so today, just for change, I'm going to do what I want to do, which is staying here. You feed the whole street with it. Oh, it's the whole street now, is it? Not just Angela and the kids. I'll get it! Oh, thanks, Rosie. That's nice of you. I just think it'll be a nice gesture. Do you really think they'll want to be going out so soon after Tommy's funeral? Well, if they don't, they can say, can't they? Where's Sophie? Uh, upstairs, isn't she? Come here. 
So do you think you might answer the door the next time it's for you? Thank you. Yeah, well, am I supposed to know it was for me? Hey, it's taking a notice. How you doing, Chesney, mate? Yeah, I'm all right. Did you get any Easter eggs? Well, my mum's away, but I bought them for myself. Oh, that's not right big, is it? Here, have this one. I'll never get round to eating it, and I'd regret it if I did. <laughs> she told me that before I bought it. Oh, thanks. You're playing out. Yeah. Come on, then. All right, dinner will be about half one, OK? Yeah. And you can invite who you want. I just think it'll be a nice gesture. Yeah, and a lot of hard work for somebody. So what do they think? That we killed him? Who are you talking about? The police! Yeah, but why? Because they've said they're not going to give us any more protection. And why? Because I don't think that them from Sheffield had anything to do with it, so who do they think did have something to do with it? I don't know, I just assume that they don't know. In which case, they'll still be given us protection. Because if they just don't know... If it could still be anybody, then it could still be them from Sheffield. You see what I mean? The fact they've said that we're not in any danger means they think they know who did it. That might be the place now. Yeah, well, if it is, they've come to arrest us. Hi, Kev. Hi. Look, you can say no if you want. We'll understand. The big tank for just them little fish. You think I should have brought some more? Oh, no, I think two's enough for now. Let's see how they get on before we start an aquarium. Oh, I think they're lovely, don't you, Beth? Yeah. But they're going to need some more water, though. Yeah, what have we got? We can carry oh, we've got it. All in. sorts. Tell you what, Bethany. I bet they'd like some of your chocolates. Do you think so? Yeah. Right, come on, let's give them a bit of this then. Come on, come get it. That's it. Chocolate. It's stuck in. <laughs> what are you doing? Mum, have you seen what he's done? Hey, it's Easter for them as well. Oh, he's put chocolate in the fish tank. Oh, David. I'll get it out. Not shit, I'll have your hand off them. Shut sure, up, will you? Mum, will you please just tell him? I must say, I think that's a very childish thing to do, David. I think goldfish are pretty childish. Yeah, that's enough of your silly comments. It's very good a scooter to have brought them. So, you're determined, then? You go, and enjoy yourself. I'll be here when you get back. I hope you don't expect us to bring you a stick of rock. And what should we say to people when they ask why you're not coming? Say whatever you like. I'm sure they'll be able to supply reasons of their own. I'm sure they will. Right, I'll nip next door and uh, see if they're ready. No, no, it's OK, I'll do that. Um, Clarkies are in the hall, are they? I'll go and get me coat. We're just giving him a day out. Which is very commendable. I just happen to think he'll enjoy himself all the more without me there. Yeah, well, the mood you're in, I think we all will. Chesney! Don't tell her I've got this. Why not? Hello, Miss Sullivan. Hello, love. Hello, Sophie, love. Now, Chesney, did you get any Easter eggs? Well, I got this one, yeah. All right, I'm saving it till later. Hey, dear, that's not very big, is it? Well, you see, my mum's away. Right, just stay here. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, uh, Rita, are we ready, then? Yes, we are, but I've just got something to do first. I wish she'd let me drive. She shouldn't be on the road at her age. Rita's a very capable driver. Oh, around here when she knows her way about, but even then she's had a couple of close shaves. Anyway, uh, Ray's coming with me, so we'll see you when we get there. Yes, if we arrive in one piece. Come on. Hey, just don't rush me. Slow but steady's me motto these days. Yeah, but shouldn't we arrange to meet somewhere? We'll find you. Southport's not that big. Well, it's big enough, and it is Easter weekend. T Tracy! Oh, we'd better make sure we keep them in sight, otherwise we'll never see them again. For goodness sake, don't say that to Rita. It's traffic lights and stop signals she needs to keep in sight. If you think she's that bad, why don't you go with Tracy? And leave you two on your own. You'll never get past Rosamond Street. Here we are, Chesney. A present from me. Don't eat it all at once. Thanks, Miss Sullivan. My pleasure. Do you know you're awful, you are? It was my mum that suggested it before she went away. Right. Let's get you to Southport. 
Well, but don't we have to wait for nobody else? Well, I thought it was nice if it was just me and you. Give us more of a chance to get to know one another. Oh, just leave it. It's like a big kid sometimes. What does she think she's going? Oi! 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 What do you think you're doing? Oh, sorry. I thought you decided to stop with Dad. Well, I don't know why you should think that. <coughs> now, are you going to get out of there and strap Amy in? Well, can't you just travel on the roof? Oh, Tracy. So, uh, how are you this morning, then? Smashing. Looking forward to a paddle and a bag of chips. I might just join you if the tide's not too far out. It's very good for your bunions as a paddle, you know. I haven't got bunions. Me neither. There you go, sir. Thanks. Thought I'd take my grandson out for the day, but his mum and dad have taken him to Tatton Park. And they did not invite you along, too, no? Ah, well, yes, only... They see enough of me as it is. I don't like to keep pushing me company on them for fear that... Well, for fear that one day they'll be that sick of me, they'll kick me out. What a lovely surprise! <laughs> a gin and tonic for this lovely young lady, and I'll have another one in there. Oh, well, thank you very much. And I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. why don't I take you out somewhere nice for a bit of Sunday dinner, yes? Oh, Fred, I'd love to, but uh, Gail's invited me over there. Oh, she hasn't, has she? Yeah, I can't let the kiddies down, my lover. Uh, another time, eh? Right. Oh. Yeah. oh, hi, Ken. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. Are you doing anything special? No, I am not. And what I am definitely not doing, regardless of what anyone might think, I'm definitely not going to Southport. Pint, please, Kieran. Oh, well, you certainly made your mind up about that, then. <laughs> I have, yes. Hello, man. I didn't expect to see you here. Oh, sweetheart, now, what can I get you? Uh, a white wine? Uh, yeah, totally. I'll get it. You serve, Ken. I've told Fred I'm coming over to you for lunch because I don't want him to take me out, not today. He gets very over-affectionate at holiday time. Well, I have to tell you that I've come over here to escape young people in fish tanks. Yeah, I think I'd rather take my chance with them, thanks. <laughs> right, you're here. Shall we tell them? Right, but they're not going to like you. Oh, seems to be a problem. Hi, uh, oh, cheers for looking after her, David. Um, so much happened. What? Where's the fish? She's eating them. I went to the toilet, come back, and she was just swallowing the second one. Bethany, sweetheart. You have enough you. Right. She's eating the fish. Well, what are we going to do? Of course. Well, what do I do? Just, just press it. Ray, the, what? He just didn't fancy it. Uh, there's a bit more to it than that, Rita. Is jealous of Ray. No other word for it. Jealous. Oh, I can't believe that of Ken. I'm sorry, Blanche, but I really can't believe it. She's right, though. He is. Mum! <laughs> Mum, come here and get on the photo. What do you want me on it for? Well, it's a family photo, isn't it? Oh, well, if it's a family photo, we need Amy. No! No, I don't want her on it. Come on, stand here. It's just me, you and Ray. Because I'm the baby in this photo. Smile! Are they planning on stopping in that house? Well, I wouldn't have thought they'd want to. Well, Angela certainly won't want to be looking at that carriage every day. Mrs Platt, uh, sorry to interrupt. What's the matter? It's um, Bethany. She's um, eating the fish. What fish? The goldfish put in the tank this morning. <laughs> Sorry, not funny. And you're not joking? She's actually gone and... Eating the fish, yeah. How is she? Well, I don't know, really. Right, I'm coming. Yeah, I'm coming too. How many fish are we talking about? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got everything we need. Four balls, four you clubs, some cards. Oh, and I think... Uh, uh, did, you've really got the pencils, haven't you? Yeah. Don't you want to have a go, Gran? I'd rather watch other people making fools of themselves than have them watch me. Good reason. Can't argue with that. Oh, you could take Amy for a walk. So could you. Are you trying to get rid of me? Um, 
Yeah. Well, you're not going to. Now, now, can I say, be, before we start, that golf is a game of hand-eye coordination. Except this isn't golf. No, no, this is crazy golf. Yeah, so why are you lecturing us about golf? Because the underlying principle's the same. No, it's not. You need to measure with the eye the distance to the hole and the direction you want the ball to take. Go on, Emily, set us off. We'll be here all day. We'll be here all day anyway. I'm no good at this. Well, you'll be all right as long as you do as I tell you. You're saying, now, what, what, what Emily's doing, well, it, it's all wrong. You need to relax, Emily. Relax. You're not relaxed. Well, of course you're not relaxed. Were you shouting at her? And your stance is all wrong, and the way you're holding that club, well, that's just hopeless. Saying, what was Emily doing all wrong? Yes, well, well there, there'll always be flukes. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're saying that you didn't actually eat them? Well, of course she will. She heard us going on about hospitals and stomach pumps. And if she didn't eat them, then where are they? <gasps> Did you actually eat No. See? This is all my fault. Oh, it's not your fault. Will you stop saying that? Well, I think we should take it a casualty just in case. <laughs> Darling, if you didn't eat the little fish, where are they? Ta-da! Look what I just found. David! Thank goodness for that. Oh. So it was him? So you did all this just to scare us? Just to make your lives a little bit more exciting? Yeah, I did. Right, do you want to go on now? David, that is not funny. It was Bethany's idea. It wasn't Bethany's, it was yours. Well, it was childish enough to be Bethany's idea. I don't know what's got into you today. Will you just start behaving? Oh, we was only joking, weren't you, sweetheart? Yeah, I had to. Had to? What do you mean you had to? Well, I tried to get her to eat him for real, but she wouldn't. <laughs> this is really good of you, Sally. Well, I thought I'd save you cooking. Craig's gone out with his nan. So, do you have to feed the policeman that stands outside your house? Or does he bring his own food? <laughs> stupid question. So why is it stupid? It's one I don't know the answer to. Well, sometimes we give him the odd cup of tea, but we don't have him in for dinner or out like that. And anyway, he's not there anymore. Why not? Well, he was never supposed to be a permanent fixture. No, of course he wasn't. And now they've decided that we're not in any danger. So we don't need anybody, do we? What the police have actually said? Yeah, they've told us that we've nothing to fear. OK. Oh, well, that's good then, isn't it? Not really, no. Because it means that they know who killed my dad, but they're not telling us, which makes me wonder why they're not telling us. And the only thing... But it can... don't mean that, does it? We've talked about this. The police are investigating whether it's that family from Sheffield, the ones we moved here to get away from. They came looking for you? Yeah, yeah. Only now they don't think it were them. And that's all they've said. And it's really important that you don't go around saying that that, you, that, that police know who killed your dad, because the probability is they haven't got the slightest idea. We'll see, what we? Well, I'll tell you one thing. They'll catch you whoever did it. Cases like this, even if it takes them ages, they'll always find who did it. Oh, they do. Yeah, well, let's hope so, eh? Three! No, no, I'm sorry, you'll have to do this hole again. Plus, you get a penalty point. Why? You touched it with your foot, I saw you, and so did they. Yes, but we don't mind. We'll be here all week if we don't cheat a bit. Then what is the point of playing the game at all? I don't know. You suggested it. You've got to play by the rules, otherwise it's anarchy. No, I, I, I'm sorry, you've got to play this hole again. And I'm sorry, I'm not doing Emily, you to go first next hole. That, that you'll leave me no choice but to disqualify you. Deirdre, Emily, you'll be disqualified as well if you carry on playing with her. Right, you're all three of you disqualified. Which leaves me the winner. She's fast asleep. She won't be the only one if this game isn't over soon. <gasps> she fancy a walk? Well, as long as it is a walk and not a run. Well, let's go before the seals. Hey, what about Kitty? 
Can't just leave her. Oh, she's fine. She's used to being left. Come on. Right. So do you have any plans or is it too soon for that? Um, main plan is just to get through today. It's the only plan I've had since he died. Oh, yeah. Of course it is. And to, um... I don't know how to say this. It was to try and stop thinking about the way he died. Because I... I want us to be able to talk about him in years to come and remember what it was like when when we had him with us and and I don't I don't I want the only thing that any of us can ever remember about him to be the way he died. I think we should go. I'm so sorry. No. You mustn't be. <laughs> You've been so kind to invite us, and I've just spoiled your day. Don't be daft. I tell you what, uh, let's have a drink. What can I get you? No, honest, Kevin, I, th I think we should go. Go out now. I should, Mum. Okay. So if she can go out, can I go upstairs? I don't see how that follows, but all right, go on. Stand on ceremony, do they? I don't know. And you mustn't either. Look, it's up to you. Stay, go, whatever. No, I, I think we'll go. I think we're a bit alike, aren't we? And father and daughter were meant to be. I don't beat about the bush. You've got something to say, you say it. Well, yeah. So come on then. You can tell me now what's all this about? Trying to get me on my own? Just so we can talk. About what in particular? Well, nothing really. Just so I can get to know you better, you know, the sort of things you've done in your life. Like how much money I've got and who I'm leaving it to. I didn't say that. You didn't have to. I told you we got a lot in common. And that's what I'd be thinking if I were in your shoes. So, do you want to know? Only if you want to tell me. I don't want you to be disappointed. Oh, it's going to you, all right. There's nobody else, is there? But the uh, problem is, it's hardly worth having. You see, I've been in bad health for a while, and uh, what little I did have, it's all gone. So, I'm sorry, Tracy, I'd like to make you a millionaire, but uh, it's not going to happen. It's OK. No. I feel I've let you down. You know, you must think I'm the most terrible, money-grabbing daughter anyone could ever have. You're only looking out for yourself. And your own daughter. Most natural thing in the world. Yeah, but... It's not just that. I'm really glad I met you. Yeah, me too. You don't know how much. Miss Jolliet gave me when he was going past. And you don't feel sick? No. Were you really upset with that just an act to get us out of there? Not sure I know myself anymore. I wanted to say a word in case I ended up telling everybody the truth. But you're not gonna. Oh, am I not? So, what happens when the, the police start questioning again? Yeah, but why should they? <sighs> because they don't believe it was a Sheffield lot anymore. And they wouldn't do, unless they were thinking it was somebody else. Somebody from round here. Yeah, well, I've been thinking about that. Yes, so have I. Thinking they know it's me. And what we're going to do... OK, listen to me. What we're going to do is make them think that they were wrong. That it was a lot from Sheffield, after all. How are we going to do that? Cos I'm going to give them some evidence. Evidence that they can't ignore and that will leave us in the clear. Shouldn't 
you be having a lion this morning? You should be resting. Well, it's time for resting when I'm dead. Morning. Well, we're going to Caff for breakfast if you want to come with us. Uh, you'd be very welcome. I uh, know you're all right. Thought you might like to see these. Oh, 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 oh. Lord, don't they even look cute? Yeah, just like you at her age. Ah, uh, well, Ken sees enough of our ugly mugs every day. Huh? Lucky Trace. You got my looks and your mother's brains. Actually, we'd better be going. Well, all right, then you go. I'll catch you up. i see you later, Ray. You take care of yourself. You could at least try to make an effort. Are you going out, Mum? Where are you going? I've got work. No, you can't. It's too soon. We've got to try and get back to normal. Oh, yeah. Like, it's that easy. Nobody said it was going to be easy, Katie, but I'm telling you, I really need to go to work. I want to hear Janice moaning about Danny bringing in cheap bog roll. I want to argue about who's making the next brew. I just want to think about boring, everyday things, like, like what we're going to have for tea. I just want to get back to normal. I need you here with me. Listen, love. Just stay indoors. <laughs> Don't answer the door to anyone. Just stay in, read a book, try and relax. I don't want to be on my own. Katie, there is a good reason why I'm going to work. I've got so much to do for our future. Is it about what you said? About getting us off the hook? And well, what are you going to do? I'm sorting it, OK? What, definitely? I promise. Yes, Emily? May I have a bottle of painkillers, please? My head's banging. Oh, you don't look so clever this morning. I, I was up most of the night with Ray. He's quite poorly. Mm. Look, isn't it time he was getting back home to Holland? I mean, there's such a thing as outstaying your welcome. Well, I wouldn't quite have put it that way myself, but Norris has a point, Emily. I mean, looking after somebody as ill as Ray is, it's a huge responsibility. I mean, it's you I'm thinking of, Emily. I mean, you're not getting any younger. Goodbye. Hi. Morning, Angela. Good morning. How are you feeling? Fine. You? holiday I've ever had. Hey, look at it shine. Oh, yeah, round about now we'll be sat in this gorgeous little cafe on the beach. Listen to the waves, sand between our toes. I had fresh <laughs> fruit for breakfast every morning. It tastes fabulous in the Caribbean. Even Mr Pie and Peas here had fresh fruit every day. Uh -huh. Mind, you're raining my credibility. <laughs> it was just great to spend some quality time together. Yeah, we didn't really bother with anyone else. Mm -hmm. Only eyes for each other, eh? Mm. Oh, no, the people are really friendly. Not like the miserable so-and-sos round here. Well, they've not had much to laugh at round here, have they? <laughs> yeah, I suppose i better go and pay Angela my respects. You know my feelings about that factor a lot, don't you? A bit too mouthy for my liking. Well, half of them. I take my hat off to them this time. I really do. They've really rallied round and done her proud, you know. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Chesney Brown, jiu-jitsu warrior. I fear no man and no woman, except my mum. Do you mind letting me up, please, Chesney? I, I fear you're compromising my clavicle. Brilliant. What does that mean? 
simply means that I am experiencing a, a not inconsiderable amount of pain in my shoulder. My Uncle Ernie can play the fiddle with one arm and a dodgy knee, so you'll be all right. But may I remind you that jiu-jitsu means gentle art. They don't condone the use of excessive force. <laughs> now we're only warming up. One another go. I, I, I'll just take a breather, thank you, Chesney. Mm. Making a quick end, cos I'm ready for round two. <laughs> Hey, wait till Mum sees me in action. She'll be dead impressed. Yeah, indeed she will, Chesney, indeed she will. Uh, she'll be home soon, very soon. Wish there were a pill to make this go away. Are you in a lot of pain? Had a great day at Southport. I'm paying for it now. You and Tracy seem to be getting along awfully well. Yesterday, the first time she had a proper smile for me. Oh. oh it's now just a bit of a twinge. Ow! Ray! Ray! Oh! Oh, oh dear! Oh, my goodness! Oh! 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 oh. oh. Oh, are you all right? I'll go and get help. No. Well, you can't stay there. Oh, for God's sake, will you stop fussing? Please. Just give me a minute. Oh. Ah, I'll be fine in a minute. <laughs> Serve me right going out disco dancing till three in the morning, eh? Oh, please let me go and get someone who can help. A cup of tea. That's what I need. And you can chuck in a slice of that cinnamon cake and all. I've got to keep my strength up. Are you all right, Lee? Oh. It's, uh, it's nothing. Um, take no notice or make Give me a minute. No, really, there's no need. I'm just being silly. Oh, love, whatever's the matter? It's Dre's had a bit of a fall. Where is he? Is, has he hurt himself? No, I don't think so. Deirdre, it was awful. He collapsed and I didn't even have the strength to, to lift. Come on, Emily. We're, we're going to have to go and see it. Oh, we? no. No, you mustn't. Must Ray be mortified if I let you see him like that? Oh, love. Let me go and get Tracy. For a go up, have you? Ray, love, you need help. Right, let's just get you back on the city, Ray. I'll give you a hand. Just leave me alone, will you? All oh, right, what do you think is going to happen now, Ray? I mean, you're going to be fine after a few minutes, are you? I don't think so. Oh, oh that does it. I'm ringing for an ambulance. No, I'm not going back to hospital. Emily, will you please phone for an ambulance? Ambulance, please. <laughs> yes. Three, Coronation Street, Weatherfield. Danny not in today, then? <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? He's a bank holiday. Mike will be on golf course, and Danny boy will be in a pub, which is where we should be if we had any sense. Mm -hmm. So you're off to the Rovers soon, then? Oh, yeah. soon the better, as far as I'm concerned, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it's Captain Undergrollies. <laughs> is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Sean the superhero. <laughs> Well, it's not every day I get a chance to get inside a pair of Dutch soldiers' underpants. Oh, and is it everything you dreamed it'd be? It's beautiful. 
Do you know what? Them undergrowlers make you look dead butch. Do you really think so? No. There you go, love. Ta. How you doing? I'll let you know. Yeah, I do. Which is why I'm not going to go on and on. Because I don't know about you, but I feel worse when folk dribble sympathy all over me. But if you do feel bad and you want to talk, you know where I am, OK? Yep, cheers, Chad. Do you um, want us to wait outside? Do what you want, love. I think I'll just have a little sit down. The drip should help rehydrate you, get your fluid levels back up. Aye, so would a couple of pints of lager, and I know which I'd prefer. Did you ever stop joking? If I didn't laugh, I'd cry. Ow! Oh, sorry, painful. Only when you press it. It would probably make sense to increase your dosage of morphine. I'll just do what you have to do so I can get out of here. Come on, Ange. We're wasting valuable drinking time here. Yeah, I'll catch you up in a minute. All right. It's all right, I'll wait for you. No, no, uh, you go, it's, it's fine. Look, well, tell you the truth, um, I'd rather stay here, you know, enjoy the peace and quiet with you lot out the way. Do you know, I, I don't much feel like going out myself. I think I'll just sit here quietly with you, if that's OK. Hayley, I, I know you mean well, but I really do need to be on my own for a bit. If you sure? Yeah, I just want to work, cos work's the only thing that takes my mind off it. Do you want me to bring your butty back? Yeah, cheers. Oh, so. How long have you been interested in fish? Uh, ages. So you liked them when you were a little boy, then? Hmm. What is it you like about them? Well, I like everything about them, really. The fact that there are so many different varieties. And when you look after them, you get to know their personalities, what they like and what they don't like. And I think it's great they have a really short memory. It's like every time they see that castle there, it's as if... They're seeing it for the first time. So it must be dead smart, that. Getting thousands of lovely little surprises all day. Every day. <laughs> oh, right. Have you been caught short, love? <laughs> it's not that fun, then. No, he has not been caught short. It was a rhetorical question, Haley, used for comic effect. Ergo, no reply required. I did it. I jujitsu'd him. Shall I show him? No, no, thank you. That won't be necessary, Chesley. Thank you. Right. <laughs> I'll get the bees in there, Len. <laughs> My two lovely boys, come here and give me a big sloppy kiss. Do I have to? Mm -hmm. oh. 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 Sorry. My mum and Uncle Les are going to be back any minute. Yes, uh, their, their plane is touching down. It's 1,100 hours. They will be on their way to Weatherfield as we speak. All right, well, I'll not keep you then. I'll, I'll see you later. You won't be seeing me. I'll be with my mum. Oh, uh, look who's here. Look, um, why don't you get a drink and I'll join you at the bar in a minute. <laughs> Anyone would think you're trying to get rid of me. <laughs> Fantastic, Shelley. Good holiday. Yeah, yeah, great, thanks. Um, how are you? Yeah, fine. Thanks for the postcard, by the way. Yeah. Right. Well, it was such a daft picture, it really cracked me up. Only you could choose something like that. I must admit, I, um, I didn't send a single one myself. I was only too happy to forget all about you all back home. Well, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's great for me and Shelley to be on our own for once. No hassle, no one else going anyway. Yeah, tell you what, Fizz, you get them in. Since we're on double time, we can afford to ask as many drinks, can't we? Oh, you're an industrial accident waiting to happen, you. 
I hope Angela's okay. My heart went out to her this morning. She looked like a lost soul. Oh, yeah, she would dead quiet, wouldn't she? I don't know if she's coping. You know, you get the my time of life, and you think you know all there is to know about yourself. Ah, uh, not a great many surprises left, I shouldn't have thought. And yet here I am, sulking like a schoolboy. Well, you and Ray never really saw eye to eye. I suppose I always felt a bit tame in relation to Ray. How do you mean? Well, Deirdre and Ray, their relationship it was always more, more passionate, I suppose, always arguing and making up, never a dull moment. That's all very well when you're young, Ken. But I doubt if any of us could be bothered to sustain it for a lifetime. You and Deirdre have a lot to be grateful for. You're together, despite everything. Now, that's a real test of a relationship. Yeah, I know. Oh, he may have been gobbier than you, more handsome than you, but you got the girl. Who said anything about being more handsome? Well, Deirdre and Tracy and little Amy. They're part of your life, Ken, forever. Ray's just passing through. Mum and Emily are outside getting some fresh air. Well, I say fresh air, but... Oh, you can guarantee that Mum will be having a sly fag and all. She smokes loads when she's stressed. It's down to you, that is. Ray. Dare die yet, you are good old sod. Is the water level going down? I think so. What are we gonna do? There's Katie. Looks off a bonds to me. I remember Tommy planting those dafts. Put the bulbs in upside down so Angela had to dig them up and plant them again. I feel that sorry for her. Little did he know that a couple of months later he was going to be under the ground himself. I thought we were going to have a drink together. Turn round and you'd gone. Charlie, I know that you're annoyed with me. I know you are, and I don't blame you. I've been really stupid again. I should never have sent Sunita to that card. I don't know what I was thinking of going behind your back like that. She treated you like dirt, and who had to pick up the pieces? I know, I know, and I'm grateful, I really am. Just don't expect me to do it again. I'm sorry. Oh, I've ruined everything now. We came back up the holiday all happy and I've ruined it. Why do you have to lie to me? Am I really that terrible? No. No, you're lovely. It's me. I, I, I just get confused and I love you so much that I just want to make you happy. Well, I'm not sure I can take any more of your sort of love. What do you mean? You say one thing and you do another. Don't know where I am with you. So, this ceiling we're going to get is going to fix the tank, then? That's what it's for. Uh, do fish drink water? You're starting to sound like your mother. What? All she would talk to me about is fish. Really? Which is weird, because you didn't even have any till I came. Ah, uh, it's probably just because she's embarrassed because you're my boyfriend. I mean, it's safe to talk about things like that, isn't it? Well, most girls per is usually going for the usual suspects. You know, like, what's your favourite pop group or... Got a brother and sisters, but no, with her, it's just fish. And have you had a lot of experience with other girls' parents? What do she talks about the fish shop? I bet it's something like gardening. And then in the garden centre, she talks about, I don't know, cars. Oi, will you just stop taking the mick out, my poor mum? <laughs> Hang on. What are you doing? Hey, you never know your luck. You are picking up some bad habits. Well, you shouldn't be such a good teacher, then. Do you think this glue will do it? Uh, no. 
You're mad. <laughs> well, so do you. And I love it. <laughs> what? Oh, just everything. Come here. I haven't been this happy in ages. Me neither. Come on. Okay. Mm. Deirdre! In here! I was, uh, I was wondering how you felt about a little drive out to... Say hello to your new lodger. Hey, Ken, stick kettle on. Why don't you phone the airport? They'll know what's happened. They'll be down to my mum with this. She'll have been dancing to the birdie song and falling off the table. Yes, maybe that is it. You know what she's like. Well, why don't you two go home and practice some moves? I'm going to go over and check on Angela. I don't like the idea of her sitting there on her own. Maybe she's drunk. She says a holiday is not much of a holiday, unless you have to have your stomach pumped. I'll see you later. <laughs> For what? Look, we're just mucking about. We've got a computer at home to muck about. I know. Now, yeah, so why do we hear and miss getting into trouble? Is this to do with Tommy? No. Then who? What's going on? I've got to do something. I'm desperate. Now, please don't believe it with the Morgans that killed Tommy. And they won't give us witness protection unless I convince them. So I've written myself a letter and making out it from them oh, then. Oh, Angela. What else can I do? I know it with them. We're breaking the law. We don't get protection. It will be us next. And what if the police find out what you've done? We could be dead before that happens. If I leave it to them to sort it out in the thick heads, it'll be too late. Why didn't you do this at all? Because I don't want Kate and Craig to find out, and the police could trace it to Craig's computer. So, I'm going to Sheffield to post it so I've got the right postmark. When are you going to do that? Tonight, if I can. <gasps> Damn. Please, Ailey, don't say anything. Please, please. What I want to know is how Baldwin got an order for Dutch Army underpants in first place. Oh, maybe Tracy's dad fixed it. He used to live over there, didn't he? <laughs> Do you reckon he had to butter up the quartermaster? <laughs> I bet you're fine. <laughs> This is my house and I won't have it. What do you want us to do, Dad? Emily can't cope. What, what would you do if we weren't here? Yeah, but we are, aren't we? I'd keep your voice down if I were you. His stomach might have packed up, but his ears are as sound as a bell. Well, you were as much against him as I was when he first arrived. We all were. I suppose you'll be wanting a cup of tea. Oh, lovely, Blanche. Thanks. <sighs> but how long is he going to be here for? Well, according to the doctor, we're talking weeks rather than months. Well, that's a long time when you're living on top of each other. Well, let's just chuck him out on the street, shall we? Where he can die without getting in anyone's way. For goodness sake, Dad. He's got nowhere else to go. We've got to let him stay. Here, take him that. Make yourself useful. can't go on meeting like this, Ken. Actually, Ray, this could be a bit awkward. Hey. As soon as I can make alternative arrangements, I shall be out of your air. Really? Well, I can't bring my girlfriends back here with all you lot go up in, can I? Oh, I'm serious. It's not on. Well, if you're sure. Don't worry. Are you quite sure about this? What time would it have been? Is he going to be on that phone all day? I can serve you. What do you want? There are laws, you know, about so uh, how, the child labour. Like what? Like once to stop you yes, chopping yes. off your fingers while making me a roast beef sandwich. Me too. I'll take away. Oh, at last. Any news? Well, the, the travel companies say that they, they, they checked out the hotel, but they didn't arrive for their flight home. See, it's like I was telling you. 
She'll be lying on a bench somewhere, keel lied. Is this lesson silver? Uh, yes, yes. So don't you think you should contact the local police? She's done this loads of times. I, I might get hold of their number just in case. Hey, you know what I could do tonight if they're not back? Watch some of Leslie's Jackie Chan videos. He's got loads. Your mother's gone missing and all you can think about is Jackie Chan. She puts herself first. So why shouldn't I? So can we? Somebody tell me I'm not going mad, please. Why, well, what's up now? Well, you know we've got Ray staying with us. I thought he was at Emily's. No, because Emily couldn't cope. And she didn't have her mum and dad arguing all the time. I mean, talk about family at war. Sounds grim. Yeah, well, don't get me wrong. I'm pleased to have him here. It's just Dad is freaking out. And I'm stuck in the middle of it, refereeing, trying not to upset either of them. There you go. Well, sounds like you've got a bit of a tight squeeze with all you lot over there. Mm, well, tell me about it. I mean, I'll be all right. It's just Amy I'm worried about. Well, I don't want her catching out of him. I didn't know cancer was infectious. Uh, well, no, it's not, but you can guarantee he's got all sorts of other bugs. And he keeps being sick, and she hasn't stopped crying since he moved in. So you thought you'd get her away from all those germs and bring her here to this nice, filthy office? Well, it's not just that, Steve. I mean, he's got all these drugs, which... He just keeps lying around. I mean, it's only a matter of time before she pops one in her mouth thinking it's a sweet. So what you're saying is that you'd like to get her out of there and go and stay somewhere else? Yeah, well, I hadn't thought of that, but now you mention it. Somewhere like my flat, for instance. Really? Somewhere where we could all be nice and cosy together. Steve, we couldn't. <laughs> no, we couldn't. Hello, streetcars. I've let everybody down. Henry, don't be ridiculous. I offered a dying man my help and I failed him. You've done more for that man than everybody else put together. Precisely. It's £2.50, Steve, please. And there's four of them in the Barlows to look after him. Only one of you. And the family, which you're not. But I promised him. Ray Langton leads more than tea and sympathy, love. He's dying of a nasty illness. And if you're not up to the intensive care that involves, well, that's hardly your fault, though. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell her. There's your change. His condition, well, he, he, he should be in a hospital or a nursing home. He needs round-the-clock care. Exactly. Trace? So, uh, things really are grim, then. What? I've just overheard Emily and that lot talking about Ray. Yeah, well, you didn't think I was making it up, did you? How long is he going to stay with you, then? Well, um, as long as it takes, but... Don't worry yourself, Steve. We'll... we'll manage. He said himself he doesn't want to be here. Look, keep your voice down. He's only in the bathroom. I don't care. Let him hear. And what's turned you into his protector all of a sudden? You never had a good word to say for him. I can't stand the man any more than you. But death puts a different complexion on things, though, doesn't it? And I've never been one to shirk me duty when there's a job to be done. You've known he was dying for weeks. I didn't know it was this close. And here's Tracy's dad when all's said and done. Anyway, I've, um, I've solved the space problem. What do you mean? Me and Amy are moving into Steve's. Since when? Since I told him what the conditions are like here. What? is definitely asked. Well, put it this way, I'm going upstairs to start packing, so, um, see ya. Surely you can't object now. Yes, but it's not just about space, is it? He can't just come back in here after all he's done, even if he is dying. Then may God have mercy on your soul. Well, I think he probably will, Blanche. You can see I'm doing a pretty good job already putting up with you without dealing with prodigal fathers like Ray, who's only come back here because they've got nowhere else to go, and you can do the drying up yourself.
Hey, it is good to see you, Katie. Can't stay in forever. Thanks, love. Any news on the investigation? No, not really. How's your mum? She's not too bad. Went, went to work today. Really? Yeah, we're trying to get back to normal. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Probably take a while, though. Got to start somewhere. Uh, and your Craig? Um, he's uh, listening to CDs and playing on his computer. He's uh, a lot better, too. Oh, so you're bearing up not too badly, then? I wouldn't say that, no. I mean, you never get over a thing like that, do you? I mean, it's on my mind all the time. Every night when I when I go to sleep, I'm having flashbacks to that day when I found out. Oh, I'm not surprised, love. And then when I do go to sleep, I'm having nightmares. Two, three, four in the morning, and I wake up in a cold sweat, and I, and I, I, I haven't had a decent night's sleep since the day it happened. Really? I just wish, just wish I'd get away today. Well, don't we all? I don't think I can stand it. He's it, driving me mad. Uh, we didn't mean to upset you, love. Well, why can't they just put him in jail and then he'll be over? <laughs> hey, <that> poor girl. There's a lucky block tonight, then, Jan. I haven't really got a little black book, you know. <laughs> Too late, Jan. Your secret's already out. Wait for me. I thought they were never going to go. Angela, you've got to reconsider this. No way. Look, even if you're not on witness protection anymore, the police might still be watching the house. What if they see you go out and follow you? What, all the way to Sheffield? Well, how are you getting there? By car? Yeah. It's so risky. What's the alternative? Do not and live in fear. Jump at every knock at the door thinking this is it. And then the Sheffield lot will deny it and the police will come back to you. <laughs> no, no. Oh, my God, you hear? What is it? What is it? Oh, it's the cabin. I got talking to it. And I, I got Shush, hush, hush now, love. It's all right. I'm looking for you outside. I was just talking to Ellie. I just, I just, I didn't know where you were. Oh, darling, it's all right. It's all right. Sorry. Don't be daft. Come on now, love. Let's get you on there. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Don't worry. Hey, oh, Chess. Ah, Hayley. Hey, Hayley. <laughs> Honestly, do you know that flaming woman? It's ages that you've had him now. Oh. Oh, well, look, well, there's been no trouble, has he, Roy? No, absolutely not. But, uh, well, of course, this can't go on indefinitely. Well, no, you can't stay with us forever, obviously. No, so uh, at what point do we act? Act? Well, Hayley and I, we've had trouble with social services before. I mean, we don't want that again. Well, he's not going into care. So if Silla doesn't come home soon, what's going to be done? You're not putting me into care, are you? No, Chairs. What gave you that idea? I just heard you talking about it. We, we were just talking generally. You said you didn't want no more trouble with social services. Look, Chairs, you're not going into care. Don't worry, I'll look after you before that happens. So are you nearly kicking me out? No. Then why are you talking about it? Is it because my mum's not coming home? Look, Chesney, you've got nothing to worry about. You're staying with us for the time being, and then whatever happens after that, you're going to be looked after by somebody you know, somebody who cares for you. All right? I promise. That is a promise. Please, Uncle Roy, can I have some more? You don't normally drink scotch, Ken. Especially large ones. Ooh, had a hard day. Yeah, and it's not over yet. <laughs> so, how was your holiday really? What does that mean? Well, Dev and Charlie were in here this dinner time. You could only tell me so much. You had a great time, like I said. I know, but... Are you suggesting that we didn't? No. But what we say in front of men and what we say in private, they're two completely different things, aren't they? Well, we didn't have any rows, if that's what you mean. I'm not saying that. It's just that we usually share those little romantic moments, don't we? Well, we just did what everyone else does. We talk like we've never had these kind of chats before. Oh, I'm sorry, love. First day back. Don't know if I'm coming or going. Can I get you a drink?
We've got a minute. I've been thinking. <clears throat> I don't think it's a good idea you're going to Sheffield with that letter. Oh, I told you I've got no option. Yeah, yeah, you have. I'll take it. You? Roy's taking Chesney to pictures tonight. I'll have about three hours by myself. But you haven't got a car. I'll go by train, I've checked the times. So I can be there and back before Roy gets home. He won't know anything about it. But why are you doing this? Because I can't bear to see you and Katie suffering. And I don't want you getting into trouble. <laughs> oh, Ailey, I don't know what to say. Oh, no. I just agree. <laughs> what, what if you get into trouble? Well, there's no reason why you should do. Not unless you tell anyone. No, 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 I swear. Right, well, I don't know his fingerprints. Show up on paper, but uh, I'll wear gloves anyway. Are you absolutely sure about this? Positive. Have you got it all ready? Yeah, yeah, it's in my bag. Right, well, don't give it to me in the street. Um, I'll come back to your house after a bin shop. I'll never, ever forget this. Well, let's just hope it works, eh? What could I get you? Smile might be nice. Sorry? What's wrong, Shelley? Nothing. I thought we were back on track after he sent me that postcard. I thought, this is the old shell, letting bygones be bygones. I don't know what you're talking about. Now it seems like this great big iceberg's come between us again. Well, I can't forget that scale business just like that. Then why send me a postcard if you still hold a grudge? I sent cards to lots of people. Somebody said something. Like who? Like me, by any chance. He had nothing to do with it. Though, I can imagine you'd say that, cos you've never really liked him. That is not true. I bet you played that trick to drive a wedge between us. You knew how much it hurt him. I did it to help, because I know what he's like. How dare you say that about Charlie? I'm sure Sunita didn't mean that. Sweet. Then what did she mean? I played that trick because you're my best friend. Are you sure about that? I think we're getting things out of perspective. Why don't we leave it for a bit? I think you can both calm down. That's fine by me. Does that mean you want me to go? I think that'll be for the best, yeah? Yeah. Right. If that's what you want. I will. There. Oh, just a... No sign of Steve yet, then? Oh, he'll be here. Why haven't you brought your bags down? Well, you don't want to look too keen, do you? Oh, by the way, if you're still feeling bad about being a burden, Ray... Oh, I am. There is something you can do. Name it. Well, you know funerals are a devil to organise. So when you've got a minute, you could start thinking about the kind of service you might like. Mother! Well, it'd save a lot of aggravation if we knew the readings and hymns you'd want. Gran, how can you say that? Although you never were religious, were you? <laughs> You're enjoying this, aren't you? I'm just trying to help you feel that you're earning your keep. You don't have to worry about me, Blanche. I'll be out from under your feet, long before I snuff it. That'll be Steve. Well, you're cool, I'll say that for you. Hello, Steve. Hi, uh, is Tracy in? Yes, go through. Oh, hi, Steve. Hi. Uh, listen, I've been thinking about what you were saying about uh, lack of space and everything. Um, well, I could help out if you like. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, seems sensible. Well, great. I'll just go upstairs and pack our stuff up then. Our stuff? Well, you do me now. Um, well, when I said I could help you, I meant with Amy. You know, I mean, I could take her for a few days. Well, what about me? Well, you're not the only one short of space. Oh, well, not to worry. Uh, 
Right, OK. Uh, well, I'll come back in half an hour then, shall I? And you can get stuff ready. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> right, well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll see you then. Yeah, see ya. So, not quite what you had in mind. No, but uh, one out of two isn't bad. Well, it's a start, isn't it? Always here now, look. Right, and no more worrying about going into care, do you, me? You're staying with us. OK. What time are you back? Well, half past ten, eleven. Uh, will you be eating? Oh, there might be a pizza place near the cinema, Uncle Roy. Come on, rascal. Have a good time. That'll be Ken. He'll have an apology for the way he spoke to me earlier. Wait for that before we hit him with the sleeping arrangements. Rain on the run? He's having a lie down on my bed. Need any help with the supper? Uh, no, no, it's fine. Look, Blanche, I'm sorry for what I said earlier. Oh, that's all right, Ken. You must be finding this harder than anyone. Oh, yes, well, I don't suppose it's easy for any of us. Anyway, now that Trace is moving out, of course Ray can stay with us for as long as he likes. Are you sure? Absolutely, yes. I mean, sometimes you have to put other people first, don't you? Except that um, <laughs> Tracy's not going now. What? Well, Steve just took Amy for now, anyway. Then where are we all sleeping? Uh, Tracy stays where she is. I go in with Deirdre and Ray's in the front. Then where do I...? Oh, no, 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 no. If you think I'm going to sleep on the sofa. Look, we've discussed every permutation and that's the only way round it. Well, why can't you sleep on the sofa? You're the one who wants him back. Because I'm a woman and I need my privacy. Anyway, I've still got Amy to look after and how am I going to do that without a good night's kit? Look, would somebody please explain to me why you're all bending over backwards for a man who walked out on his daughter a quarter of a century ago and hasn't been seen since? You just said that he could stay as long as he liked. If Tracy was leaving. Anyway, Ray's not the only one who walked out on his kids. How old's Daniel now? Ten? Eleven? When was the last time you saw him? Anyway, it doesn't matter what happened in the past, cos that's all forgotten now. I just want to do whatever I can do for Ray before he dies, OK? And that's what you can't take, isn't it? Can she is then? Oh, she'll have run off with some flaming Spaniard. What would a Spanish call? See you there. Oh, she'll pull the usual trick, huh? tell him she's a rich widow. Huh? Are you all right, love? What's up? Hey, you don't feel faint right here. <laughs> They've sent me this. You're next. It's for me. It's for me and my family. Oh, come on, oh, come on. Oh, it's all right, it's OK. I can't handle it, I can't. Please, they're not going to take me family. Oh. <laughs> She's got that. Someone's seen your next. <laughs> not someone. We know who it is, don't we? Whoever killed Tom. Oh, God, oh, no, 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 there's no need to panic. Oh. Now, come on. You're OK. Nobody's going to hurt you. Come on. Let's go inside, eh? Look up to you. And you're going to see the car. Are you OK? In you go. <laughs> All right. <sighs> How was he last night? I don't know. I didn't hear him. Well, let's hope he's still with us. I didn't want to risk. 
just waking him to check. Anyway, you look like someone's just pinched the pennies off your eyes. Well, can you blame me? I've just had you snoring in me for the last eight hours. How could I have been snoring? I couldn't sleep for your wheezing. I wasn't wheezing. Oh, not much. I don't know how you get a wink night after night with that chest. It were like sharing with a rattlesnake. How is he? We, uh, we don't know. He's not up yet. I don't know why you're looking so tired. At least you had your own room. Yeah, it doesn't mean I slept, though, Gran. Do you think someone should go and check on him? Oh. All right. Morning. Oh, morning, Ray. Now, I know what you're thinking, and the only thing I've had off your sideboard is this glass. It's my own personal stash, is this. Do you think that's a good idea? Ah, the best. I had a couple of shots to send me off and then uh, woke up. <laughs> I laid an air at dog. Yeah, but what about your medication? I mean, do they advise taking it on top of booze? Well, if I want to pretend I'm Dean Martin, what's the arm, eh? So which one at Rat Pack did you want to be, Kenneth? Peter Lawford, I'll bet. Mild-mannered. Charm itself. Uh, would you like some toast, Trey? No, no, I'm fine. Now think on. Never mind about Dino. Sinatra's more like it. And now the end is near, and so I face... Well, stop it, will you? Hey, I'm your dad. I'm allowed to embarrass you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't get much of an audience next door. You don't know what it's like to wake up in the middle of a family. Yeah, well, why don't you try diluting that whiskey with some tea? Oh, ta. You get your reward in heaven, Ken. Yeah, yeah, it's just arrived now. Postmark Sheffield. Oh, please, detective, you've got to help us. Right. Right, OK, then. Bye. What's my mum? Your mum's had a shock. Uh, we've had a threatening letter from those that took your dad from us. They're coming back. Oh, how can that no, be? No, no, they can take me, but they can't touch me, children. What's the matter? This came. What is it? They're going to kill us? No, no, it's me. They've always wanted me. Look, you mustn't let them intimidate you. Maybe now, maybe the police will look at me differently when I beg them to protect my children because they've given me the brush off so far and if this doesn't make them do the job, what will? So maybe some good will come out of this, eh? Let's hope so. I mean, what are we supposed to do if this psycho bursts through here looking for her? I know, if he's got a gun, I'm going to be right in the line of fire. And whatever goes through her goes through me. I think we're all getting a little bit carried away. I'm sure it won't come to that. What did they send the letter for, then? Hayley, these are called bloodied murderers, love. Not yours and Roy's first aid group. Yes, I am quite aware of the danger that Angela's in, Janice. But being overdramatic isn't going to protect us from whoever's out there, and it certainly isn't going to help Angela and her kids, who should be our main concern. Oi, why aren't you lot working? Mr Baldwin. I've got some important news about Angela. In the office, then. Come on, quick. Anyway, I reckon you're just jealous because you never got to read left for yourself. Uh, Deirdre, before you go, I just wanted you to know that I'll be out of your air tomorrow. What do you mean? Well, I've, I've got a beagle back home. Busby, he's called, and he'd be playing Mary Ell with me neighbour. I just want to be at home, surrounded with my own things. Are you sure? Ray, if this is because of me... No, Ken, you've been a gent. So, um, you're saying that you're going tomorrow? Listen, you've been more kind than I'd a right to expect. But I can't hang around, can I? Or else this'll be the last house I ever see. And I really don't want that. Tracy, where are you going? See my daughter. Oh. 
we were just coming to see you. Hello. Give your mummy a kiss, sweetheart. Any problems? No, no, she's been washed and fed. Now on back to front and we're off to paint the wreck red. Is that right? So what's in the bag, stale breadfruit ducks? No, so I'd lunch that. Oh. I've uh, cried off work so I can make a full day of it. Aren't you a lucky girl, eh? I've got a daddy who wants to spend time with you. How's Ray? He's going back to Holland. Tomorrow. I mean, can you believe that? He says he wants to get to know me, and now he says he'd rather be at home with his dog than he would with me. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I knew this was going to happen. That's why I didn't want to know. We spent a fair bit of time with him, though, eh? Yeah, and I said that it was going to be all right, you know. I just thought that he couldn't make me like him, and he has, and I just don't know how. <laughs> See, I bet he'd love to hear you say that. Yeah, but I don't want to. I don't want to care. I bet he's hurting as well, you know. He's never going to know what he's done to me. Yeah, but at least he's trying to make things right now, eh? Give him a chance, yeah? Come on, Amy. I am, I, I am looking for una senora, uh, su nombre, Silla Brown. Uh, Silla Brown, yes, yeah, see, si, um, uh, do you have any um, record art de esta persona, por, por favor? Uh, a uh, description, uh, see, si, um, she's, she's short, with a, with, with a mouth, yeah, yes. Boca Grande. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Whew. We can increase the dosage of your pain relief if you feel it's not adequate. All right, all right. You've twisted me arm. Just enough to get me to airport tomorrow. Got me all quiet waiting across North Sea. Are you planning to fly, Mr Langton? Hey, I'm not planning. I'm flying to Holland. I've troubled these good people long enough. Oh, I'm afraid you can't. Well, your condition's far too fragile to withstand air travel. <laughs> I bet the stewardesses will handle me with care, right, Ken? I'm serious, Mr Langton. Me and all. Well, I understand there's a regular ferry service. Could he go by sea? Well, you're talking about taking an even more taxing journey. It, it isn't possible. Don't be telling me what I can and can't do. Doctor, save your breath, for them as can be helped. If I didn't give you the truth, I'd be failing my duty. I'm afraid you need to make other arrangements. You're not fit to travel anywhere. Oh, look! <coughs> we throw the ball for the doggy, shall we? All right, then. <coughs> ah! <laughs> It's the story of our lives. I mean, she's going to waltz in here in a day or two with some rubbish present she's got with her leftover pesetas, then Chesney will think she's mum of the year. Um, Fizz, I I'm just going to pop in on Angela. I'll see you back at work. All oh, right, I'll come with you. Uh, no, it might be better if it's just one of us. She's probably still quite shaky. Oh, yeah, all right. Send her my love. I will. <laughs> Listen, Ailey, thanks for what you did. I, I don't know what we'd have done otherwise. Yeah. Thanks, Ailey. She knows. It's all right, love. It's uh, caused quite a stir at work, you know. They were meant to. So have the police taken it away to be examined? No, they haven't done. I rang them first thing. Well, why do you think they've not come yet? Search me, Ailey. I just wish they'd pull the finger out. Well, do you think that they might think that something's not right? Why should they? The threat's real. All I did was put it in black and white. Oh, I can't cope with this waiting. I'm going to go down the station myself. Well, is that wise? Do you think they might be on to us? Hayley, there is no us. It's over and done with, OK? 
Now, I trust you, and I know that you won't let me down. No, no, of course. Right, sorry, but I've got to get going. OK, bye. Bye, Ailey. Look, I'm really sorry about that. You OK? Well, yeah, I think if I'd seen it coming, I might have got out of the way. What were you doing, exactly? Uh, I was uh, teaching my daughter how to throw. I'd hate to be around when she gets the hang of me. Well, look, are you sure you're OK, though? I mean, there's no uh, bruising or anything. What about the trauma? Shall I see the man and get you some nice new trainers? You don't want to do that, do you? It's the funniest thing he's seen all week. Thanks for letting the side down, Ben. Well, look, I'm really sorry, you know. I mean, I don't know what happened. I think, uh, I think we just got a bit carried away, didn't we? Oh, we. Don't try and blame this one. What's he trying to do, get you in training in case they bring back gladiators? <laughs> What's your name, sweetie? Oh, this is Amy. She's, uh, she's a little bit shy, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah? Is this how your daddy helps you make new friends? He whacks the mums with a ball. Your mother won't let it go, will she? She's like this with everyone. At least your mummy doesn't throw like a girl. I'm not sure you're right getting Haley involved. She ain't involved, not anymore. What did you tell her for? Why aren't the police here? Will you answer me? She offered it with the simplest thing to do. Simple? Look, I know what I've done. All right, and it will help us, I promise. What are they hanging about for? You don't think they suspect someone, do you? No! Oh, I can't stand any more of this. I'm going down there. What? No, I'm going to take it to them if they can't be bothered to oh. come and get it. Oh, well, I'm coming... No! You stay here and watch your brother. I'm so sorry, Ray. Nay, I... Looks like I'll be staying after all. You don't need to stay on my account. Doctor's orders. Comes to summit when you're too sick to fly. What about your dog then? Feel free to use our phone. And we'll help with any arrangements you need to make. No. It has to be an hospice with a bed to spare. There's no need for that. Hey, listen. I need people around me who know what needs to be done. Anyway, it's not just me being brave. Don't worry. So much for being shy. Oh, you. No flirting until you're 25. Must be weird for you coming here. Every time a man shows up, you can see all the mums giving him the once over. Oh, yeah. So what are they thinking, then? I don't know. Get a job. <laughs> Excuse me, this is a very hard-earned day off, thank you. You're doing this by choice. Ah, oh, that can only mean one thing. She's your first and you're besotted. She's my first and last. You don't want her to have any brothers or sisters? Not an option. Not with her mother, anyway. You're not together anymore? Nope. Well, we never were. It's a, uh, it's a long story. Well, I'd love to hear it. We have a hot date with Andy, haven't we? So, uh, he uh, enjoys going to the park, then? Oh, I don't ask. I just drag him here every day, whether he likes it or not. It, same with us. Well, then, lock up your daughter. <laughs> Oi! See ya. even wanted to know him. You know, if I found out he was dying, I'd have danced on his grave. No, in fact, I wouldn't have even bothered to find it. And now it's him, and it's like everything he says just gets under my skin. Right, well, stop fighting it and talk to him. No, because what is the point? Because whatever I say, he's got me. He ignores me my whole life, and then when he feels like dying, he comes to see me. <laughs> And now I feel bad because, because I'm the reason he's never going to get to go home again. And I hate him for it, Liz. I really, really hate him. 
<laughs> oh, oh, yes, I'm sure he's a man of great quality. No, no, I am not calling you any such thing. No, I, I will not respond to abusive language. Now, just listen to me. What is it, Roy? What's happened? Is it bad news? Oh, well, it's startling news, certainly. <laughs> was that my mum on the phone? Uh, yes, yes, it, it was. Oh, it is. Uh, Chesney, just, uh, just uh, c come and sit with me for a moment. Why? Is she OK? Uh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> she is. Well, as you get older, um, you will come to realise that there is such a thing as, as a fun pub. It seems that your mum has met someone who runs such an establishment, and he has offered her the role of hostess. Oh, I flaming knew it! So does this mean that Les is out of the picture? Uh, just let me finish. Uh, Les has landed the job of bar manager. It seems this gentleman was looking for a couple with a typical sense of British fun. <laughs> When are they coming up? Yes. Well, <laughs> this is the, the nub of the matter. Um, they're not intending to come home. They, they're going to have a, a new home in Spain. Uh, the phrase your, your mother used was a new life. Oh, and did she use the phrase, my son Chesney? Oh, oh yeah, well, they, they said they'd be, they'd be sending for you in due course. I rang you. I told you about the letter. You said you were coming round. Yeah, I understand your urgency in wanting to see me. It were urgent first thing in the morning. Where were you? We were sat there, me and the kids, terrified. No... Please, Mrs. Please Harris. what? You've got more important things to do. How can this not be urgent? Let's not forget it might not be genuine. Look, look at the postmark. Sheffield, of course it's genuine. It's genuine in its intent to disturb you, yes. I don't believe this. My husband's been murdered. Me and the kids are going to be next and you're telling me not to take this seriously. Far from it. I'm making you aware that it might be the work of a malicious time waster. Happens more often than you'd think. Time waster? He bashed in my husband's skull. He won't waste too much time Mrs. then. Harris, please. Oh, you please. want me to calm down? Well, get me out of that house. The area. Somewhere where nobody knows who we are. We can make a fresh start. You and every other victim's family. I don't care about other families. What about my family? The one that's in shreds because of you. Look what I did for you in court. Sacrifice my husband, my son will never forgive me and my daughter will never have any kind of life. Exactly. So why put yourself through this agony again on the basis of something as flimsy as this? Listen to me! If you think I'm some neurotic widow in fear for her life, well, you're wrong! My life ended the day that I found my husband dead. All I've got left now is my kids, so please, Inspector, please help me protect what I've got left. We'll do all we can, Mrs. Harris. Hello, love. Oh, um, I'm just putting the kettle on. Do you want some? I could murder a cup of tea. Trace, you thought I was staying for you, didn't you? I oh, were very touched. Well, when will I ever learn, eh? Don't say that. I've loved having this time with you. Which is why you couldn't wait to get to Holland fast enough. Come on. Listen to me, love. Come here. <laughs> Going back home weren't about leaving you. I wanted to spare you from what's to come. 